Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to what is probably going to be an absurdly long video. Um, yeah, but I guess before I get into it, let me just uh, explain a few things, like explain what this video is supposed to be. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I wrote some stuff in this in this route document, I guess. I have this I have this route document um, pulled up here for reference because I'm going to need to know um, like the pauses and stuff like that as I go along. But um, yeah, I'll link that in the description and you can read what I've written about what the route is and uh, you can get the save states, which is very important. Uh, that will help a lot with uh, getting started practicing. But yeah, I guess to say a little bit more about what this video, what I'm trying to do for the video is... Um, I'm not going to... Basically, I'm, I'm going to try to give you all of the information that you need and teach as much as you need to get started and like understand how to do this run, except for the very basic glitches like ISG and Mega Flips and stuff like that. I'm going to leave out explanations of stuff like that because one, there are a lot of videos of that. <laughs> there are a lot of videos of people explaining those tricks that you can find. If you can't find them, you can ask on the on the Discord server. Two, I'm probably not going to be able to explain them that well because like I don't buffer mega I don't really know the mega flip buffer frames for instance. And three, like people are you may want to unbuffer everything, you may want to like buffer everything, you may want to be buffering your ISGs, I don't know. So I'm, I'm just gonna let you figure out how you want to do that and I will uh, explain the actual route. Um, but I will explain some basic stuff about movement and things like that that you're definitely gonna have to understand. Because um, I'm not exactly sure how much of that has been covered elsewhere. Um, what else? Uh, I'm not going to be explaining like every possible variant of every trick. I guess that should be obvious from the fact that it's a beginner route, but like even s certain strats that are theoretically beginner friendly, like <laughs> I'm trying to keep this as straightforward as possible. Just get you the bare minimum to like get going with the game. I will definitely give some alternative ways of doing things sometimes, but like there's just infinite ways of doing certain tricks. And so yeah, if you get, I, I guess, I guess the, the main takeaway from what I'm saying is if don't take don't take this video as the gospel on how to run Majora's Mask any percent NMG. If you're struggling with something, um, you know, feel free to ask in the Discord for people to like give alternative strat recommendations, or just like also just don't assume that I <laughs> explained the the tricks perfectly, like explained the strats and setups perfectly. Like maybe I just forgot. In fact, I'm sure that people are gonna give me a lot of feedback um because I'm, I'm not really like you know gonna spend a million hours editing this i'm just gonna try to do this all in one go and put it out there so I, I guess i guess people will give me feedback and i'll put that into the description when there's like super important stuff that i missed but still don't assume that i explained everything perfectly ask feel free to ask questions in the discord uh what else uh I don't know. I guess I guess let's get started. Okay. So yeah, I have I have these save states that I made, and I'm I'm gonna skip all the cutscenes for this video and just just go to the important part. For for mashing through cutscenes, you're just gonna press A, B, and C up, or any. You know, some people just like to mash A and B. Figure out your own way to mash. I don't I don't care about that. <laughs> I myself lose a lot of time to mashing because I'm kind of lazy. Uh. Yeah, okay, so so before I even explain this movement, this this very first movement of the run, I think it's very important, I, gu I guess, if I don't explain this right now, we're gonna spend the entire video with me always explaining like, oh, when I backflip with, with the camera like this, I have to explain that I'm holding right. And when I roll like this, I'm gonna have to explain the exact motion that I do with the control stick. So, <laughs> So basically, I'm going to go ahead and explain how the camera works, how, how the controls relative to the camera work in this game, and then I'm going to assume <laughs> that you understand that going forward and you know how to backflip or side hop or whatever, regardless of what the camera looks like, okay? So, 
the thing to understand is that, so obvi obviously Link can be facing different directions. The camera right now is facing forward. Let's just say the camera is always facing forward. And Link is facing left, down, right, down, left, down, right, whatever. Link can face any direction without the camera moving. But then if you target, obviously the camera will snap to whatever direction Link is facing. But the thing to understand that is not intuitive at all is that the, the controls take time to update. They take, I think it's seven frames. The controls take a, a small amount of time to to change to the new camera direction. So for instance, if I'm, if I'm like walking up left, if I'm, if I'm walking up left and then I target, you can see about seven frames later, the movement is gonna change. So I'm walking up left, I target, and then it took about seven frames. I, I don't know if that's the exact number of frames, something like that. It took some number of frames for the movement to change, even though I was holding the same direction the entire time. That's because after that, after that number of frames, which is basically the amount of time it takes for the those black bars to come all the way in at the top and bottom of the screen, so you can kind of visually see visually see how long that is. Like just after those black bars are fully, you know, moved into place, um, is when the controls are going to change, and and it's it's really just the controls changing from moving relative to how the camera was before to moving relative to how the camera is now. So with this camera, if I'm holding up left, Link is kind of doing this, well, yeah, he's, he's, he's just doing that, that motion. Whereas up left relative to, well, so right here, Link is facing up left. So if I'm holding up left, Link is just running forward, really. Link is running forward, but I'm moving up left relative to the camera. But then once the camera is like this, holding up left is this totally different direction. Um, because it's a different direction relative to Link's facing direction. So I guess an another way to see this is with backflips and side hops. This is probably going to be easier to understand. Um, <laughs> well, love this epic music while I'm explaining the most boring thing possible. Uh, okay. So obviously normally when you do a backflip, you just flick down or hold down and press A. Left side to, to side hop left, you hold left. To side hop right, you hold right and press A. But if I'm facing this way and I want to target and then immediately, so you have to target to side hop or backflip. But if I, I want to target and then immediately side hop, let's say I want to side hop to Link's left. Well, Link's left is currently down relative to the camera. So you have to you have to side hop based on the camera's direction, not based on Link's direction. So if I want Link to go down to do to do a side hop to his left, <laughs> if I want Link to do a side hop to his left, which is down relative to the camera, I'm holding down. I'm 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 choosing my direction on the control stick based on the camera. So I'm I'm basically doing a what would normally be a backflip input here, and Link does a side hop. So target and then immediately hold down and press A, and that's a side hop. And similarly with the same same kind of uh, facing direction relative to the camera. If I hold right, that's going to be a backflip. If I hold up, that's going to be a right side up. So hopefully, I, I guess just mess around with this until you have a really good intuition for it, or like un until you're confident that you're going to be able to understand <laughs> how, how to do these different, different directional uh, moves, side hops, backflips, whatever, with any, with any possible camera angle. Um, and the other thing that's immediately going to be relevant right here, which saves a little, a little bit of time throughout the run, but it's, it's just good to know about, is when you roll, oftentimes you want to roll and target during a roll. You know, you're, you're constantly rolling around in this game to move, uh, especially toward the beginning when we don't have explosives yet. And you don't want to like... You don't want to like roll and then like target and take the time to wait for the camera to adjust before you roll again. You want to usually just like keep rolling, but sometimes you want to adjust the camera while you're rolling. So the way I usually do that is by targeting Im immediately after I start a roll. But then seven frames later, the controls are going to swap. Let's say I'm let's say I'm walking down. I'm walking like toward the camera. So I'm, I'm holding down, and then I want to roll. But I, I want to get a full speed roll, which means I want to hold in the direction that Link is going the whole time. Well, holding, 
The problem is when you target, for the next seven frames after that, you still want to hold the same direction. You still want to hold down. But if you keep just holding down, you're kind of going to lose a little bit of speed at the end of the roll. I don't know if you could tell there, but I'm losing a little bit of speed. I'm losing actually a significant amount of speed at the end of the roll. I'm not getting nearly as much distance because I'm still holding down. So whenever you target during a roll, no matter which way you're facing at the beginning, you have to switch to up about seven frames later, which is something you just have to get used to. But if you just if you just always do that from the beginning, you know, as, as soon as you start playing this game, I don't know why I just did that. Um, <laughs> as soon as you start playing this game, start thinking about how that works and how how it works with wh why it makes sense with the camera stuff that I just explained. Um, you know, you're just switching the control stick to to move in the direction you're going or to you know be pointed toward the direction the link is going with the new with the new camera relative control situation. <laughs> Hopefully, that makes enough sense. Um, so I'm not going to explain any of that basic stuff anymore, I don't think, unless something really weird comes up. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe there will be something I need to explain. But I guess the other thing I should mention is I do have these... I don't have like a real input display like some people have that like shows what the actual controller looks like, but you can see in the bottom left corner of the screen, hopefully you already noticed this, you can see basically this is the x-axis, what I'm moving right now. This, thing, this is negative 80 because I'm holding all the way left, positive 80 because I'm holding all the way right, and then the, the right number is the y-axis. Negative 80 for down, positive 80 for up. And so like this is what an up left looks like, for instance. This is what an up right looks like. So unfortunately, you, you're going to have to do some amount of translation to understand what I'm holding sometimes. But you can figure it out. I believe in you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, usually, I mean, you, usually you can tell. Usually you can tell what I'm holding just by what's happening on the screen anyway. Um, and then the buttons, the buttons are more obvious, you know, you can see, you know, see left, see right, see down, um, shield, target. So I think that's all you need to know for this initial movement. So let's just, let me just explain. Oh, sorry. Quick turning is the very first thing you need to know. Okay. <laughs> so, so to quick turn in this game, if you want to, if you're walking and then you want to turn around, like often you're like walking and you want to kind of adjust a little bit for a second to get a precise angle and then turn around and start back walking immediately. And that's where quick turning is useful. You don't want to just flick down and wait for the camera to turn all the way around. Again, you, this is just a not waiting for the camera type of <laughs> type of uh, trick. Um, so basically if you're holding any direction between up left, any direction where Link is just kind of walking like this, so a direction where you're not going to get like a sideways walk type of deal, I guess. Um, you can hold that direction and then tap target while you're still holding that direction, tap target and then switch to down and then tap, press and hold target. So I'm holding up, right, target, down, hold target. I'm holding up, target, down, hold target. Holding up left, target down, hold target. And I'm, and I'm still holding the down, obviously, as well. That's what gets you to, to do the back walk. Okay, so at the very beginning, the very first thing you do when you gain control of Link in this run is you hold up right, and you kind of react to, you know, Link starting to move. And uh, straight out of that up right, you do a quick turn uh, and start back walking toward this tunnel. So I'm holding up right, I quick turn. And then I'm going to be constantly saving states throughout this run because I want to show parts of this, parts of sequences over and over again. Okay, so right here is something, something strange. <laughs> the camera does something when you enter or exit a tunnel type of situation sometimes. I don't know the exact reasoning, but you can hear that, you can hear that the camera is like panning out and you can see it. Um, if you around the time you exit this tunnel, you want to turn and roll, and you want to do two rolls vaguely in the direction of these logs that you're going to jump onto, but whoops, but um, if you try to turn and roll right when you exit, okay, I, I didn't do the timing, there's, there's like one or two frames where if you try to turn and roll right when the camera is doing this auto adjustment, it will be bad. 
<laughs> I, I don't I don't I don't know exactly what will happen. Like sometimes it'll like flip around twice and you'll be left facing a different direction than you expected. I don't know. Just just know that you have to you have to either if you have a really bad angle, you probably want to turn before you exit the tunnel and just do three rolls and fix your angle. Use those you know, you know, use the time of those rolls to fix your angle. But if you um if you have a better angle, like if you're if you're more like over here, you know, have a good angle, you can just wait and do one, two, and then do the logs. Just just do a regular jump off of this first log onto the second one. So, you know, generally when you're jumping off of a ledge, you want to get a good roll to get that extra distance. But here, as you can see, <laughs> that extra distance is not good. Uh, you want to just get a, a regular walk off the edge jump land on this log, another regular walk off the edge, and then you can start rolling. Um, I guess I should go ahead and explain roll spacing. <laughs> Get all this basic movement stuff out of the way. So roll spacing in this game... Um, you you don't want to just mash your rolls. That's what it looks like if, if I mash my rolls. You're not really... it's actually slower. It's actually quite a bit slower than timing them properly. What you want to do is you want to wait until Link starts moving after he finishes the roll, after he finishes the previous roll, and then press A to do the next roll. So it's the timing is something like this. Maybe this is not perfect, but that's certainly a lot a lot faster than the mashed rolls. Um, there are situations where I don't is this a situation that I'm, that I'm talking about? Hang on, let's get up here. Um, there are situations where you want to... No, this isn't really one of those situations, but there are situations where like... So let's say, you can see where the loading zone is. It's like right when I go into this, when I like cross that line, that's the load zone, okay? So in this in this case, the load zone is like right there. Um, if I'm rolling toward a load zone, and the distance is like less than a full roll distance, like say my previous roll ends right here, in that case, I actually would want to mash. I would I would want to get that next roll out started as soon as possible because I don't actually need the full distance. So this isn't really how it works in this particular scenario. I'm just showing as an example so you understand what I'm doing later when I do mash a, a roll or two. Um, if the previous roll ends like right here, then I actually would want to mash to get that next roll started as soon as possible and just get into the load zone. Okay. I think that should fully explain fully explain that uh, first movement and more um, but hopefully you all you understood all that because uh, it will definitely be important later okay so this is the next movement of the run after a bunch of cutscenes you've, you've turned Deku and you just want to go to this door the absolute easiest thing to do is just three spins and then open the door and then four spins or three three and a little bit more spins into that into that next uh cutscene the other thing you can do to, if you want to save just a few frames it's it's not really a huge deal but you can hold up quick turn watch this bush on the right that once once you're kind of once that that bush on the right here, let me do it one more time i guess i have a uh so this this bush on the right has just appeared uh, I guess you're going to have to adjust the visual cue. I have, I have my trusty big red arrow here. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at this bush on the right, and you're, I guess you're going to have to adjust your visual cue a little bit based on uh, your screen. You might be playing on a monitor or whatever. For me, on my CRT, the edges are cut off. The edges of the screen are cut off a little bit. So like just now is when I'm seeing like the, the edge of this first bush. Just now is when I'm seeing like this. But I guess, yeah, you'll... You, you can use these bushes on the right as a visual cue in some way, based on what your screen looks like. And um, then turn around and open the door. That will save, I don't know, three frames or something. <laughs> and then just same same as the other way, just spin into this, this next text. Um, you can see how I mash with A, B, and C up. It's kind of a lazy, <laughs> a lazy rhythm, but I, I, you know, I get most of the frame perfect text. You can see, by the way, if the if that blue arrow or blue square, blue triangle, blue square, whatever you want to call it, 
mean, obviously this one's not a square. Sometimes it's a square. <laughs> Sometimes it's a triangle. Uh, if, if you see that appear at the, at the end of a text box, that means you were not mashing frame perfectly. It means you did not hit the first possible frame. You hit the, probably the second frame. Like in that case, you didn't see it appear. In that case, you didn't see it appear. In that case, you didn't see it appear. So I mashed all that frame perfectly. Uh, let me, let me save a state here. Um, so yeah, you can, you can kind of use that as a as an indicator of how good your mashing is and test different, uh, test different methods of mashing and stuff. Some people mash with like two fingers on the A button and one finger on the B button. And maybe you can also do C up, like you can figure out a weird way of mashing that works well for you. Um, okay. So, so this movement, what the camera is about to do right here depends a little bit on how you did the movement beforehand. So if the camera ever does something super weird here, just know that it's because you did the previous movement <laughs> probably poorly. Uh, but if you did it, if you did it well, uh, you can hold upright out of this, and you're going to spin off the edge. So basically, as soon as you notice Link start to move, pretty soon after Link starts to move, press A to spin, and you'll get, you know, just as your spin is ending, you will fall off the ledge, and you can keep holding A. When, when I press A to spin, I'm, I'm holding it. You can see that I'm holding it the whole time, all the way until I get out of this flower, just then, when I came out of the flowers, when I released A. And then... I'm aiming at this corner. You, you can you can see what I'm, where, where I'm aiming. I'm aiming at the corner of this platform that's closest to where the flower was. And I just, I'm not pressing A to drop or anything like that. The height is perfect. You just let him, you know, you just let him hit that corner and start walking and then immediately do a spin and then do another spin to the door. And I timed my, tried to spin too early. And so I ended up uh, reacting and spinning super late. But anyway, two spins to the door. And then here, I guess I guess one thing to be aware of in this game is just the fact that being good at movement in this game in a lot of scenarios it's mostly just about understanding the ways that the camera moves automatically as you move. So 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 here like I'm I can start I I want to do one spin to this flower, but the camera is going to do some weird panning thing and I'm going to have to I'm going to have to move the stick from from down left, which is kind of the direction I initially you know, right now, as the camera is right now, I, I would hold down left to go toward this flower. But I'm going to have to move the stick from down left more toward left as the camera pans. So it's kind of kind of weird having to adjust for how the camera is automatically moving, but that's something you'll get used to. Um, by the way, a lot of people just don't release this. You know, they don't pop out of the flower quickly enough. As soon as you hear that last pop sound, uh, basically as that sound happens, like that was that was too late because I was talking. Basically, as that last sound happens is when you can come out. Like that's maybe first frame. Uh, okay. The absolute easiest thing you can do here, uh, actually, I'll just explain my audio cue for this. He does these little flaps toward the end of his flying range. See, he's kind of flapping. One, two, three, four. Basically, on that fourth flap is when I is when I drop. Four, and then you can just do one spin, and get on top of this flower. You get you'll get this short title text, but you can just clear it and then dive into the flower. Fly over here. Drop as soon as possible. You all you pretty much always want to drop as soon as possible, uh, when you're when you're Deku flying. Deku flying is is always going to be slower than Deku walking, even though. In this particular scenario, if I tried to spin right here to get extra speed into this load zone, it wouldn't work because you can see by the A button indicator that this would talk to the dude if I tried to spin here. Um, so it's not until I get to like here that I can spin, but still, this walking right here is a, is faster than the, the Deku flying, so you want to land as, as soon as you can after that flight. And then spin into the load zone. That's the absolute easiest thing to do here. I will also explain briefly how you can do um, the title text skip, which again, this text is really short. It's just that, but you can save like half a second or something. I don't know the exact timing. You can save about half a second by doing something like that. So you can see if I land again, that's the text that we skipped. So the way that the way that it works is the there's a trigger. You can experiment for yourself to, to figure out what the trigger area is, but around this flower is um, 
basically it. There's basically a circle around the flower where if you enter that circle, Tattle will talk to you. And it's basically a, that distance from the flower all the way around. So it's like, you know, it's like that. I'm like kind of walking around the border of the trigger right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, and yeah, you just want to you just want to do a, a side hop with uprightish, and so, sometimes you are bad at it because you haven't done this trick in a really long time. Um, but it it costs like nothing to go for, which is the main reason I'm explaining it. You can go ahead and start going for it in runs if you understand how to side hop and and. Uh, you know, what I explained earlier about side hopping relative to the camera. Like in this case, I'm turning kind of up left and then side hopping with up, holding up right. And I'm just holding A the entire time during the side hop. Again, you're going to instantly enter a flower if you're holding A and you land in the right spot. I did not land in the right spot there, apparently. Um, so, yeah, you, I don't know. You can mess with this on your own and figure out where exactly you need to hop from. You know, side hop from where title hasn't talked to you yet but you will land in the flower it's, it's it's really about you know your angle being pointed straight toward the center of the flower more than anything else I think but yeah you can keep holding a all the way into the flower and uh, you, you will spend zero frames on the ground in this trigger area okay so that's that after going through that load zone is uh, is the movement right before HMS skip so I'm just gonna go ahead and load the state I have for that Again, this is just movement with the camera being weird, and you kind of have to adjust for it. You kind of just have to do it a bunch of times. And then this, right here, I mean, the absolute easiest thing you can do is just continue spinning around this corner and then get into position like this. But um, the spins should work out pretty nicely so that you can finish a spin somewhere around here, walk a little bit, and then turn up left and backflip with down right. So... I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep explaining every single time the exact uh, the exact directions I'm holding for this because you should be able to use what I said already to figure that out. But yeah, um, that's definitely a good bit faster than going all the way around here. No matter which way you do it, though, just walk into position here, and you're gonna do the Happy Mask Salesman cutscene skip, which is the first trick that uh, involves pause buffering. So in this game. You can pause buffer to get one frame at a time of actual gameplay. So it's it's a different rhythm in every area, basically. Some areas are have much more uh, unpause lag than other areas. Unpause lag is what I what I used to refer to. The time between when I press unpause right now and when the game starts moving again. So this is kind of like a medium amount of unpause lag, I guess, in this area. Also, be aware that the unpause lag is not always completely accurate in KZ um, compared to the, the real game. Yeah, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Uh, and sa same with the in-game lag. It's, it's unfortunate, but it's still worth practicing this in KZ to make sure you know how to do it. You'll just have to kind of do a bunch of runs to then also get used to the real timing in the game. Um... Okay, so what I'm what I'm looking at here, let's get my big red arrow again. Uh, what I'm looking at here is this line on the ground, this 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 black line that I'm kind of running the end of the arrow along right here. Um, it's I'm currently like centered on that line, and if you're set, kind of centered on it like this, this is this is perfect for the setup. If you're maybe a little bit more to the left as well, this is that should still be fine. Getting to over here is where maybe you're too far left, but so you know somewhere in this range where you're approximately centered, maybe slightly to the left of this line. If you're also getting to the point where his left foot is on the line, right right now, Deku Link's left foot is on the line. This is getting to probably too far right. The way the way this the reason this works the way it does is because we're going we're going to backwalk and then we're going to open that door, and you can't really see it, but the door you can't really see it from here, but the door has two sides to it. It's too big. It's like a double door, um, and there's like a, it opens in the middle. So you, if you walk down right in the middle, basically I'm right now, I'm pretty much exactly centered. If I walk down right now, he would try to open both doors. He would try to push both the left door and the right door at the same time. Um, 
And so that would not work with the minimum number of buffered frames. You would have to do some extra buffering at the end if you if you you know set up right here and tried to do it. Um, here, somewhere somewhere about right here, he's kind of he's he's going to open this door, the right door from how we're looking at it right now, but it's going to be the left door from you know the backwalking perspective. Um, he's going to only open the left door and and enter it in the minimum possible number of frames. And similarly, if you want, you can learn the position for, you know, being on the right, opening the right side of the door, which is something like this. It's like, you're kind of in between, where is it? Kind of in between this line and this line. That should work for opening the right side of the door with the same inputs. But if you get to where, like, his right foot is on this line, that's probably getting too far to the right. I don't know the exact <laughs> ranges that well. Uh, usually, you, should, you know, just as a beginner, probably just set up here nice and easy. Uh, okay, so then you you start back walking and you try your best to start pausing on one particular frame. There I did it a frame early, but a frame early is a lot better than a frame late. A frame late means you started the cutscene and are losing like 50 seconds or something. Um, so yeah, just just keep holding down and back walking and buffer. And there's there's 10 required buffers, so if I had paused frame perfectly it would be this frame, this would be, this is the ideal first pause frame. I'm just unpausing repeatedly so that you can actually see the frame. I guess I should move back to this screen. Whoops. <laughs> move back to this screen so you can see it a little bit better. So that's the first pause frame. From this frame, consider this frame one. You want to keep just holding target and back walking all the way until frame six. So two, three, four, Five, six. I'm I'm safe stating here just because I, I don't know the KZ unpause lag timing in this area. I don't I don't practice this on KZ uh, anymore, so I'm, I might mess it up. So yeah, uh, this is frame six when he's kind of on that top. This is the first frame where he, Deku Link's feet are all the way up on that top step or like above the steps. And from this frame, after this frame, you want to do four frames. So th again, this is frame six. Um, you want to do four frames of just holding down. So release target and just let him walk down. So that was frame six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And between frames nine and ten, you should hear the door opening if you did it right. And now, uh, let me just save the state to show. If I just release... You know, if, no, sorry, if I just keep holding down, but, you know, unpause and just let it go, he'll, he'll go in there, he'll go into the load zone. Uh, and that's that's how you do the trick in the minimum, minimum number of pauses, except for all the extra pauses that I did, ignore those. Um, but, if you want to play it safe, if you're for some reason worried about your setup, if you tried to set it up really quickly and you're not 100% sure, I mean, really, you should just take the extra time to set it up as a beginner. You should take the extra time to set it up and... Uh, do it in the minimum number of pauses and go for it and be confident in your setup. But if you really want, you can keep buffering and, you know, get that, that's the 11th frame. And then you can go again, try to buffer, and you'll go into the, um, you go into the load zone just with one extra frame of buffer for safety. If, if, if your setup had been bad there, he would have gotten pushed back by the door and you would have had to do, I think, one or two extra, I guess, two extra pauses, and then you could let it go. Uh, two extra buffers, I guess I should say, and then you can let it go. Okay, so what's happening here is there's going to be a cutscene of like talking to Tattle, but the game automatically saves as soon as this cycle starts. It's basically when this South Clock Town text that's on the screen right now, when it fades away, the clock is going to appear shortly after that, and sometime around then, I don't actually know the exact frame, but like. Maybe it's, maybe it's like when this banner goes away completely. Well, no, when the banner goes away is when the clock appears. I don't know. The way I do it, I'll just say the way I do it because it's safe, is when when I see the clock, <laughs> or basically, I try to do it on the on the on the frame that the clock appears. So this this frame is when I would try to reset the game. Um, so the game is saved automatically, and we're just gonna reset to go back to the. When I say reset, I mean press the reset button on your console. Um, to go back to the title screen and then reload the file. 
and uh, continue without having to read that title text. Uh, since we're in KZ right now, I have a command set in the settings so that I can press X and B and start to go back to the title screen. So in this case, I can just... Wait, did it not work? Okay. So, so I guess if you really want to practice that on KZ for some reason, you can just do that. And then reload your file. And now we have no title text here. And... As basically as soon as Deku Link walks into position here, you're going to target and then start side hopping left. And even though the angle is not like exactly straight here, you don't have to hold like down left. I guess you can you could hold down left for that first side hop, but then you're gonna like curve it. I guess I didn't, didn't really talk about curving side hops, but I'll, I'll explain I'll explain that in a minute. But like, yeah, it, the angle is close enough to straight that uh, you can just hold left and it works out nicely. And you can just mash those side hops. It's kind of awkward to time them going up a slope. Okay, um, I think here is where I'm going to just recommend super easy beginner stuff. There, are, There's faster movement you can do here with side hops, but it's very awkward. I think as a beginner, just, just hop up the ledge like that after two spins, fly, and then do four spins or three spins to the door. I think if you time that first spin well, then you can fit in. Sorry, I, 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 was, I was thinking I was going to do the side hop, but this, this side hop is really awkward. So just just hop up that ledge, walk into the, walk up to the flower and go into it. And then one, two, three, four. I think I think four spins is good there, if you if you time them well. Uh, okay, so once once you enter here, you can basically be holding down left as you enter. He'll turn that way, and then you can side hop by holding up left. But then for this second side hop, you kind of want to switch to up, just because Link is in a different place relative to the camera. <laughs> Whoops. Link is in a different spot relative to the camera for that second um, side hop. Hopefully you can see how it makes sense that here, I need to press... Or like, up left is more accurate to get a side hop. Whereas... Whoops. <laughs> Did she just get in my way? Uh, whereas here... the up is more accurate. And the camera is automatically doing something here as I'm trying to explain this, which is making it harder to explain. But if you do it immediately, the camera has not done that move yet. Uh, so then after you do after you do two side hops down, it's just two spins to grandma's room. And you definitely have to get used to the weird stuff that the camera is doing there, but whatever. Walk up to her, target her, and press A. Uh, I guess I should explain this. L let, me, let me go back and... Uh, by the way, ideally you're not getting that much of a walk. You kind of gain control and immediately side up. I don't know, but it doesn't have to be super clean. It's just faster to side hop down the steps. Uh, okay. So I'm just holding right and then targeting and then talking, but then this is, I guess, maybe the first instance in the run of quick text. Most of the text is going to be slow, which you just mash with A, B, and C up, like I, like I uh, explained earlier. But with quick text, you want to press B and if there's multiple quick text boxes in a row, pressing B once will advance through all of them as quickly as possible. You just have to press B once. So just just watch me press B once here. It went through multiple text boxes at once, all the way to the end, and then I can just press anything. I can press A, for instance, to go through that. Um, and then there's kind of a separate quick text box there. But uh, yeah, so so. You you well, you want to know you want to learn which text boxes in the run are quick text and which are slow text because when they're quick text you want to you want to mash B or press B just once or whatever. You, for me, I, I mash B until I know that it started scrolling and then I switch to A. Um, if you if you mash B while the quick text is advancing, which you should be able to see here actually. So this when you when you read the story, which is the next thing we're gonna do, or when Grandma reads you the story. This is all quick text, so watch what happens. Uh, let me save the state. Watch what happens if I mash B. Uh, it's hard to tell there, or maybe maybe it actually works differently there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure if it actually works differently there or not, but but just know that in general, if you're mashing B while the quick text is advancing, you want to press B once to start it. But if you continue mashing it while it's advancing, it will actually make it stutter. 
uh, in a way that it wouldn't if you just pressed literally nothing after pressing B the first time. So generally you want to you want to press you want to mash B to get the quick text started as soon as possible, but then you want to switch to mashing just A or A, or A and C up or something uh, to clear the quick text once it ends. So here, for instance, with this story, I'm pressing B and then I'm, I switch to pressing A to, to get that clear at the very end. And then wait a second, target again, talk again, exact same thing. And then here out of, you know, so we've made it the final day. You, you probably know how this route works on a basic level if you're interested in running it, but we're trying to get to night three as quickly as possible because then uh, that, that's the fastest way to, to get the clock tower door to open. So we, we talked, we read the stories from grandma to get to day three. Now we're going to go to the scarecrow to get to night three. We just walk to that door. And then the easiest thing to do here is just, um, is just to, to walk forward, quick turn, and then back walk, do a flip, do a, do a back flip, like as you start bumping up against that wall right there, this, this wall right here, do a back flip onto this counter and then turn and spin to the door. The other thing you can do that's a little bit faster is tap. The way I do it is tap right. You can also just as well do it by tapping left, but tap right and then side hop side hop, side hop, side hop, and then get a last side hop off the counter toward the door. That's a good bit faster than, than the back walk, back flip strat, but it requires a bit more familiarity with how the, you know, the controls relative to the camera type stuff works. Like for that first side hop, I'm doing a different, I'm holding a different direction than I'm holding for these, the rest of these. And I'm actually curving. So I already explained how to side hop holding different directions, but now I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and explain uh, curving side hops, which by the way applies to back backflips as well. So like if I backflip holding straight down, he's just going straight back as you would expect. But if I backflip and then hold like down left, he really goes quite a bit toward the left or you know quite a bit toward the right, whichever direction I hold. And the same is true for side hops, although maybe it's a bit harder to tell. I'm holding, I'm holding back. I'm holding like almost down left, or I guess on my controller I can hold down left. Um, so, some controllers down left gives you a side hop, some controllers it gives you a back flip. For me, my down left gives me a side hop, but my down right gives me a back flip. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so so I want to I want to curve these side hops a little bit down uh, before I get to the counter. So I'm doing I'm holding up and then I'm holding left and then I'm moving it a little bit toward down left before I get onto the counter. So do that if you want to get extra good at movement, and then just spin into this load zone. I'm not going to teach this back walk here, even though it saves a second. Just spin. Here you can see the bomber kid right there. You can see the bomber kid uh, moving, and you can maybe try to guess whether he's going to be in your way or not, which which affects your ability to spin like as soon as you would ideally want to spin when you gain control here. In this case, he's probably not going to be in my way. Yeah, one, two, three. I can do three spins to the door in that case. If he had been in my way, I would have had to just walk past him to avoid talking to him and then do two spins to the door. And then just uh, down left, talk to the scarecrow, choose the yes option to dance until night three. going to be a very long video. But hopefully I've gotten some really important stuff out of the way already. I'm, again, I'm not going to explain all the ISG, all that stuff in detail, so. Okay. Um, no, you don't want to learn the song. Uh, okay, so now, now it's night three. So now you still want to go fast, but as long as you go a bare minimum speed uh, to get to the clock tower in time, uh, you should be fine. And like not lose any time for minor movement mistakes here. Because you should have plenty of time to... Um, I guess I should explain that maybe. Wait, did I? I didn't save a state right there. Uh, <laughs> okay, well this is this is mostly just uh, just spins. Again, again, don't talk to the bomber kid. 
Uh, this is mostly just spins, but you can, you know, you can do a little a little side hop directly into the flower. In this case, it's easier. Just the way that the camera works out when you don't have the cutscene entering this area, it's a little bit easier than last time to side hop directly into that flower. But yeah, I guess I don't really need to explain it. It's the same, same as side hopping into flowers before in the intro, which I already explained. But here. Here you're going to no matter how you do this, like if you, you can do you can just you know jump up like that way that way and then fly backwards into the into the ferry. And hopefully be better at it than than I am, because I never do that. Um anyway, uh yeah, you just get the ferry and then you wanna get the um get these two free rupees right here that are guaranteed every time, and then you wanna spin into a position where you can just tap down left and then back walk past this card. Okay, and then we're going to just collect as many rupees as we can in the time that we have. Um, if you're running late, you can definitely skip some groups of rupees, you know, some groups of bushes. Uh, here I'm looking at this... well, get my big red arrow. I'm looking at this this post here, and I'm just trying to aim a little bit to the right of it to... Uh, you know, somewhere, somewhere in there to, to backwalk to the next group of bushes. It's quite a long backwalk, so you want to have an accurate angle. And then I'm kind of looking on the left side of the screen. That wall that just appeared that's light colored. Right just now I got past the the corner. You know, I'm a little bit past this this corner. So I'm about to, I know that I'm a, it's about time to turn around and uh, break these bushes. Um... Yeah, try try to think about the the route you take within each group of bushes to you know get them all as quickly as possible. You know, some people will like do this and then like leave one bush over there and then cut all the way back this way. And then oh yeah, we're gonna go get this, but oh now I'm gonna get this bush. It's like, bro, <laughs> try to get a smooth like cut back. You know, cut cut through them forwards and then cut back in the middle and then one more through them. If that makes sense. Or like kind of a back and forth like left, right, left, and you, you get them all quickly. I got very lucky in this case so I don't even have to go and uh, do that last group of bushes over there, but you would, if you needed if you needed to and you had enough time, you would get that group of bushes to the right there. And then back walk from that group of bushes to, or, or from wherever, to this next group of bushes right here, and then after breaking all of these bushes, you could backwalk to one more group of bushes that is right here. In this case, we didn't need to do any of that, and so I'm just going to try to make it in time. Um, here, it, by the way, if, if you if you got all of those bushes and you still don't have enough rupees, for this route you only need 60 rupees, although you should really try to get 70 so that you don't have to deal with fast mashing for buy buying bomb chews, which I'll explain later. Let's just say try go for just go for 70 to, to make things simpler when you're when you're initially learning. But know that you can actually do it with 60, which I'll explain later. But if you really need more rupees, you can go for those those bushes that are in the background here. These bushes. Which you can get nine uh, rupees from and then you can you can uh, they respawn, the rupees and the bushes respawn after you talk to the fairy, so you can get them again after the thing we're about to do. Um, okay, so so as you enter here, you're going to do this very particular, uh, what we call box movement, I guess, uh, to get up onto this, um, onto this ledge. You're going to hold up and then back walk immediately. Target and then back walk immediately. Two side hops, back back walk a little bit, and then back flip onto that ledge, and then turn and spin. And then just spins to talk to the fairy. Um, do I want to watch all these cutscenes? I guess, I guess I. I guess to fully explain everything, I don't have. I don't think I have save states for like. Yeah, the next save state I have is like after first cycle is over. So I think we have to watch all this. Sorry. <laughs> the save states, I, I I tried to like not have a million save states for every little bit of movement. There's only like 40, yeah, 42 total. So they should be good for for practice, but they're not fully optimized for me explaining things as efficiently as possible. Uh, yeah. 
Let's see how we're, how, where are we in the route? We are still very early in this <laughs> in this route. We are we are right here. Okay, back walk, and then spin. If you get that little hop, it's it's frame perfect to get that little hop out of a Deku spin. The hop is actually good in that case, but it doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, I think it saves like two frames or something. So, um, here again, just tap up to get the angle and then back walk. We are going to deposit the rupees. Here you can, you've probably seen people like hold upright to get an angle. It's actually not faster unless you hold a little bit up of upright, which is a difference that you can see. Here's, here's upright. The values on my control stick here's a little bit just a tiny bit sorry just a tiny bit up from upright so I, I wouldn't recommend doing that it saves just a few frames and usually it's not going to matter because you're going to get to the clock tower in time anyway so just spin Four, five spins and then talk to the banker mash that quick text and then deposit and then as soon as that as soon as you clear that so text text says so this this rupee uh, thing is going to appear. You want to basically do a smooth control stick motion to do this as quickly as possible if you're depositing only 90 rupees. Well, I guess in any case, you want to press left and then down, like go directly from left to down, and that'll that'll switch to go to nine in the correct spot immediately. And then just keep going down to whatever number you have to deposit, 60 to 90. Um, but yeah, it's the the only reason it's it's faster to to do ninety rather than sixty, is that it's faster depositing and withdrawing them because you only have to flick it down once. Sixty is perfectly fine for the route. It's just you know this is faster to deposit. Um, but yeah, remember remember how much you have, I guess. Or I, I guess he'll remind you. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, keep mashing through this and then spin into South Clock Town. And I will teach two options for this. So here, I guess I guess a gainer is something that's probably explained elsewhere. So I won't I won't explain in detail how to do a gainer, but I will explain something that's probably not explained a lot of other places, which is something that's useful in this category because this is the only place where a gainer is used. A gainer is much faster than this other thing I'm going to explain, but usually you're going to get here with plenty of time to do this other thing, which in my opinion is easier. Um, so you don't really need to learn a gainer for this category. You can kind of just learn this other thing and usually you won't lose time to it because you'll get here early enough. Um, do I have time to do this before <laughs> before uh, the door opens? I'm, I'm just going to let the door open actually. Sorry, I should have been saying all this stuff during the uh, during the cutscene. So the other thing to know about this though is that this thing I'm about to explain does require C up. You have to you have to go into C up mode. And the problem with that for the potential problem with that for this route is this route uses the first cycle tattle text. There's this there's this text anytime you don't have an ocarina in your inventory or don't have something in the ocarina slot. No, don't have an ocarina in your inventory. Tattle will try to talk to you to tell you to go to the, I don't know, do first cycle stuff. Um, Tattle will try to talk to you anytime you have, like after you spent 30 seconds in any particular area. So like after I spent 30 seconds in this area, maybe maybe after the cutscene in this case, I'm not sure. But Tattle will try to talk to me, and if I press C up, it will clear that Tattle text. It will talk to Tattle, and it will clear that text, which is actually a problem for this route. We need that text later. It's a one-time tattle text, and we need it later. We're going to intentionally get rid of our, our ocarina and use that tattle text to get a trick called action swap to melt goat. So if you get get rid of that tattle text, you're actually going to have to die <laughs> later so that the game will give you that text again. So that would be annoying. So just be aware that if you fail this this thing multiple times, then you will probably just have to do a gainer, and you can always buffer a gainer if you really want to, but I'm not going to explain that. Um, so the way this the way this trick works is 
see up facing this the direction you want to go target while you're still facing that direction and hold that target so this is the angle that what whatever direction you're facing when you hold this target is the angle that the game or that the camera is going to turn to after you cancel the see up but still in the see up turn almost all the way around to the right so you know not quite this would be fully all the way around this would be maybe not enough but you know turn like almost all the way around and then start holding down and then press R and then A. Oh, there's that there's that title text, so you can see exactly how much time you have to do this. Um, start holding down and then press R and then A immediately after. So down, R, A. And then you're up here. Um, by the way, if you're late to the... You know, hopefully in most cases you, you'll be early and you, you just uh, walk up to that clock tower door there and uh, wait and then immediately spin in. If you are late, like in this case, uh, I mean, in this case, I was only late because I explained, but here, here I am getting up here late. Um, y tattle will give you a different, a completely different tattle text, which I don't know what it says, but it just happens automatically. She, ta she talks to you when you get up here and start moving. So if I start to walk forward right now, I'll get that tattle text, which is a little bit slow. So what you can do is just spin immediately when you start moving and mash. In that case, I didn't mash well enough. I think you can just mash and yeah. You can basically you can skip it if you're if you're spinning frame perfectly and uh, start your spin or maybe just one spin aimed properly from there goes in. Yeah, okay. Anyway, you you can avoid that title text, so that's something to be aware of to try to avoid. Uh, but then then you're in here with the skull kid, and I guess I will I will explain this next part even though we're gonna have to sit through one more kind of long cutscene to get to it. Basically, as soon as I gain control after this next, after this cutscene right here, I'm gonna hold not quite up. Here's up. If you look at my control stick value, here's up. I'm gonna hold something like this, a direction kind of between, between up and up left, and uh, as soon as I see, as soon as I gain control, start moving. Here's a quick text, by the way. Um, it's really the multi, the multi text box quick, quick text that matters. For single quick text boxes, you can just mash like normal. Anyway, um, yeah, hold between up and up left, and then target and start holding B to start blowing a bubble with the skull kid. Release it at a certain timing, which you'll just figure out, you know, after, after the bubble is big enough, and then release everything and spin toward the spot where the ocarina is going to drop. I guess this is something you can practice, but I didn't make a save state for it, sorry. <laughs> you'll, you'll get used to this just doing runs, though. And then you're going to learn Song of Time, and then you're going to... I'm, I'm not going to show this part. You're going to learn Song of Time, and then after you gain control after the Song of Time cutscene, you just pause, equip the ocarina, play Song of Time, and then as soon as you select yes on the, on the save prompt, uh, you can reset your console again. And then you will end up... Not here. <laughs> I kind of kind of skipped a lot with these save states because you don't really need to practice this stuff. Um, you'll end up right here, still as Deku. You'll turn around, go in here, spin to the Happy Mask Salesman, talk to him, and then backwalk. You'll you'll turn human again and backwalk to the door, turn around and enter the door, and end up right here. You'll mash through some title text and then, um, well, I guess I guess I'll show what this movement can be. You'll have some title text here, so the camera will be a little bit different. But you can do the same type of thing. Target, hold left, and then I would delay that side hop a little bit if you're going to do side hops. But you can also just roll. In that case, in this case, I actually like to delay the last roll rather than doing a fourth tiny roll. It's like just slightly more than the amount of distance that three rolls would cover perfectly. If you do three rolls, you're kind of walking a little bit extra at the end. So... In order to skip the post roll, skip one of the post roll recovery animations, if that makes sense, I'm delaying this last roll to just barely make it into the into the load zone. Okay, so let's get this let's state again. Kind of just holding right here. I'm, I'm not going to explain in detail all these rolls. You can you can kind of figure out the way to optimally do this based on what I've explained already. Don't do that though. <laughs> but here. Um, 
You need to understand how to jump slash cancel. Um, so pressing B in the air will always jump slash, even if you don't have your sword drawn. And but when you but when you land after a jump slash, so this is just to get you a little bit of extra distance, so you don't have to grab this ledge, right? Just slightly faster to jump slash here, and it's very easy. Uh, you can actually clear the gap perfectly if you have a perfect angle. Let's see if I have one. I don't quite have a perfect angle, but. Uh, it's, you know, it's better to just go for the jump slash, but there's that little recovery animation right there after you land from a jump slash. You can, you can skip that animation by spinning the stick as you land. So you can see that I got into that shield animation a lot faster than like this. He has to do the full jump slash recovery before he shields. And the reason I'm holding shield is because if you start spinning the stick, you could very easily like do that, <laughs> you know? If you start spinning the stick and spin it for too long, you know, if, if you're if you're really comfortable with the timing for a jump slash cancel, you don't have to hold shield. But as a beginner, it might help to hold shield there and then start moving again. Jump into that basket. It's kind of awkward to jump into that basket, actually, but um, if you, you know, if you like land on this target and then jump onto the other target, if something like that happens, not the, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but ideally, you will land down in the basket kind of below, and then roll under that target. And then from here, the easiest thing to do is just walk up and tap A to climb as quickly as possible. If you walk up and just let Link climb automatically, there's there's a kind of a delay. It's a pretty significant delay before he actually decides that he wants to climb it. If you press A, you can make that happen immediately. Um, even faster would be to like roll and then side hop, but you have to be, first of all, you can't target before you roll or else you'll do a jump slash. So you have to roll and then target and you have to space it well so that you can side hop immediately out of the roll. I mean you can you can also just walk up and, and side hop but that's a little bit slower. Anyway, I, I need to focus a little bit more on just the beginner, <laughs> just the begin the really uh, entry level strats. So yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna skip some some fast movement optimizations. So just roll twice here, side hop, back walk. Here I will explain this the faster option because it's pretty easy. Uh, so here you could just, the easy thing to do would be just roll. There's another instance where I would mash for the last roll. But you can also tap right to get this angle and then target and hold down. And then you're gonna have to turn at some point and do, do a roll or else you're gonna walk into a wall. So that is a good bit faster and not that hard. So you might want to do that. Um, but it is <laughs> easier than you might think to get a bad angle here somehow. You have to be good at tapping tapping a direction and get the, getting the angle that you want on the control stick. So here, this is kind of once again like um, like the very first movement of the run. The easy easy thing you can do here in my opinion is just hold upright and, uh, and then do a quick turn soon after you start moving. And then you're gonna backflip up, up onto this little ledge here and then open the door. And there you are in the bomb shop. I do recommend may maybe trying to get good at movement. Like, as a beginner, one of the main things that you should be... One of the things that you get better at just by playing the game a lot is just kind of movement finesse. Like, a lot of the hard strats that I'm not going to recommend going for in this run are not actually hard because they're, like, frame precise or whatever. They're more hard because you have to be able to precisely control where you're walking. Like, for instance, in Deku Palace, you have to walk on this tiny little fence and like throw bombs a bunch of different directions for the advanced strat. Um, so anytime you can like practice like, you know, fine movement control, aiming your rolls accurately to not do what I just did, um, maybe it's a good idea to do that to get better at the game faster. So here, even though you might lose some frames going for this movement when you first start out, it, it may be better to just do that for, for movement practice rather than um, rather than doing the easy back walk. But optimally, this does save several frames. This saves maybe five frames over the back walk. Uh, it's six rolls total, and you really want to try to cut these corners and roll directly to the door and open the door directly out of your roll so that you don't get that last kind of roll recovery uh, time. Um, yeah. Like, that wasn't that great. I kind of went too far to the left, and obviously I missed the door at the end, but there you go. So here, um, 
really you can just walk up here, talk to him, and then like turn yeah. and roll out. But <laughs> it is it is nice to do this little setup. It's because there's this thing about this this guy where he walks this this NPC where he slowly walks to the counter. So if you get here early, it doesn't matter. You can't you can't do anything until he's completely settled at the counter. So you have time when you enter to do a little setup here, which is going to make it easy to get directly to the door as fast as possible, like so. So the way I do that is just shield turn, and I guess I haven't explained a shield turn, but a shield turn is just while you're shielding, you can hold any direction you want, and it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, it matters if you like do a crouch stab and push yourself off a wall or something, but it doesn't matter for most things. Um, so hold the direction that you want to turn, and then release and repress shield frame perfectly. You can you can also like if you do it early. If you try to do it too fast, you won't get the turn, but it, I think it's releasing for two frames, you know, repress after two frames. You get a perfect turn, but he won't walk at all. If you do it too slow, he'll like take a step like that. Take a step, which is which is not ideal. But yeah, in, th in this case I'm going I'm getting to this this little sp this line on the ground. I'm just walking straight forward to the line on the ground, shield turning and then doing a roll without holding any direction, which we call a dry roll to get a certain set distance, and then buying the explosives. And then you can back, back walk out to the door. Here is where I would also recommend doing the equip. Oh, <laughs> because of the save states, we have 11 choose here, which is not normal, but that's fine. Uh, normally you'd have 10 choose, but yeah, there you go. Or I guess because of the cheats, what is... What, what cheats do I have enabled? No, I don't have cheats enabled. I guess I had cheats enabled when I made one of the save states or something. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, so here we are. <laughs> we have to do the first major trick of the run. I... I'm just gonna explain the easier thing. I'm not gonna explain the version that requires an extra mega flip and like kind of awkward movement. You can find those versions out there if you want to, but this video is going to be long enough as it is. Um, but maybe people will complain that I didn't include enough altern alternate strats, and you can feel free to complain at me in the Discord for not including other options. But complete beginner strat. Get ISG off of this. And then just... Uh, yeah, again, I'm not going not gonna to explain in detail ISG and other basic tricks. Go find a video. <laughs> for that somewhere else and then just roll yeah just roll to here right up next to this load zone if I walk any more to the right from here I'm going in, into the load zone which is bad um, and then pull a bomb and do a height hover again something you can find an explanation for elsewhere good thing I have an extra chew because I just wasted one for no reason do some tight chew hovers here because you're up against a wall so you have to be able to do two frame chew hovers um, but that's just something that you get down with practice, just AXR in a, in a fast rhythm. By the way, your, your equips could be different here. I don't, I don't care what button you equip things on. Contrary to what people on the Discord will, uh, <laughs> will tell you, it doesn't actually matter what button you, you learn. <laughs> what button you learn with. You can put any equip on any button pretty much, and it's totally fine. You just have to get used to it. Um, and in fact, when you get really good at the game, you can save time by, you know, having bombs on Y early in the run and then, you know, having them, them on Z later in the run because it would take time to switch the other thing off of a different button and to get bombs back on Y. So, you know, optimally you're actually saving time by being comfortable with all the different way of, uh, equip buttons that you, that you could possibly use. But um, for the beginner route, I've, I've kind of written out the pauses here. Um, you, I don't know, you'll see as it goes on. I've written out the pauses to generally try to keep the same items on the same buttons, especially items like bombs and shoes, where like if you try to pull a bomb and you accidentally put on the Zora mask instead, that could very easily kill your run. Or As a beginner, it's not going to kill your run. There's like always backups you can do as a beginner, but it would make you lose several minutes <laughs> if you put on the Zora mask in midair while you're trying to hover or whatever. So, okay, anyway. I don't know how I got onto that, but here we are. We've done 11 hovers, one one good bomb height hover, and then 10 chew hovers. 
Um, obviously you can substitute in bomb hovers if you accidentally used shoes earlier or whatever. And now we're up here, we're gonna side hop past this load zone and then jump slash. Now, there's something called a, a tap side hop in this game. So here's what happens if I side hop and hold the direction. He just goes all the way past the load zone and voids out. But if I do from the same position, if I just tap the direction, he will go forward a little bit and go into the load zone. So that's the difference between a tap side hop and a hold side hop, which happens anywhere. Like even if you're just you know down on the ground, th that is different from that. Almost imperceptibly just doing it on the ground like this, but it is different and it matters for certain setups, which one you get. Um, so in this case, you really do not want to release the stick after you <laughs> after you do the side hop. You can just hold right the entire time, even through the jump slash. I'm holding right, I'm holding right, I'm holding right, still holding right, and only now I'm, I'm releasing right, so. Yeah, so once you get past this texture on the wall, I don't think I need a big red arrow to point out this very obvious change in texture from this to this. Um, once you get past that big red arrow, you're past the load zone. You know, anywhere on these stairs is entering the load zone, so you do not want to enter the load zone. That's taking you to South Clock Town. You, yeah, once you get past that, press B to jump slash. It's very lenient. And then you, you can cancel it again with a, with a spin of the stick and hold shield again, just like, uh, just like before. And then roll kind of right-ish a couple times, maybe, and then hit the owl and then side hop off the edge. And one weird thing to be aware of here is, well, let, me, let me try to do this move in a little bit different, or a little bit better. That is pretty much how it should look. But okay, right here, if you, if I were to side hop right as early as possible and just go all the way, I kind of lost some speed there, I think, because of the way I did that. Um, but anyway, if you just side hop right as fast as possible and just drift, you may not actually hit the L. It may not actually activate. Let's see if it actually activated in this case. Yeah, it didn't actually activate. Um, so, yeah, what, what you have to do is kind of cut back here and make sure that it stays loaded until that little um, green glowy animation uh, finishes. And then you can see that now the owl is activated. Um, so yeah. Don't, don't side hop too far away so that it unloads the owl or whatever. But then, once you've voided out, go and we're, we need to restock on shoes. That was, <laughs> if you are an expert level runner, 10 shoes is enough for your entire, your entire run, but you are not an expert level runner, so you're withdrawing however many shoes you, or however, however many rupees you deposited, and then rolling back to bomb shop to buy more. Uh, well, you, you can do the same setup. I, my muscle memory kicked in and I just did my regular movement, but you can do your, your regular setup there. The setup that I explained earlier to backwalk to the exit. And then, um, I guess I should, I should say, the backwalk to the exit thing, it's easier to do consistently, but it does lose a couple frames versus like perfectly rolling and opening the door with no extra walking at the end. Uh, I don't know exactly how many frames, but it loses a very small amount of time. I would recommend doing the, the easy back walk as a beginner. Okay, <laughs> so now here we are. The easiest thing you could do here is just roll, 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 talk to the guy, and get out of here. That loses like one second versus the absolute optimal thing you can do, but the absolute optimal thing is to do a recoil flip past him. Uh, yeah, not going to explain recoil flips. <laughs> But there's a few different ways you can set it up. You can just walk, but that requires... The lag here is crazy. <laughs> One weird thing about this game is that it lags differently at different endgame times. Which can be... <laughs> frustrating. But uh, once you get consistent, it's less of an issue. Um, it's an issue right now because I spend a bunch of time letting the clock tick while I was explaining stuff. So that's one way you can do it, but you th that setup, you either have to delay the bomb quite a bit to give yourself more time, delay the bomb pull, or you have to just be really fast. If you pull it immediately, you have to be really fast with the shield turn and, and backflip. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that way. Another thing you can do is tap down left and get this angle to backwalk and then kind of turn and walk, and you have a little bit more time there. Even if you pull the bomb immediately, you have a little bit more time to to do that. 
or you can do a similar thing to the very first movement of the run. Upright, quick turn. There, I feel like that way you really have a lot of time. Like, that was too much time. <laughs> I went early. <laughs> you, it feels like you really have the most time that way. Um, but yeah, any of those is just going to save you one second. It's not uh, not a big deal if you're more comfortable just... Or if you, you know, if you fail it, if you do something like that, just just talk to the card. <laughs> you might you might see top runners, you know, back this up by pulling another bomb rather than talking to the guard. But that's because they have song storage. That's um, not relevant to you, to your route. Okay, so I have a state here. And I don't know if I wasted bombs. It doesn't really matter. But here, really the only option that's going to be fast at all is to do a Hess. This is a very straightforward Hess, so I'm not going to really explain anything about it. But I guess, like, I guess I will explain, like, you can take as much time you need to set this up. It's worth... It's worth doing this Hess well, even if it, you have to like sit here and do this before you pull the bomb, you know? Like this is still saving time. This is a very long distance that you're trying to cover, which would be very slow to just walk and roll and back walk and whatever. Uh, I overturned there, but ideally you shoot directly for this grotto. I'm sure you've seen people do it a million times, so I'm not going to spend forever on it. Uh, okay, so for the grotto... I am just going to explain the absolute baby easiest strat that I could come up with, which does not require any particular diagonals. As I, as I explained before, there's like my controller does not get a backflip when I hold down left. It does get a backflip when I hold down right and, and press A. Um, so there, there are some setups for getting onto this route. We're, we're trying to get onto that route. There are some setups which require you to kind of curve your backflips in a particular way. Curve the backflips for the hovers. But that's pretty awkward if your down left is a side hop. Because um, you have to you have to hold toward down left but not all the way to down left or you'll, you'll side hop and fall down. So I'm trying to avoid any of those types of setups that are diagonal dependent. Um, so here's a very simple thing. Find this very bright wall. <laughs> the brightest wall over here on, uh, on the right. And then side hop a few times and then get to this corner and walk to about here. I am looking at... So we've got this big poop stain right here, right? This, this big dark spot on the wall. And then kind of here there's like a smaller, like lighter poop stain. And I'm kind of aiming for this, you know, I'm lining up Link with this, this lighter space that's kind of in between just kind of lining up right there. You can also think of this like slashing directly through the center of Link's face, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so get, get to somewhere around here. And shield, aim left, and then stab twice. That's going to push you back to the right. Make sure you're aiming all the way left, by the way. If you're, aim if you're just aiming slightly left, it's going to be different than if you're aiming all the way left. And then shield turn to the right. And I'll save this position. And you're going to do three hovers. The first one is a bomb hover. Really like a, a really short bomb hover. So like think of it as like sixth or even seventh fast flash is around the time you would do it. If if fourth fast flash is the timing for uh, a distance hover off a bomb, sixth is like a pure height hover, like a full height hover. Seven is like maybe not even quite a height hover. It's like a really short hover. Um, so you want to kind of short Short hover off the bomb, and then a chew height hover, and then a hover off the Sculptula. So the way that you do the hover off the Sculptula is, it's it's not actually hard. It's really the, it's basically the same as a regular chew hover, except instead of pressing the chew button, you press the B button to draw the sword. Drawing the sword delays, or it affects your shield hitbox in a particular way that makes it that makes the shield hit the Skulltula at just the right time to give you the amount of distance that you want here. You can hover on the Skulltula without pulling the sword, but uh, you won't get the right distance for this setup. Okay, so it looks like this. And that should be perfect. Um, and I feel like there's something else I wanted to say there. Uh, oh yeah, you can, yeah, I, again, I'm, I'm not assuming that you're doing all this stuff unbuffered. In fact, 
I would not put this grotto in the in the route at all if I were assuming that you were doing mega flips on buffer or going for mega flips on buffer because it loses a lot of time to get all the way up here and out of bounds and then fail a mega flip and fall down. Um, but if you're a really ambitious beginner who really wants to practice the grind practice and um, get consistent in mega flips, that's what I did when I started running the game. It's very hard and you'll definitely lose more runs to failing the mega flips, but it is really satisfying to get good at them and you can just sit. You know, you can uh, just grind mega flips <laughs> for for an hour in 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 any particular map. Uh, you know, you can just load up. You know, turn on the cheat that gives you infinite explosives and just grind mega flips all day. Um, yeah, but yeah, you can even buffer like ISG. Whatever you need to buffer, you buffer. Um. So yeah, once once you get up onto this route, the the Skulltula is going to be climbing back up, and if you wait too long before you do the next thing, he will come down. And if you're if you're up here when he comes back down, so if you're like right here, like getting ready to do the, your next hover, he will come down and actually own you. So you don't want to spend too long after getting on the route before you, you know, pull the bomb and set up for the next hover. So basically, once I get on the route. You don't want to start holding down left too early, because if you hold down left as you're backflipping onto the root, you'll actually get stuck for some reason on the edge of the root, and then it's very awkward to like get unstuck without falling down. So, do not hold left as you're as you're like backflipping onto the root. But once you're on the root, hold down left or down leftish, and then in order to walk into the position that I'm going to go to and target the wall in a certain spot to get a certain angle. Down left, target. I, I switched to left and then I targeted. Okay, and then that that works out. So now the Skulltula is, is dead from that bomb explosion and it's no longer an issue. Um, but you, you could see that I, I got a few like pop-ups. <laughs> um, pop-ups. As in, like, as I was back walking against the, against the root, or back walking up the root there, he like Link popped up once, and then twice, and then three times right before the last hover, uh, to to get a little bit of extra height, which is ideal. Ideally, you're you're doing the setup all quickly enough to get that much extra height, because you might not do perfect height ho height hovers when you're when you're new to the game, so you might kind of need that extra height to get into a good spot here. Anyway. Here we are after one bomb hover, and the way I'm going to recommend doing this is just do a, a chew hover to, uh, and then unlock the camera immediately. I don't know if that's explained in like glitch tutorial videos. So, but it's just it's just targeting the chew when the when the arrow when the Z target arrow is on the screen, which is like a little bit after you shield the chew, and that will that will unlock the camera. So now I can turn around. But the way the way you have to do that is. If I just start holding a direction here, even though the camera's unlocked, because I'm in a hover, I can't just turn around any direction I want. I'm kind of I'm kind of stuck facing this direction that I uh, initially had when I started hovering. But if I start holding a direction, if I if I hold like up, and then start holding a direction that's like very close to, so now I'm like not even all the way to up left. I'm just a little bit towards up left, and he's kind of facing a different direction now, and he's trying to walk that direction. Watch what happens if I release the stick from here. He's going to do a little shuffle back to his initial position, or initial angle. Just a few frames of shuffling back to his initial spot, so, or his, his initial angle. So th during those shuffle frames is when you can pick a new angle. So what I'm doing is releasing the stick to start that shuffle, and then after I've released the stick for like a full frame or whatever, I think it's just one frame, one frame where you have to be neutral then I, I pick my new angle. So here I'm like holding a little bit towards up left. I release and then I hold full up left. I think I did it too slow there. I hold full up left to get the angle that I actually want here. And this is something that unfortunately is going to be diagonal dependent. Um, so you, you might get slightly different angles here. You also might just get slightly different angles because it's hard to directly flick into up left. Um, but you'll get an angle that's somewhat like this. This is fine. And then do a chew hover. And then I don't recommend doing a chew hover for this next hover because it has to be frame perfect or it will run along the wall. 
and you will fall all the way down. So I recommend doing a, a, a bomb height hover for this last one. And then you'll be somewhere around here. If you're not totally, let me try to get one that's like, um, let me try to get a little bit less height just to show what can happen. Actually, I guess, I guess I'm already too high. I'm trying to like correct this. Hmm. What if I just do the tiniest hover ever? Okay, so like if you get something like this, it may look like, oh no, this isn't going to work. I'm not like out of bounds. But this, this, uh, if it looks like that, like the bomb, you can't even fully see the bomb. It's kind of behind the root, but this is actually fine. You just kind of have to get used to which, um, which positions and angles work and which don't. But the, this, something like this can be totally fine. Uh, okay. Ideally, I would be facing a little bit more left to, to mega flip more back to the right more easily, but here we are. Uh, so here you're going to do, do a mega flip and immediately curve it to the right. Again, probably want to buffer this. And you probably, you might even want to do something like this when you first start out, an extra bomb hover, just to make sure that you clear this distance to the, to the unloaded grotto. Whoops. Maybe I need to buffer my mega flips. Uh, okay, so you don't need that extra bomb hover. You, you might be able to see here that I'm walking forward a little bit. There was, there was this extra distance that I didn't need here. Um, you can, you can make it with just two mega flips if your aim is good, but it can be kind of hard to get good at that. Um, it's really just something you, you have to get used to, but really the whole, this whole grotto is something this, you know, this whole sequence is something that you really have to get used to. So I recommend just practicing it a lot. Again, this is not, or I guess I didn't say this at the beginning of this video, but it's, it's, it's written in this document somewhere uh, at the top of the document. This is not really supposed to be a casual route. Just turn the game on and do a run and it works out just fine. This is like, you know, trying to give you an idea of what, you know, running this category is actually like, which is, or, you know, when you take it, an idea of what it's like to take the category a little bit more seriously. So I'm expecting some amount of practice. I'm expecting you to install the practice tools, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully that you already, hopefully if you've made it an hour and a half into this video, you already understand that. But, you know, this shouldn't take an insane amount of practice to get used to, but, you know, you should, you should expect, uh, I don't know, 10 plus hours of practice before you're ready to do, to do runs. I guess it's gonna, this is going to be a 10 hour video. <laughs> so maybe that's a, that's a low ball estimate, but anyway, you, you surely you know what you signed up for at this point. Uh, okay, it should not be night yet. <laughs> I've been goofing around a lot, but uh, oh yeah, one thing that can help. But if you are struggling, if you're really trying to cut out that extra bomb hover and you want to just mega flip directly into the into this grotto, is you can use scene, go to scene, collision, enable collision viewer. And so here, if you like, if you're doing these mega flips with the collision viewer on, you can kind of. You know, if you void out by going down right here and just barely missing the grotto, you can see, oh, I was a little bit too far right. It's a, it just makes it easier to see, because you can actually see the unloaded grotto here, even though, like, it's going to be behind you when you're doing the mega flips. Another thing you can do is, like, after this first mega flip, I guess I, I guess I should have explained this a little bit more, but, like, I untarget on the chew after that first mega flip, because if you don't do that, um... It sometimes you'll end up too low. If you if you mega flip if you take that mega flip that first mega flip too far, and you don't untarget on that chew, then you'll be off camera at the bottom of the screen. Whereas if you do this, it, it fixes it. Um, I mean, you're, I'm still kind of low here, but it works. But anyway, you can also just for practice, you can you know you can you can practice like doing that first mega flip untargeting on the chew getting the angle that you think would be good and then turning around 180 like this with the same kind of chew untargeting tech that I described earlier and seeing, okay, that's where I, that's where I was aiming. Was that actually going to work? <laughs> and uh, understand how you, you should have uh, adjusted or curved to make it work. I'm bad at mega flips while talking. Uh, okay. So that might help with Collision Viewer. There's other things later in the uh, run where the Collision Viewer will, def will definitely help. But then after you land in the, uh, or I guess I guess I should, I guess I should talk about getting 
getting into the... Come on, man. Getting into the... <laughs> Wait, I was too far left. I forgot how bad this angle was from the setup. Okay. So, after you, after you get in here... I guess I really don't have anything to say about this other than you kind of just have to get used to it. Here I landed in this particular spot where I targeted the wall immediately, but anyway, you're just going to target and then backwalk and then side hop if you have to, to find the load zone. In that case, I could have just backwalked directly into it. Um, okay, and then you're in Deku Palace. I'm going to load the state so that the time of day is correct. So. I'm going to teach the backup here first, because the backup is one, more important to know, and two, probably easier. Um, yeah, you can, if you really want to, you can just go for the backup right off the bat. The backup is this, pull a bomb, walk to like here, or ho wherever you can get on the fence, and then do do the inputs like you're doing a hover, but then release the shield. Don't, don't hold shield. So that instead of... Um, Instead of the bomb hitting you in midair, and or like hitting your shield in midair, it actually just hits you and boosts you back uh, up onto this fence. And then roll down here, backflip up onto this fence, and get maybe get a little bit farther to the left if you're like too close to this edge. And then hold upright for a bit, and then roll and grab this. And then wait for this platform if you want, or try to walk along this fence awkwardly if you're. Uh, a little bit too cocky like me and then fall down. Uh, and then equip, equip Deku Mask here and just fly to the other platform. Which, because I waited around a bunch, this other platform is going to be in a bad spot and I'm going to have to wait for it. But if you do this quickly enough, you'll make the first possible cycle. Maybe I could have made it to that, actually. <laughs> You'll make the first possible cycle. You'll land on it like right here. You like when it's right here, like a full cycle earlier. And one thing that I look at as a visual cue for for when you can fly, when you can get out of this flower here and, and still make it, is these big leaves or whatever they are. Basically, if if this platform that you're on is if the center of it is like centered on these leaves that you're that it's about to pass over or closer this direction, then you can start flying and make it with good aim. If it's more to the left, if it's like over here, you know, if you, if you in the center of this platform are, are more over here on this side of the leaves, then you're going to have to wait for the platform to start moving back to the right. But like right now, I know that I can release and make it with good aim. Just aim straight for this corner and you'll just pop up. I mean, ideally I would have aimed a little bit more for the actual corner, but hopefully you get what I mean. So that's, that's the backup, that's what you do if anything goes wrong with the main strat. Or you can just do that, it's not really that slow even. Um, but the main strat is going to be ISG, walk, wow, <laughs> ISG, and uh, this is an ISG that you might want to buffer I guess, so here. Buffer your ISG maybe. Wait, did I just fail buffering ISG? Huh. Okay, well, the f I, don't, I don't know how to buffer anything, apparently. Or just get ISG, man! <laughs> get ISG, walk down, turn up and target, and then backflip for the hover, and then backflip again onto this fence. It's a little bit awkward, you, that movement. Um, just something that you have to get used to. Let me save a state a little bit later. Two backflips, and then pull a bomb and get get that angle by moving up right there, and then you're gonna do hovers right here. Um, oops, I failed the movement. I think I need to <laughs> take a break from recording this in a minute. Okay, so so once you side up onto this fence, you basically want to pull the pull the, you basically want to pull the bomb immediately and then walk up left and then target to get this angle, and then backwalk to the edge, and then try to get like almost a full height hover. 
What we're trying to do here is not to actually land on top of the platform. We're trying to do something similar to what I just did with the Deku flying onto the platform, onto that other platform above and behind me. Um, I... So, so, so how it works is if, if you are moving toward a platform, whether you're side hopping or facing towards it or whatever, and for whatever reason you can't ledge grab, but you can, you also are too high to go under the platform, but you're not high enough to like land on top of it. It will, the platform will, you'll somehow get popped up on top of the platform. I don't exactly understand how this works, but basically there's a certain height range where if you side hop directly into the side of the platform, it'll just pop you up. And the, the height range that works for this is basically not quite three full height hovers. So if you get too good of a height hover on that bomb hover, and then you also do two full height hovers up the choose. Oh no, I was too slow. Hopefully I wasn't too slow before I made the save state. Height hover, height hover, height hover. That was too high. Um, so you have to intentionally lose... Oh my gosh, the save state is a little awkward. You have to intentionally lose a little bit of height. If you get a good height hover, just intentionally delay one of the chew hovers like that. And then when this platform reaches its peak, like as it's reaching its peak, I did it too late there. Uh, you want to just roll. Well, you want to cancel your ISG first. So I just shield to cancel my ISG and I shield turn to get the angle at the same time. And then as the platform reaches its peak, roll and you'll do a, the same type of pop up here. That part is not really precise at all. You'll get it down quick. But um, you can use the music here for audio cues if you're just doing the trick first try. The music should be the same every time. Um, I use the music as for audio cues, but it's a little bit different with KZ for some reason. I guess the lag is different slightly, but um, yeah, once once you get up here, just roll into the load zone, pause and equip Deku Mask immediately if you didn't already equip it from doing the backup. Uh, transform and then just spin down and press Ocarina. And then do the cutscene. And then you'll end up kicked out to out here. I'm going to stop the video right here and take a break. I will be right back. Okay. Uh, the run continues. Let's go. Uh, so yeah, as soon as you gain control here, you start backwalking. You can target as he's standing up and then just start backwalking. And then you want to cut left, like bounce once and cut to the left. You can also just be early and that's completely fine too. This, what I just did there, well, if I had walked far enough left to make it into the load zone, or if I just turn around at the last second, basically that, or that, or the frame in between those where you get a nice single bounce. I don't know. Basically all of these that I'm doing are like the exact same speed. There's like maybe one frame difference between all these examples I'm doing right now. But ideally, the one I try to go for is this kind of... I keep going one frame early, but there's this in-between one that I got the first time where it's like just one bounce and then you land in just the right spot. Um, whatever. <laughs> these are all fine, is what I'm saying. And then just spin twice. Ideally, you get that little jump. The jump, by the way... I guess I'll just explain this. Um even though it's such a minor thing, but uh, the jump when Deku Link uh, is spins off, off a, an edge like that, it's it's just... it just has to do with the fact that when you're spinning around, he's turning. And if, if he's not facing the ledge when you jump off the ledge, then he's not gonna... he's not gonna jump. He's just gonna... he's just gonna get, kinda go off the edge like that. So... Um, so it's really just a certain distance, like, like, um, a certain distance from the ledge, if I spin right now, certain distance from the ledge, he will happen to, not happen to, but he will, he'll go off the ledge right when he's facing the correct direction to actually be able to jump, which would be like right now. If he went off on this frame, then he would jump, but I think this is going to be a frame late. Yeah, so a one frame later was not, a, oh wait. Oh, that was, I, he did go off right after that frame, so that was a jump. 
But like if I were to... Oh, whoops, I thought I had a save state. Um, if I were to spend like here... This is definitely late. See, he's already turned too much for this to turn into a jump, so he just kind of spins off. So it's just about spinning at a certain distance from the edge. Uh, but then just uh, do some movement here. If you ever spin in such a way, I mean, how close your spin is to the edge of the of these lily pads as well is kind of it kind of does matter for how much distance you're gonna get. If you if you ever get too much distance and you're like overshooting, you can kind of just press press back to like flick down to cancel your momentum when you're on top when you're over one of the lily pads. Um, here, this trick is really lenient. It's just, um, you know, you know, you're just gonna turn human and then instantly, like, mash to roll somewhere, and kind of roll in this general direction toward this lower part of the ledge here, and you can pop up on it. Um, but it, see, you know, see up if you need to. But keep in mind the lily pad is moving back and forth a tiny bit, see? I'm not moving anything right now, this is just the lily pad. But, you know, anywhere generally in that range is going to work. And then take off the mask and just, just mash for a roll and then mash the mask button again and spin up here. This is a little bit weird how you can get up on it from all the way down here. But, you know, try to cut this corner reasonably tight. Um, but try not to do that. Wait, I just I forgot I didn't make a save state again. My my subconscious is trying to get me to get more chances at doing that that movement like I was just talking about out of the palace, and yet I keep failing it. Okay, not failing it, just getting the other frame that's just as fast. Okay, uh, turn right when you're coming out of that flower. I guess I never described that exactly, but. You have a certain number of frames to hold a direction to turn without losing any time before before you can actually come out of the flower and actually fly. Um, and then of course you have more frames. You could just sit here extra time and, and keep turning if you want to, but there's a few frames where you can turn just a little bit for free without losing any time, still coming out as soon as you can. And then... Okay, fly a little more directly than that to this to this spot right in front of the uh, right in front of the statue here. You'll get this text immediately, and this is a text where you, it's kind of multiple. It's it's a whole bunch of different quick text sections that are like separate from each other. So I'm really going back and forth between B and A, between mashing B and mashing A, or really just timing in a in a press, I guess. I don't know, it's something you have to get a feel for. Basically, for each section of quick text that... Uh, for each separate section of quick text that you can advance through all in one chunk, you want to just try to press B at the beginning and then switch to A uh, to clear it at the, at the end and then switch back to B for the next chunk of quick text. I wasn't doing a very good job there because it's kind of awkward when you have a save state within the text like I just had. But as soon as you get out of that text, uh, transform. And then just mash A to talk to the statue, and then you're going to learn Song of Soaring, and then you're going to pause. Um, you can see here on the route, pause, and set the Deku Palace map point. Um, the, the way the pause menu works is it's, it's setting a certain index for where your cursor is on a map. And it turns out that all of those cursor positions correspond to cursor positions on the soaring map, which is really a different map with different spots. But every index on the pause menu map corresponds to a different, uh, course, well, every location on the pause menu map that you can put the cursor over corresponds to a different lo location that you can soar to. So you're setting, you're, you're just putting the cursor over the Deku Palace map point so that you will soar to the Mountain Village Owl. And then you will end up here. And, uh, Really, what I recommend doing here is just a super slide. So slash this to get a bomb drop, and then pull a bomb. Quick turn with a decent angle, and then do a super slide, hopefully better than the one that I just did. Um, so I guess one thing to know, this is pretty minor, and you probably just want to like 
when you, when you're new, you probably just want to get an angle kind of like this to like get. I for some reason can't super slide right now, but you kind of you probably want to get an ang angle kind of like that, so that you can get past the ice before you have to drop the bomb and roll for the super slide. However, if you want to walk more to the right, it takes a little more time to to set it up. So you might end up being kind of halfway on the ice still when you start the super slide, but this actually saves quite a bit of time to get an angle more like this. Well, more like that, like. More, more, more like aimed toward this tree, but not quite. Like aimed there rather than aimed like over there. So the difference would be like, you'd be like, walk, just walking more to the right there like that. And you, you, for some reason, it's just completely impossible to super slide while I'm talking. Like that was, <laughs> I don't understand what I'm doing. So that is like a pretty much perfect angle, like I'm gonna be... Well, it, I could have been a little bit more toward the tree, but that's a lot better than if I had just done the really... the angle that's easier to get quickly, but not quite as... This is gonna be... I'm gonna, gonna be kind of hitting on this slope. And like even... like you can carry that all the way into the load zone, but even if you're like kind of aimed at this snow... this big boulder snowball thing... That's kind of slow. You kind of you really do want to be aimed like over here. I don't know if the load zone actually starts earlier on this side or what, but for some reason that is a quite a bit faster, like at least half a second. I don't know. Maybe just about half a second. Okay. Uh, so that's what I recommend there is, is to do a super slide. The ice does make it awkward, but if you if you practice the movement, you should be able to um, get past the ice in time to uh, to do a super slide. Okay, so for this, I mean, you can just you can just do the completely easy thing here and just roll. Just roll. I'm not really recommending using a bomb here because the first uh, using a bomb at the beginning. Well, there's a few different options for how to use a bomb. So I'm I'm, I'm just recommending getting a good angle for a backwalk there and then quick turning and backwalking. That's that's my basic easy recommendation. Uh, if you there, there are ways to pull a bomb right here at the very beginning, but if you're trying to carry that, if you're trying if you're trying to hess and carry it all the way to the very end, into the load zone, that's incredibly hard. So I don't recommend trying to learn that right off the bat. Uh, you can do a super slide, but it doesn't really save much time. Much time. Um, instead, what I recommend if you want to do something a little bit faster is to walk a little bit toward up left here, and then okay, a little more toward up left than that. Sorry. And then do a recoil flip off of that tech type, just to save a little bit of time uh, on the way to that first bridge. And then, if you're comfortable using an extra bomb, you can also pull a bomb somewhere around here. Get this uprightish angle. And uh, hopefully not super slide into the ice. I almost hit the ice there. It's, it's kind of tight to get the angle to do a super slide, but... Uh, you will you will get used to what kind of again this kind of depends on your diagonal like if you're if you have a straight angle here then maybe your diagonal is such that you can just as soon as you turn upright you basically have the angle for me it's more like for me it's more like if i have a straight angle here i can walk upright for like a few frames and then i basically have the angle and then i can either just backwalk or super slide the super slide saves about 4 seconds if you pull the bomb like really early for it but uh You know, when, you, when, you're, when you're first uh, starting out running this route, even though I have like a bunch of extra bomb drops in the written in the route, I'm you know I'm recommending that you get a bunch of extra bomb drops, but uh, you're still probably gonna run out and need to get get extra even more extra bomb drops. So I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend trying this super slide, you know, right when you first start running the game. But uh, if you find that your movement is clean enough to set it up consistently and that you're bomb count is consistently good enough, then go for it. It saves like four seconds. Uh, here, just as soon as you gain control, let me, let me actually do it as soon as I gain control. Side hop, that's because, the side hop is because if you start trying to roll in the ice, you kind of just, you kind of gain, you kind of build momentum 
slowly on the ice. It's maybe kind of hard to tell, but it's much faster to get up to full speed immediately with the side hop and then just roll to that corner. Also on ice, whoops. On ice, you can actually mash rolls. I'm not sure if that's actually faster. I think, I think. <laughs> so, someone should tell me if that's actually faster because I have not been doing that in runs, but I've, I've heard something about mashing on ice. I, I think it's at least not slow like normal roll mashing is. Anyway, uh, go to that corner and, and slide down. Two more rolls and get this bomb drop. Um, without this bomb drop, you could skip this bomb drop, but without it, the the route would be like pretty much bomb perfect at some point. So you definitely want to get this bomb drop. Uh, and then soar to Great Bay, which is just the default location. So like you're not you're not doing a pause here at all. You just pull the ocarina and play Song of Soaring, and then mash A, and you'll soar to Great Bay. Uh, I'm gonna load the state so we don't have to watch a soar. So here, um, basically as soon as you gain control, just kind of roll down right and into the water and start swimming. Mikau, you have to push Mikau to shore, and he's he's on a cycle where he bobs up and down. Okay, here you're going to get this text when you get to about here. When you get this text, mash through it with A and B while you're still holding the direction, or you know, you at least have to start holding the direction as soon as the text ends. I just keep holding the direction, mash A and B, and then I hold A out of the last text box. Um, anytime text clears in this game, for some reason there's a slight delay. I guess because they want, if you're like mashing the text, they don't want you to accidentally do something like roll off a cliff uh, after you clear a text box by pressing A, um, and, and then keep hitting A again. So th there's a short delay of like, I don't know, a quarter of a second or something third of a second before before your A presses actually do anything in the game. So you can kind of mash the text box and then start holding A like right now and it won't actually dive like it says it will. And if, if you swim directly to Macau, you do this movement exactly like I just did, then the, the timing of him moving up and down, you can see him moving up and down right now. It'll work out so that you can just do this. And then play Oh, sorry, I should, I should play Song of Double Time the way that you should play it. Song of Double Time is a <laughs> hilariously difficult song to play fast, so just, just play it slow like that. Um, something about repeated notes in this game. Um, the game really doesn't really does not want you to play them quickly. But yeah, you can... So this is all assuming that it was still day one, by the way. If you were slow some at some point earlier in the in the route and it was and it ended up being nighttime before you got here you'll you should probably just go ahead and watch the cutscene but pretty pretty soon you will be good enough that you will be able to consistently get here while it's still daytime and do that cutscene skip um if for some reason you mess up the movement to Macau, um i mean it's 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 pretty easy to to just swim straight to him like I like I said and then you can hold a oh by the way I, I didn't fully explain the pushing Macau part um, you're holding a out of that text because when you when you hold a when you're holding a in advance as you swim up to him that's what causes you to like automatically home in on him and start pushing him as early as possible like right now you see how I kind of snapped to him now I'm just holding up. And then I'm, I'm, I'm switching to holding like between up and up left, and I'm still holding A. I don't have to release A. The game just automatically makes me start walking at some point because Mikau is on the shore. So I'm just, I was just holding A, and then I was holding between up and up left, and at some point I just automatically started walking past him. I reacted to that and started walking up. And I walked up to about this point where I will be able to play the Song of Healing to to heal Macau. And played Song of Double Time, which again only works from day to night. Um, but yeah, if if Yeah, I don't know. You you can learn to pay attention to his up and down cycle if you really need to learn how to back it up if you know, in the in the case where you somehow got to him really slowly and missed the cycle. But you probably, you probably don't really need to do that. Okay, and then you should already be in a good spot to play Song of Healing. So, 
um, do that. I guess I guess if you I guess if you're slightly slow though, you're you're probably not gonna fully miss the cycle. But if you're slightly slow, you might have to stop earlier than I did. Like I walked all the way up to here where where I can already kind of be in the right place to play the song. But if you want to play it safe, you can maybe walk up to like here or something and then do one roll after playing the song. You know, walk to here, play the song, and then after you gain control again, just do one roll up and play the other song, Song of Feeling. Uh, okay, so you play Song of Feeling, you get the Zora Mask, and then watch a very long cutscene, which I'm going to skip here, and respawn here. So this is a bit awkward. Um, I'm, I'm going to recommend doing a super slide, but the absolute easiest thing to do is just, well, no matter what you want to do, here, you're going to hold right and then roll once and get, and change the camera. And this, I just happened to roll on the right frame that I got a really nice uh, angle here. Basically, just barely to the right of this little uh, white wall thing with the waves on it uh, is, is what you want. And you have to walk a little bit farther than this, and then you can, you can quick turn. Um, if you don't, so here's, I'll just show all the different ways it can go wrong that I know of. If you try to quick turn too early, hmm, it's not actually happening. If you try to quick turn too early, I know it, it might, it might slightly depend on your angle, but if you try to quick turn too early, you can target the grave, which will ruin your, your chances at getting a good super slide and you'll have to set up the angle again. Whoops. <laughs> um, also, if you're like too far to the right, you're going to have to deal with weavers that are going to pop up and probably when you if you're trying to do a super slide you're going to like try to set it up and then they're going to like mess with you and blow up your bomb and that's annoying so you want to get an angle kind of like that which might take a little bit of like adjusting i keep on getting the correct one immediately but if you i'm, I'm blaming the lag for that one <laughs> okay like that i had to adjust a little bit upright but then I had the perfect angle to just super slide all the way in. That super slide does save a good bit of time, but if you really need to, you can just uh, do basically the same movement, but then back walk instead. There, if I hadn't walked a little bit forward, even though I had the right angle, the correct angle immediately, if I hadn't walked a little bit forward, I might have targeted the grave when I tried to turn around. So this this isn't the end of the world if you want to do that. Um, is there anything else to say about this? Yeah, you can't really you can't really walk too far either or else you're gonna deal with levers there's kind of a small space in there where um, there's kind of this small area that you have to start the super slide without uh, having levers all over you so if, if you have to like just if you have to just stop here for a second or you know just stop somewhere to to do a super slide man come on um to do something like that, like that's fine. Okay, here I'm. I'm not really recommending any anything fancy here. Uh, I'm just recommending regular swimming. You know, there's there's a super swim. There's multiple ways you can set up a super swim here. I am gonna recommend a super swim later in the run, but the super swim here is not as important. It doesn't save as much time, I think, and it also maybe it saves a similar amount of time, but it's it's much harder. So I'm just going to recommend, you know, basic roll to the water and then swim. You might need to pull out your your Zora barrier there to kill a fish, but then, yeah, just swim in there. Uh, is there anything else I want? Uh, well, I, I guess I'll just explain. You can you can do this pause any time, by the way, like after you use the bomb for the super slide. But, uh, yeah, equip, equip Zora mask over the bombs and... You don't want to just- the reason why you don't want to just immediately turn Zora is because you get a longer cutscene. You get this full cutscene with the screaming. Deku Link doesn't know how to scream, so he gets a shorter cutscene. Uh, yeah, don't- don't- I mean, avoid all these enemies. I don't know, I don't think I need to tell you how to do that. And then once you get into- oh, I, I guess- I guess I should explain how to get good dolphin dives. I mean- I'm not totally consistent at it, but the best dolphin dive is like the shallowest one possible, or like the lowest dive possible. Like so, like that is a high dolphin dive. That is a high dolphin dive. That's obviously not high enough. 
to be a dolphin dive at all. But yeah, I ideally you're getting like the the lowest possible dives. Like some of these are good. That one's good. That one's good. That's not. There's, you know, it's it's there's a bunch of different heights you can get, but basically just as you're entering the water again, you're just pressing down very slightly and maybe down right or whatever if you're trying to steer toward a different direction. And yeah, you just want the the dolphin dives that get you out of the water, but not that high. You, you, if you pay attention, you can tell that some of these that I'm getting are slightly higher than others. You definitely don't want to like, you know, do these huge ones that some people do. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, swim into Zora Hall, and then uh, what? Do, what does the route have to say about this? Uh, Snowhead map point, right? Uh, oh, so yeah, if when you pause, you're not going to pause right here, you're going to pause in Zora Hall. But when you pause, in this case, so in most cases you kind of just want to tap, tap around, you know, tap to move the cursor. Press the stick like three separate times or two separate times to get to whatever you're trying to get to. But when you have to move the cursor more than three spaces, it's generally faster to hold the cursor if you can hold it in advance. So for instance, in this case, like, what you can do is, when you pause, already start holding right. Just as soon as you've pressed pause, start holding right and don't release it until you're on that map point. And that will move the cursor very quickly. So yeah, you'll set the map point to snowhead and then you'll soar. And then you will be... Oh, I guess I don't have a save state for this, but it's not really... <laughs> it's not really difficult. Uh, you're going to be out here, you're going to play the song while standing on the, uh, you're just going to step like one inch. Oh, whoops. I don't have a, I don't have a flying cheat. I'll just, I'll just, uh, show from here. <laughs> you're going to step one inch from that owl onto the platform and play Sonata of Awakening. And then, uh, st step another inch into that flower. And in this area... You want to be targeted when possible while flying, because the lag is really bad in this area, and being targeted reduces the lag somehow, I guess just because there's black bars at the top and bottom of the screen, so it's not rendering as much stuff? I, that's the only explanation I can think, think of. But you'll get much more lag if you're not targeted for that. So, get, I mean, get a good angle, because you don't want to fall off here. You don't want to fail to make it <laughs> across. But, um... Once you get a good angle, just uh, target and keep that angle. So you might you might accidentally fly with this angle or something, so you might have to do some some goofy whatever. But you should be, should be targeted as much as you can. Okay, and then you're in Woodfall Temple. You're just gonna spin off of this ledge. I think it doesn't matter in that case whether you um, whether you get the little hop off the edge or not. Not not exactly sure. But then spin one more time into a kind of angle where you're pointed directly toward this corner here. This corner of the root and the wall. And then try to target before these bows become targetable. And then backflip up onto this root. One side hop, three spins. And then just fly. And I'm kind of looking at... Where's my, where's my big red arrow? I'm looking at this line on the ground right here. See, uh, the edges of the platform have like a line here. The arrow is like kind of getting in the way. There's like a line here, and then there's another line here, and then there's another line here. Uh, I'm kind of looking at this this line, and I'm kind of aiming for that, or a little bit to the right of that, to very safely fly onto this platform and not get hit by the um, not get hit by this guy. See, I can spin right past him right here, and that's fine, but if I were right here and tried to spin, he would own me, or maybe if I were right there, he would own me. Okay. Uh, so yeah, land somewhere right here and spin to the door. Uh, turn human, and then play Song of Double Time again. And the reason we're doing this is so that it will be day two when we get to the woods. We need to use the grotto in the woods, which is only there on day two, and day two woods is also faster anyway. Um, because the other witch that you need to talk to, whoops, I just tried to move my chair and kicked my desk. Um, the other witch you need to talk to will be in the woods instead of, instead of in her hut. 
Okay, so what's next? So we're doing we're doing the torch thing. Um, there's a setup that you can do that's not too bad. If you if you want to try to copy what other runners do, that's fine. But I'm just gonna rec recommend the totally easy thing, which is just mash through this text, roll once, and set up somewhere around here, like in between these two lines. It's it's fairly lenient, but it also matters what frame of hover you get. Uh, what, you know, if you get like a pure height hover versus distance or whatever, uh, you know, get get this angle face uh, pointed toward the middle of the torch, and then turn around. You can shield turn to make sure you get the to make it easier to get a straight turn, and then. Uh, do this equip. I'm putting chews and bombs back on the buttons where they were where they were before, um, so that you don't have to move the Zora mask manually. You can equip bombs on Z like I just did, and then move them to Y. You can press. You can. So what I just did is I, I put chews on X, then I put bombs on Z, and then I move the bombs to Y, which does kind of a swap of those two C button equips, so that you don't have to you know. Go and get Zora Mask back. Because you still want Zora Mask equipped, you just want it on a different button now, because presumably you want the bombs uh, on the same button as before. Again, you can do whatever equips you want. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just recommending it this way. Uh, okay, and then you are going to, from here, do a hover. You can do a distance hover or even like more than a distance hover that like loses a little bit of height this is this is very lenient if you do it this way um that was a little bit farther than you would maybe like to go but um but it's fine actually i i really should have i should have messed with this a little bit more you can probably figure out where exactly to set up to make it maybe this is a little bit better so you won't actually accidentally go too far like on this line let's see I'm saving state here. See, that's that's a little bit better. So if when you land like that, you can just hold down left, and hopefully your down left is not so terrible that you fall down. Uh, for me, it works there to to jump up onto onto this ledge, and you don't have to do that jump slash if you find it scary. But uh, you can also, by the way. Um, for instance, if you fail the first try of ISG, you might want to do this, or you just might want to do it anyway. You can do kind of a... Well, actually, I'm not sure if that is going to work. Let's see. You can do kind of... Oh, that works. I know you can do like a... Almost a pure height hover, but a pure height hover probably doesn't work. Like this, this might be close to failing. Let's see. Okay, no. Maybe the place where I'm standing is, is just really good. Um, so may maybe closer to this line is where you want to set up, but you can mess with it, and uh, yeah, just know that the distance of your hover does matter. Um, but it's not it's not crazy precise. For it seems like in in my experience, it seems like a longer like more of a distance hover works, but some but sometimes a shorter hover also works. But there's like an in between frame sometimes that doesn't work. But it probably depends. It can depend. It can probably depend on where you're standing as well. So you just have to you just have to find a place where you're comfortable standing and uh, practice it and practice it a few times. Um, also be aware C up since you're C upping here. Actually, no, it doesn't matter. We have the ocarina here, so you're not going to get the title text. Okay, so yeah. Um, let's see if this in between frame works. Okay. See that? Okay. See the in the in between frame is where you're maybe getting too much distance and like overshooting and falling down here. Um, okay. But it, there's there's two kind of different lenient, two different kind of lenient windows where you can um, land right in the middle of the torch, and then uh, hold down left to jump off the torch, and you can. I'm not gonna do it again because I've just did it so many times. But you can see. If you rewind, you can see that I released the stick very briefly before I jump slashed. So after I held down left to jump off, I released the stick and there was a moment where I was not holding the stick. And during that time was when I, only after I had released the stick for at least one frame, was when I pressed B to jump slash. 
if you try to jump slash while you're still holding down left, you'll get some weird thing where you like... Oh, I guess I am doing it again. <laughs> um, you'll get some weird thing where... Okay. I, I, I couldn't make it work. I, I, my muscle memory kicked in and I... Uh, <laughs> I failed to do it wrong. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, you'll get some weird thing where he like lands up on the platform, but then the, the sword is like hitting the edge of the platform and then you like grab the ledge and it's kind of slow. Which is not the end of the world. But yeah, also you don't, like I was saying earlier, you don't have to do that jump slash at all. You can just grab the ledge and climb, it's totally fine. But then you want to ideally avoid pressing this button because it yeah, starts a cutscene, which is pretty slow. But then just roll to... Here, if you haven't, uh, if you don't have your sword drawn because you didn't do the jump slash, then you might just want to go ahead and draw it like here by doing a jump slash. Although, actually, don't do that. What you should do instead of that is when you get up to this door, press B right before you enter the door. Let me see if I can figure out the timing. Mm, maybe, maybe, maybe this is harder than I thought it was. It might be frame perfect to do it this way. What if I just do it as fast as I can? Okay, no, I think if you just press B and then immediately press A. No, I think I think it's frame perfect. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe don't do it that way. So yeah, maybe, maybe do a jump slash when you land right here. Um, or just draw your sword quickly at the door. Um, you can instantly draw your sword at any time by pressing B, which, you know, if you just press B, it's going to do a slash, obviously. Different slash depending on how you're moving. But if you just press B but then immediately hold shield, the shield is going to take precedent over the slash you were trying to do. So he's going to draw the sword for the slash, but then he's just going to crouch. So B, B into R is always a good way to draw your sword quickly. So maybe instead of the jump slash here, um, as you're jumping over this gap, which you can also just play it really safe and go around, but instead of jump slashing over that gap to draw your sword, you should just uh, quickly draw your sword here at the door like that, probably. And this fight, um, it's a little bit awkward sometimes. So basically you want to target immediately and then just walk forward and walk toward him. And ideally he will let you, apparently my shield doesn't work. <laughs> ideally he'll let you just walk straight forward and jump slash him. And then jump slash cancel and uh, jump slash him again. Like that. Just like that. And I am jump slash canceling. I'm not, I'm not using shield because I, I want to stay targeted. You want to you want to keep your clean target rather than like Z targeting him because if you target him he somehow starts magically dodging all your attacks. So you probably don't want to um, try to like shield to cancel the jump slashes. Just cancel the jump slashes with the spin of the stick. It's not like while you're targeted, Link isn't going to like turn around and, and run a different direction and anyway, so it's fine. Um but yeah, he can also he can also just kind of swerve to the side like he did that first time. For some reason, now he's not doing it. But if he does that, you just kind of have to give up and start, you know, let go of your target and just slash him four, four times. Um, I think that's I think that's all pretty straightforward. Uh, roll to the chest and got a big. A big scary trick coming up, but I will explain how to do it, and you will be prepared. Okay, after the after you clear this text, just target and backwalk, and somehow maybe don't do what I just did. Why? Why did he, I don't know why he swerved to the side there. To be honest, <laughs> that does happen to me sometimes. Okay, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, roll once, roll over the gap. Just just rolling back to the door. Here it's actually faster to do some side hops. I think even if you mash, it's quite a bit faster to do side hops, and you just want to curve them up a little bit. So, I guess enter this door kind of more to the left. So, more on the left. Like this. Um, and then just mash nine side hops. And then release the, your target and walk to the right. You can also try to time the side hops. They're much more easy to time when you're on flat ground like that. Uh, here, <laughs> okay, so here what I'm going to recommend is 
go and target this pillar. Flick down or shield turn down if you're more comfortable with that. Uh, and then you're gonna do you're gonna do three hovers if you get good hovers. So like that's a, that's a good enough hover. And then two two chew hovers, and then you're going to untarget on one of those chews, and then you're going to hold down and turn Zora to climb the ledge. So you have to untarget or else Zora can't turn around uh, to grab the ledge. If you um, so. In case it's not obvious, the height of this flower is important. You cannot just hover from this level, you know. You can't just hover from the ground, do three hovers and get high enough. You actually need this extra height from standing on top of this flower. Another uh, thing that makes this a little bit awkward is... If you're... Mm, that's not really what I wanted to get. If you're a little bit too far back like this... The timing becomes different to untarget on that last chew because you're up against a wall. And in this case, there happened to be a dragonfly that flew over here, and so I targeted the dragonfly even though I failed to target the chew. But as you can see, that's not always going to be the case. Here I am stuck with no dragonfly to target. Um, if this happens, I'm not exactly sure what to recommend. <laughs> I guess you can shield the chew without even hovering and... Well, there a dragonfly came. <laughs> so if the dragonflies bother you, I mean, you can, you know, you can just kill them if you're on the ground. But um, if they bother you when you're in the air, you can always like do an extra hover quickly to uh, to blow them up. But um, Yeah, I think the dragonflies are not very likely to bother you if you just if you actually just do this movement as quickly as you can as soon as you enter this room. Um, see, even even there, that was like I got a little bit too much of a distance hover, and I ended up like right ag right against the pillar. So, I think you really do want to set up pretty far forward on the on this flower. Like maybe here is where you want to walk walk up to. Let's try this one more time. And then you really just want to get pure height hovers if possible. So there I was able to target the chew with the normal timing and unlock the camera. So now I'm just holding down and turning Zora. By the way, when you transform... Um, some people don't notice this, so I need to call it out. When you transform, if you just... So you, you can obviously skip this this cutscene after the first time by just pressing the button again or pressing A again or whatever. I normally just, my habit is just to press the mask button multiple times and kind of mash it a little bit until you're sure that you're not getting that that extra cutscene. But an another thing is that there's a bit of a delay if you're not holding a direction. So like, you may, you may think that that delay is like part of the cutscene and wait to press a direction, <laughs> but if you just hold a direction, you will move as soon as you can. That's a much that's much less delay. Hopefully that makes sense. So I am gonna recommend an alternative strat here because there are some things that are awkward about this pillar hover, like I said. Um you can sometimes target by the way, for the, for this strat, you can sometimes target the first chew rather than the second chew. And then just do a reg do a chew hover back with the camera unlocked for that for that last hover. Um However, sometimes the dragonfly will be in, in an inconvenient spot, and you'll, when you try to target that first chew, you'll try to target the dragonfly instead, which it's fine if you target the dragonfly on the last hover, because you don't have to do another hover after that. However, it's not fine if you target the dragonfly after the first... Basically, when you target an enemy during a hover, you actually can't do another hover. <laughs> For some reason. Um, you get a different state where Link can just turn all the way around without having to do that shuffling thing. And uh, yeah, for whatever reason you can't do a hover out of that. So yeah, so that's why I'm recommending not trying to untarget until the last chew, but you know, until the last hover. But that means that you only have one chance at that on target, and if you're accidentally too close to the pillar, then it's kind of bad. But you don't have to be that close to the pillar. Like, if you saw that right there, it didn't look like I was that close to the pillar, but it's still fine to grab the ledge. So try to try to learn that strat. 
if you can't learn that strat, there's here, here's an alternative that I'm going to explain as, as well. Hold left and mash bomb and to throw a bomb like that. And then do a staircase hover like this. And that was a terrible, terrible staircase hover because I haven't done this strat in a million years, so I'm not used to the timing, but I'm pretty sure that's still going to work. You really just... Oh, that's not quite going to work, actually. <laughs> okay. You don't need... Basically, you don't need that much height, though. Okay, and the, the chew timing for this is different as well because you're up against a wall, but you do have two chances at it. Um, it's just slightly later timing for the for the untarget. Um, but basically, so okay, so so the whole thing is you're holding left as you enter the area and you're mashing bomb to throw. As long as you mash, as as long as you throw it in the first like three frames, I think it's you don't have to mash that fast at all. Um, it should go into a good position. And then you're immediately walking to whoops. You're immediately walking to this wall and pulling another bomb and getting ISG, and then you're hovering off the first bomb and then the second bomb. This may seem scary because it's a staircase hover. It's a really easy staircase hover setup <laughs> compared to any other staircase hover that you could potentially do in the run. I I personally I personally think this is this is easier than the um doing it doing it off the flower, but the flower does use fewer explosives, and I kind of worry that some people would think that the staircase hover is is harder. It, you know, it's going to take a little bit of practice to get used to it, but I don't know. Either that that's kind of the case for either of these strats. So just just decide which one. You know, try try both and see which one you're more comfortable with. But uh, I think that's I think that's all for this. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess if you if you do it this way. Then you're, you're climbing up in this spot, and you want to hold down left. I, I kind of I kind of did it, did that an awkward way. You you just hold down left as you're climbing. Okay, don't. <laughs> I haven't done this in so long. Hold down left as you're climbing, and then, and and then at some point roll and start buffering. And I'm not. You can see I'm not holding any buttons while I'm doing this buffering. But at some point you're gonna get to this frame where he starts to fall off the ledge. Well, not fall. He starts to grab the ledge because you're not holding any direction. Um, this exact frame, you you it, you need to make sure it looks like this because if you're late, if you're one frame late, it will look kind of similar to this, but uh, you'll fall down if you try what I'm what I'm about to say. But the frame that looks exactly like this, you unpause and during the unpause lag, hold both target and A, and you'll go into the pillar like that, and then you can target to get a straight angle. Take up Zora Mask, shield turned down. If this dragonfly is coming to get you because you took a million years, you can... Is he coming to get me? I don't know. Regardless, if he, if he is coming to get you, you can turn Zora, you can turn Zora again and like use your Zora barrier to kill him if he comes out, comes at you. Um, you don't want him to like knock you back because it's very easy to just fall off right here. <laughs> like literally one step forward uh, is a fall off into the void. Okay. So, so yeah, if you climb this way, you're holding down left, rolling, and then buffering, and then doing target and A on the right frame. Oh, that's actually one frame late, I think. Yeah, that's one. So that's what the one frame late looks like. It's very slightly different than the correct frame. Um, okay, but let me show the other way. If you if you do the hover the first way I described, I'm trying I'm trying to figure out if this dragonfly is coming to bother me. Maybe you should have walked a little farther forward. No, that's fine. Um, you're climbing in this spot, which means you want to target and slash with B, and then just hold left. I'm already holding left during the slash, and then I'm just buffering. Okay, and now here's the first frame, and again, you just have to get used to what this looks like, and it looks different from the other way. But um, on this frame, same thing, just press and hold target and A during the unpause lag. You might think that you can keep target held. I don't think you can keep target held. I think you have to, you know, because you were holding target going into this pause, but you, I think you actually have to press target again during the unpause lag. And by the way, I should probably explain this. It is possible to press buttons too early during the unpause lag. Um... Obviously, you can press them too late so that the actual frame happens before you press the buttons, but 
you can also you can also press them too early sometimes so kind of aim for like halfway in between pressing unpause and when you see the game moving and that should always be fine uh okay but either way you did do, you do that you're gonna shield turn down and here is here is one instance where i definitely would recommend buffering isg unless you're very comfortable with it and or very comfortable with the backups if you if you fail isg here you can you know get multiple chances and then you can even do get a chance at a damage isg like that which will which will definitely save you but if you fail, you know, if you fail your, your multiple tries at the ISG and then you fail the damage ISG as well, you're going flying you're going flying out into the nether regions. Um, so I'm gonna save in this with this angle. Uh, so you might want to buffer this ISG, is what I'm saying. And to make it a little bit easier to see your sword. Uh, which can help with visual cues for doing unbuffered ISG, but can also help with um, s confirming that you got ISG after you unpause. Um, you can you can hold left Af after you after I start shielding. I'm going to start holding left as I stab. Is this this guy really coming to bother me? Okay, let's see if my if that works. Okay, yeah, that does work. Like I said, <laughs> I never doubted myself for a second. Uh, okay, so I'm going to hold left as I stab, and then I'm going to buffer. Okay, this should be the frame, and if I just keep holding left for a, a little bit longer, I will see... Actually, I don't even think I have to hold left. I think I can just press... Can I just press A out of this? I'm, I'm actually... Hang on. I don't really know how buffering ISG works. Can I just press A out of this? Yeah, so I, I could see there for a second that... Uh, I could see there for a second that the sword was glowing because I got ISG. And w So what I'm going to recommend here is doing a microscopic hover like that. So that was like eighth or ninth fast flash timing uh, to get a very a very short hover. If you get a longer hover, even like a regular height hover, okay, that was not quite far enough. But if I went just a little farther than that, you would be in this in this dark place. <laughs> um, and you would have to like do another chew hover or something to get to a place where you can even see what you're doing. So, this helps. Tiny hover makes it so that you get a little bit of distance, so that you're not, um, you're not like rolling. Well, so that you don't roll forward and get farther away from your destination before you do the mega flip or mega side hop that I'm about to recommend. Uh, and yet you don't go far enough that you end up in the in the dark place. Okay, so after that one, after that one tiny bomb hover you need to do three megas which can be any combination you want of mega flips and mega side hops if you want you can do the classic three megas really long mega flip another really long mega flip or i guess not as long maybe like to right there and then i think this is good i don't really exactly remember the position for all these different options okay that was actually too far i think the first mega flip should not have been nearly that far um, I guess it's also different because I am in this spot. You probably, okay, anyway, you probably don't want to do three mega flips. What you probably want to do is either three mega side hops or one mega flip and two mega side hops. So with both of those options, you, you want to curve to the left at some point. Oh, also, if you're doing a mega flip, if you... If you want to do a mega side hop first, which is probably the main thing I'm going to recommend, it helps. The, the short hover that we just did helps for that. It's very awkward doing a right mega side hop to go left uh, from inbounds or from inside the pillar, but it's very easy to do it from here. So this is, this is what I'm going to recommend. By the way, mega side hops are just a lot easier to buffer than mega flips, I think. Can't you just do this? Yeah. So you want to time these so that you're holding full right for that one and you are you know, you're curving that one as as hard to the left as you can. That was a right mega side hop and I just kept holding right. And then you're going to do that again. And and for both of these you're just kind of stopping it right when Link starts to scream. So 
you can listen for his his gasp that precedes his he kind of gasps right before he screams <laughs> and uh you can listen for that gasp as an audio cue to react to maybe i shouldn't have stopped curving there but this this should work i'm guessing this is still gonna work curve it back and oh that that actually didn't work okay so yeah you i don't think you want to um I think you want to full curve them, so full curve. Right when he stopped, started screaming was when I um, stopped it. Right when he started screaming was when I stopped it, and then back the other way with the left, and that should work. So that's that's the way to do it with just mega side hops. It is more lenient. The curving part, the curving aspect, you kind of just have to use visual cues to to know if you're in the right spot or whatever, but. The curving aspect becomes more lenient if you do one mega flip. So you might want to do this. This is a little bit more awkward though because you don't want to full curve that if you did a mega flip and got more distance like I just did. But then a mega side up should work and it should be much more lenient. You're not nearly as close in this case to um, going inbounds. Um, also, I'm I'm untargeting on the chew every time, which is is pretty easy. I mean, it's the same timing as as usual untargeting on chews uh, during a hover when you're not up against a wall. Um, but that that kind of fixes the camera. If you, if you don't do that, you might end up way off screen, uh, and you might have to wait for the camera to kind of catch up to where you are. But if if that happens, you want to equip the bow. I actually have it written out. Okay, yeah, I have, I have it written out to equip the bow here because you're about to equip the bow for the Adal fight probably anyway. And if you pull the bow, that always fixes the camera to where you are. So like if I do a super long mega flip and don't fix the camera, but then I pull the bow, now I can now I can see what I'm doing. Obviously this is not a good position. <laughs> this is very this is very far past where you're actually supposed to be. So um yeah, this is another place where potentially the collision viewer can help. It's a little bit it's a little bit awkward, but like you can see Let's let's see how helpful this actually is. Actually, I should probably I should probably look down from here. Let's see. Oh, that doesn't actually work when you're untargeted. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, so down, down below me and, and mostly to my right is this big unloaded room, which is, which is the big room, right? It's the room with the boss door in it. If you're familiar with the, what the rest of this temple looks like, like here's a little alcove where there's like a fairy somewhere uh, in a bubble. And like down below me, there's like some big fire rings and stuff. Um, let me just actually turn around and show you. So up there there's that that blue uh is is where we're aiming that's that's the the load zone to enter the boss room it's connected to a little platform that's inbound in this unloaded room uh and we kind of want to curve around this this slope here i guess I, I forget that i have my big red arrow so this edge we kind of want to aim to like go around that edge take advantage of the fact that we can curve around the outside which is why we kind of go to the go to this direction instead of just going straight back from from the initial pillar location and trying to go over here and anyway um hopefully this makes some amount of sense but you can you can play around with this to try to get a better intuition for, for why this is working and for where you have to be but basically we're, we're going forward and then we're curving around that kind of slope we're trying to cut that corner and end up in the in the load zone um this makes it very hard to look at normal visual cues. But yeah, I think I think if you do it this way, if you just listen for those audio cues and you and you notice whether you were late or early on the on the link screaming cues. And and if you end up kind of somewhere around this corner, right? Like Link's head is just below this corner here like, you know, in the w way far in front of me and in, in the room where I came from uh, is this corner. 
And if you're kind of level, approximately level with the corner, then this should work. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Play around with it. Ask questions in the Discord if you are struggling with that, because different people have slightly different ways of doing that. But yeah, remember that you can pull the bow to fix the camera if you need to. Um, use your audio cues of Link screaming. If if you're if you're consistently not getting enough distance and like ending up in the uh, in the unloaded room, then uh, that generally means you are cutting back too early. You're not going far enough left, or you're cutting back right too early. If you end up voiding out and not landing in the un unloaded room, but also not making it to the to the boss room, then that means you are uh, going too far left before cutting back right or cutting back right too late, I guess. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, you'll probably have bow equipped here, but if you don't, maybe go ahead and equip it. But although there, there are ways to do this without equipping bow, and I'm, I'm going to show a few different ways because people have different level. Some people are comfortable doing quick spins like the, the actual good strat. Um, but I'll show the slightly easier quick spin method where you don't do the initial jump slash, I guess. So if you want to do the do it the really, f I'll show the I'll show the very easiest way first. <laughs> the very easiest way is you shoot him. You can always shoot him kind of like uh, on his shins. <laughs> if you shoot him in in the shins, he will uh, he will always pretty much always get stunned. If you try to shoot him elsewhere on his body, he'll shield it or maybe jump away or something. Uh, so yeah, just shoot him somewhere around his shins, and then just walk up and do the very easy thing. I started going too early. Uh, but, I mean, again, just continue with the very easy thing. 20 crouch stabs. <laughs> uh, that will kill the boss, and it's better than, you know, trying to do it a hard way and, and failing and letting him jump around and do all kinds of stuff. But, uh, you can also... There are other things you can do. You can... Well, I guess I'll show us a way that I, I would maybe consider potentially easier than quick spins, which is to wait for him to to attack. Sorry, wait at this particular spot for him to attack. If you if you try to get too close to him, he will um, he will do a different attack or jump away, I guess. But if you stand at that particular distance from him, I kind of look at this purplish area on the ground and I walk a little bit past it to this like black line that I'm kind of standing on right now. Um, and then just wait for him to attack and shoot. I wasn't, I didn't pull the bow quickly enough because I was talking. So get, get into this position, pull the bow, and then shoot as he comes at you. Sometimes that will be slightly delayed because bad RNG, he'll like do a little bit of extra dancing, but eventually he will do that attack and you can stun him during that attack and that will put him in this very convenient spot right in front of you. And then you can do this strat, which personally I... I think I think it's kind of an annoying strat, but multiple I've heard multiple beginner players say that they like this strat better than the quick spin strat. So here it is: uh, release the target, and then draw your sword, and then see up and look down a little bit, <laughs> so that you can target without targeting him. Target to get a straight angle without targeting him. Let's, let's see if I can actually do it, and then jump slash. The weird thing is, you kind of get pushed to the right here. So you have to do this awkward, like, one step down left every time. <laughs> In between every jump slash, you would need to do, like, one step down left. And I'm not doing jump slash cancels. You can do jump slash cancels, which can maybe make it easier. Uh, but also, like, at the same time, that also makes it more awkward. Um, like, there I have more time to adjust, but, like, I'm doing so much more... <laughs> weird control stick movement, I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. But anyway, it's just 10 jump slashes, so that's quite a bit faster than 20 crouch stubs. Um, and it helps It helps to be familiar with that jumps, that uh, repeatedly jump slashing type of movement or type of pattern, um, because that will be helpful for Majora much later. 
Um, so that's another way of doing it if you want to if you want to do it a little bit faster than the crouch tabs, but you really hate quick spinning. Quick spinning, by the way, I've had really a really bad experience with a controller that I had, um, where quick spinning just actually was not consistent because of the controller, no, due to no fault fault of my own, and this took me forever to figure out. So that might be the case for you as well. Um, if you can't consistently quick spin, you might also just be bad. <laughs> I mean, no, don't don't be offended by that if you are, because uh, quick spinning is is genuinely kind of hard, but or at least hard to be very consistent at. But um, yeah, if you do want to do a quick spin strat, you can do it really fast by you can set it up immediately by jump slashing here. But you can also you can also set it up you can also do it the same way, but just side hop out of the way to dodge his sword, which makes it a little bit more lenient to get it started. So. Here I'm I'm listening to his ya huh ya huh ya side hop and then I'm walking back in and doing seven quick spins. Oh, you actually have to time the last one as well, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe that makes it a little bit a little bit harder. Um So the the the, the weird thing about the the quick spins is you have to delay the fourth one. So Walking back, three, I'm slightly delaying that fourth one, and then slightly delaying the seventh one as well. For some reason your quick spins come in like groups of three. The third quick spin in a row is going to be like a slightly different longer animation, and because of that you have to time the one after that slightly differently. So if you're comfortable with quick spinning you can try that, you can even try what people do in runs, but I'm not going to explain that. Or, you know, what you can try what top players do in runs, but I'm not going to explain that. Uh, is there anything else to explain about this guy? I don't think so. Yeah, just uh, get the remains. You... If, you if, if, if you've seen some old beginner routes or something, they may recommend getting the heart container here. You probably don't want to do that even though Majora is going to be a struggle with three hearts, I mean, you're going to have a fairy for Majora, which you can duplicate infinite times, so it can't be that much of a struggle no matter what, but um, you probably don't want to get a heart container, an extra heart container in this run, because you want to do a... well, I guess I didn't really think about this. The only, the only death warp that I'm going to recommend is after Goat. So maybe you should get this heart container after Adalwa. <laughs> because for Goat, you have plenty of time to um, lose as much health as you need to lose to set up for the, the Death Warp. Hmm. But I guess if you're if you're doing the Gyorg Remains Escape, which I'll mention but not actually teach, uh, if you're doing the Gyorg Remains Escape, you, you probably don't want to get that extra health because it's going to be harder to lose that health to set up for the death warp. Anyway, make a decision about that at some point. Uh, okay, we have done all this stuff, we've done Adalwa. I have save states specifically for these specific difficult parts, like the Torch Mega specifically and the Bosky Skip specifically, because you're going to want to practice those a lot probably, especially the Bosky Skip. Rem reminder to buffer as much as you need to just not fail the bosky skip, but also don't reset when you fail the bosky skip. Just soar back to the entrance and then do the dungeon like the casual way or semi-casual way, and just go and get the um, go and get the bosky and go into a doll with a regular way. Uh, okay. So yeah, after a doll with there's a long cutscene, and then you are here. You're just gonna roll down right and then roll kind of upright because the camera has moved. <laughs> and then here, this movement, you can kind of do the good thing, which requires a bit of finesse like that. Like even I fail it sometimes. Um, that, that saves a little bit of time if you can kind of aim your rolls so that you jump off the side at just the right moment with just the right angle so that you can kind of cut back and land on that other platform. Or you can just uh, do the easy thing and, you know, hold down so that you don't overshoot this plat this thing and land in the water platform, I guess. And then, then keep going. It's it's not a big deal if you want to just do that movement the easy way. 
then go in here, and I'm not gonna teach the Zora Hess. I feel like that's more of an intermediate to advanced type of trick, even though it does save a good bit of time. What I'm gonna recommend instead is uh, just turn the, the same way people turn backflip off the edge to do the Zora Hess, except, oh, for, first of all, you should, have, you should have Zora equipped here. I guess this is where you do the equip in this route. Sorry, I, got, I have to remind myself of what this route is, is like. Okay, so yeah, here's where you do the equip. First of all, you're going to do... Um, you're going to equip swap the ocarina. And you are going... You, you Here's something very important to keep in mind. You have to keep this for the entire rest of the run. Not the entire rest of the run. <laughs> you have to keep this until Great Bay Temple, when the route actually tells you to equip over it. When the route document that I have written uh, tells you to equip over it. If you equip over this at any point, pretty pretty soon, you're going to uh, you're going to get a nut and a stick in these slots right here, which means you will no longer be able to equip swap Ocarina over Bow, which means that the run is like kind of dead. You kind of just can't do this route anymore because you need to have Ocarina on your C buttons even after it's deleted from uh, your inventory. Which you'll, you'll you'll see later. We're gonna we're gonna get eggs and dupe them over ocarina, so we need to have ocarina duped over bow. Not not duped. We need to have ocarina equipped over bow, over the bow slot, which is what we have now. Okay, so do that equip like that. Oh, by the way, for equip swap, um, I'm sure this is taught in other videos, but but I think it's important to to call out that you can always, well, you can usually tell what you need to do differently when you fail equip swap. People struggle with equip swap quite a bit. And it's usually, it is a it is a 1 30th of a second trick, which is more precise than any, you know, gameplay trick, like, you know, in, in regular gameplay, like ISG or whatever. Um, because this is running at a maximum of 30, or sorry, this is running at a maximum of 20 frames per second, the regular game. But the pause menu runs at 30 frames per second. So frame perfect here is, one thirtieth of a second. So that makes it harder, but usually when people are really struggling with a quote swap and getting really frustrated, it's not really because of the timing. Like eventually you'll, <laughs> trying over and over again, you'll eventually get the timing. But some people fail it for like an hour straight. And if that's what's happening to you, it's probably not just because of the timing. It's probably because one, one or two different things. One, you're not pressing directly into you're, you're not you're not hitting the direction the exact way that you should so when i press when i page turn and then page turn back and then i go uh, and then i press the control stick i'm so i'm pressing the control stick and the i, I was late there but i'm pressing the control stick and the the button that i want to equip to on the same frame and when i press the control stick it has to be directly into the up left notch it has to be I'm not actually going for it right now, to be clear. It just it just has to be directly into the up left notch. If you if you hit some somewhere like between uh, left and up left, or somewhere kind of between up left and up, it's probably not going to work. It has to be pretty precisely into the up left notch. Not not precisely enough that your controller is going to be a problem. Probably, maybe, but probably <laughs> probably not. Maybe that's why so many people struggle with it forever. I don't know, but um, yeah, it, it's 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 not crazy precise like some diagonal based tricks, but you you really want to slam it into that notch. You don't want to just kind of vaguely without thinking press it generally in that direction. You want to kind of hit it right into the notch. So that's one thing that you could be doing wrong is not hitting it directly in, into the notch. And the other thing is not you might not be pressing the t the two things at the same time. You have to press both the notch direction and the C button on the exact same frame. And if you think about it, the stick, the control stick has travel time. I mean, you, you might be playing on a keyboard or something, but I'm assuming you're playing on an, with a GameCube controller or something similar. The stick has a little bit more travel time than the than a, than a button. When you, If you try to press both at the same time, it's very easy to accidentally press the button slightly earlier than the stick because of that travel time. Um, so yeah, the, you can, you can tell if that's happening because you will get something like this. Well, <laughs> you'll get something that looks like this, 
the cursor will move. If you ever get something that looks like this, where the cursor moves but nothing gets equipped, the only thing that that can mean is that you press the button before you gain control, or you, you press the button before you press the stick. So if you ever get something like that, then be aware that you, you are not consistently pressing the, the button and the control stick on the same frame. So really just slam it fast and hard into that notch. I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't really have to be aggressive about it like that, but um, it can help when you first get started to like really think, think about moving the stick as fast as you can. Um, you can also like in your head try to intentionally delay the button press a tiny bit, but that may, might be harder. Eventually you should try to figure out how to do it in a relaxed way. Oh, that was it. I, I just did it by accident. I was trying to do it in a very relaxed way. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, equip swap the ocarina there and remember to not equip over that for the rest of the run. Then equip the Zora Mask, and what we're going to do here is do a backflip, kind of the same way you might have seen people do this for setting up the Zora Hess, but we're just going to do a backflip and then turn Zora as you land in the water. And this is a little bit precise, I think it's two frames. Oops, I should make a... Oh, I didn't think about this. You can't actually pause as you're... Oh no, you can, you can pause as soon as you gain control, never mind. <laughs> Ignore me. Uh, okay. So yeah, do the equip, and so it's actually two, a two-frame window to put on Zora Mask while you're kind of in this underwater state because you, you know, you fell into the water from a great height, and so you're, uh, you're, you're just barely underwater for for a couple of frames, and while you're in that underwater state, it's basically a dive state. You can turn Zora and get this weird, you can get this weird particular state. So. This is this is what it looks like. It, it says dive and swim, and if you press if you press the B button to dive, then you get into this state that you wouldn't normally be able to get into, where this water is shallow enough where Zora Link could just stand. But because we put the mask on at that particular moment, we got this weird state where we can actually swim, which it turns out is uh, faster than just doing regular walking around type of Zora movement here. It's not as fast as the Hess that you've probably seen some runners do, but it's pretty fast. And you can just hold up here. You're not going to like accidentally dive or something. You can just hold up so that you instantly start moving when you get to land. And then from here I recommend doing a, a regular human Hess. Be aware that it lags a lot here, so it's very easy to target too early by accident. And um, let me pause here. It's very easy to accidentally target too early and uh, crash the game. <laughs> So try not to do that, and uh, then just hess all the way in. Um, if you're hessing a Zora Link, which I'm again I'm not recommending, when you're hessing a Zora Link, you have to like turn in a very particular way at the very end here, in order to trigger this cutscene or like, like trigger this trigger the witch to go into the woods without triggering the cutscene where you have to watch her go into the woods. If you're hessing as human, because Human Link is slightly shorter. <laughs> Then Zora Link, the camera works out very nicely where you just hess in however you want and it just it just works out that you look at the hut at the right time so that uh, the witch is now in the woods. Um, if you don't do that hess, let me let me just go back and do this all again so that uh, I guess I guess if you fail this this two frame, you can use you can use Link screaming as a as an audio cue there for when to um, when to put on Zora Mask to get this to get this state, but if you if you don't get this state, you're probably just gonna wanna wait. How do you how do you actually cancel this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If you don't get the state, just do regular rolls and maybe a back walk for this part because it's kind of a long stretch, and then some more rolls through this tunnel, and then maybe turn and roll and do an, then do another another back walk here. In any case. Uh, if you, for whatever reason, aren't comfortable with this Hess, you do have to be aware of, of uh, how this hut works with this cutscene. So, if you look at the hut, you have to look at the hut at some point. So I think that works, but if you look at the hut when you're within a certain range, like if you look at the hut when you're here, that was like too close to it, I guess, and so it triggers the cutscene that's actually pretty long. But if you do it like that, and then... Uh, 
turn around like this. Turn and roll again so you're not looking at the hut right here. You don't want to look at the hut until you're like... I guess past like this, this line that I'm walking right now. Once you're past this line, you can... Approximately. Yeah. I think that was pretty accurate. Once you're past that line, you can uh, you can turn and look at it again. But at some point, you have to look at it to make the witch go into the woods. But if you look at it when you're within a certain range of the hut, <laughs> that, I guess I think it's just a range. Certainly, when when you're within certain areas, certain certain parts of this area, um, it will trigger the cutscene which you want to avoid. But in any case, you end up end up in the woods, uh, and we're just going to. Do a Hess? I feel like this is going to be pretty self-explanatory if you know how to do a Hess. Obviously you can, well, first of all you need to get a Hess. Obviously you can just roll if you want to, but ideally you do you do this Hess. Is there an equip here? I guess there's not an equip here. I guess, it just, I guess the route just works out so that you can't really equip here. Uh, but yeah, pause, pause and angle change here. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm resisting the urge to explain how Hesses work. <laughs> uh, I, I accidentally targeted the guy. There's so many things that you can target by accident while you're Hessing through the woods, so you really just need to practice where to turn to avoid targeting stuff. Um, but then you end up here, you talk to the witch. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't really think there's much to explain about that Hess other than just copy, try to copy the, uh, the movement that you see. That you saw me do or that you see other runners do. Then we just roll back, target this witch as soon as you can. Targeting her is what makes her drop down. Get the bottle. And then, so, I guess, let, let me go back a little bit. I went back too far because I didn't have a save state. It's a little kind of a precise angle to get past the tree in that particular way that I just did. I'm gonna try to save state this time right before I talk to the, the other witch. Or I guess right before I get up to her. Like this. So you kinda you can try to get an angle kinda like this. Basically a straight angle so that you're gonna be able to backwalk right after this right after this talk. If you don't get a straight, straight angle, it's totally fine. You can just turn and roll and try to not pick up that grass and then and then do a back walk um, after talking to her. But ideally you get a kind of straight angle like this. So that after this cutscene... The camera does really weird things here, but basically you have to tap right or hold right and then target to get this angle back. Uh, if you're facing this way, talking to the witch... Like, for instance, if you hessed before this part and got to her a little bit faster and you're facing her this way, then you're going to have to tap up. <laughs> you're going to have to tap up to get this angle for some reason. But then you can you can do a back walk if, if you set it up well. Regardless, just do some some basic movement with this grotto. Uh, here, you can very leniently draw your sword. So if you press sword like super early here, he'll do a jump slash. But if you press it a little bit later than that, he will draw it because he's about to because he wants to do a jump slash, but then you'll hit the ground, which will cancel the jump slash. I believe it's a three-frame window, and for some reason I just cannot hit it. Uh, okay. So yeah, you can you can press B, hold up left-ish to do this to start rolling. And then mash for another roll in this case. It's it's just a very small distance you want to cover, and you just you can uh, you can just mash to get there. If you want to do what I just did, slash these, try to slash these two bushes and check for like a bomb drop. Probably a bomb drop is the only thing that would really help you here. Um, you can do that and get back to the to the nut in time. You can also just you know just get the nut and then keep moving. Then uh, slash that guy. Wait, why did he go that way? <laughs> I guess it's because I spent so long in the grotto and he has like a cycle of some kind. So let's let's say you just get the nut. Then you roll to this guy, slash him, roll to the chest a little bit more accurately than I just did. And 
That, uh, that was that was just so gross. I just feel like I have to do it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a little bit different than how I do this movement, so I'm not quite used to it, but I should be able to do it better than that. Okay. So you, you got you got the nut and the stick and the 50 rupees, then you're just going to soar to Great Bay. Uh, so just play Song of Soaring, don't have to set a warp point or anything. And then you will end up here. And this is where I am going to recommend a Super Swim. Now, I feel like I have to explain Super Swims because it's generally not considered a beginner-friendly trick. Um, I feel like that's just because it has never been explained super well, though. <laughs> um, I don't think it's actually that bad, that hard to get used to. So I'm going to try to explain it, and you can go for it if you're comfortable. Uh, if you're not comfortable, if you're not comfortable with super swimming, just turn Zora here. Kind of walk this direction. Don't, don't, don't do that. I guess you just have to walk off the edge. Maybe you can roll like at the very last second. Anyway, um, get out, get off that edge somehow, and uh, and then just do basic dolphin dives all the way to Pirate's Fortress. This is the exact same path we're going to take with the super swim. It's just the super swim is a lot faster. It gives you, you basically turn a recoil flip into a super swim. And, you know, care, maintain that speed in the water. So that's how you do it the very easy way. But the other way is to pull a bomb here. Actually, let me first explain. This is, this is the number one spot in the run where you need to look at your bomb count. If, you're, if you get to this point in the run and your bomb count is less than four... I mean, you're, you're potentially going to use one bomb right here. And then you need at least three inside Pirate's Fort. once you get into Pirate's Fortress. Um, so if your bomb count is kind of low, certainly if it's less than four right now, what you want to do is go up this way. And roll this way. And get this bomb drop right here. And then you can start a super swim from up here, or just dive off from up here if you want. Okay, so regardless though, um, you want to start a super swim. So the, w the way that I set this up is turning around while pulling the bomb and then walking down left, kind of to the edge here. And then very lenient recoil flip timing. You can do it like, as there's probably a 10 frame window for when you do a recoil flip there, maybe even more. Um, but, so let me just explain a super swim. So, You've probably heard people's controller sounds while they do a super swim, and they're doing kind of something kind of like this. And you can actually practice it. You can practice controlling your super swim when you're not even doing a super swim. I, I am practicing... This is valuable practice for a super swim that I'm doing right now. Um, so the thing... The thing to know is that Zora Link... When he's he's either rising or sinking when he's when he's in the water like this and not on the on the ground and not at the surface. So I'm pressing A and he starts surfacing, and then I'm pressing B and he starts going down again. And you're kind of using these two things to get him stuck in this animation that's gonna maintain your speed, kinda gonna cause him to never lose the speed. And this works in a way that should be very intuitive if you understand what's happening here. So the A button is what's causing you to rise, and the B button is what's causing you to sink. So, if you're leaving an equal amount of space between your A and B presses, you will not gain or lose hardly any height. But, if you're leaving a little bit more time after your... whoops... after your B presses, and doing the A... Huh, why is that? Why does that happen? I guess if I'm pressing them at the same time. If I'm pressing them on the same frame, that happens. <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit awkward to explain this without actually doing a super swim. So I'll just do a super swim. I hold shield there just so I don't move while I'm holding the direction to make the mass transformation cutscene shorter. Okay, so right, so if I, if I leave a little bit more time after the A press, before the next B press, if I have a rhythm of A and B where I'm leaving more time after the A presses and less time after the B presses, I'll rise. If I do a rhythm like that, where I 
and leaving more time after the a after the B presses before the A presses, then that's just more syncing time. So you can use that to control it, and you have to. You definitely will have to practice this a little bit, and you won't. For instance, you don't want to sink too low to get eaten by that like like there, or that one there. But then over here, you want to start sinking somewhere around here to get down to the level where you want to hit that thing. Although, you can save time with this super swim even if you're not very good at controlling the the height. You know, Even if you don't finish the super swim at the perfect height in the perfect spot, you can still save a good bit of time. You just have to know... The most important thing is to be familiar with the visual cues for um, where you're going, since obviously you're going backwards. <laughs> So you're going mostly straight back if you have this angle, and then you start turning a little bit. By the way, you turn a super swim very slowly. I'm, you can see I'm not I'm not slamming the control stick all around. If I do that, I'll lose speed. Uh, I don't know. I don't exactly know how how it works, but you will lose speed. You can lose speed if you're moving the control stick around too fast. So really, I'm like moving the control stick from up to like upright, somewhat slowly, and then to, to, uh, up left if I need to. So, but basically after I cut that first corner, after I get past that first corner that's like just past the first like-like, I am kind of switching around here to holding upright so that I'm going back into the left. And then I'm seeing these kind of green plants, what are they called, algae or something? I don't know what they are. <laughs> And the, around around then I'm I'm sinking down. That's, it's kind of something you just have to get used to, but I think it's worth going for this, even as a beginner. I, I don't think it's that hard once you get used to the very basics of a super swim. I guess I didn't quite say how to start the super swim, but it's really it's really very simple. You just press B as you're entering the water, and it's pretty lenient. So I'm just doing a recoil flip, holding target, press B as I enter the water, and then start the rhythm from there. So. Also, you can do this holding the controller like the normal way, but I move my hand. When when do I move my hand? <laughs> let's let's uh, let me explain exactly what I do here. Right now, I I have moved my hand around so that my my forefinger and my middle finger are on B and A respectively, which for me makes it easier to to do this rhythm but you can definitely just do both with your thumb if you really want to. I recommend getting good at that to save, I don't know, five seconds or something, but it's also helpful later on. Like, as you get better at the game, Super Swims will become more helpful for other things. But that's the only one I'm, I'm recommending for, for now. And if you want to skip it, feel free to skip it. Okay. Then you enter Pirate's Fortress, and I'll explain... I, here's another place where I will explain a slightly harder strat, but the easy strat is to just dive up vaguely in this direction. Watch this cutscene. And then roll around this corner, one more roll. Hold A to dive and start swimming. This swimming doesn't really matter because you kind of have to wait anyway. You have to wait for after this pirate cycle. So, ideally don't bonk like that, but not a big deal. Not a big deal. If you're too fast here, you will get caught. Okay, don't do not do what I just did. I'm going to do that a little more cleanly. Uh, haven't, done it, haven't done it this way in a while. Somewhere around here, stop diving because the extra diving is not helping, and also the pirate can catch you if you're too fast. Dive up like that, and just roll up here. Also, try not to get hit by the fish like I did, but it's not the end of the world if you do. Okay, I'll explain this part after I explain the other faster version of the strat. Oh, let me reload. PF exterior. Okay, so the, the faster thing you can do here is make a faster cycle, which requires doing a Zora ESS um, right here. So you have this nice convenient load zone to find an angle on the control stick. So look at the control stick if you need to look down at the control stick and find an angle that's like maybe halfway between left and up left so some something like this 
during during this load zone and hold A and that angle. And then as soon as the swim starts, that is the first possible frame that you want to, that's like the ideal frame to pause. I don't exactly know the frame window, but pause on approximately that frame and then start holding right ESS and then target soon after you leave the pause and then ESS up into there. That may not look like it saves any time really, especially with the pause, but it saves game time. It saves time where the pirates are moving and therefore it lets you make an earlier cycle. However, it is a little bit scary to um, have this pirate coming up right behind you. By the way, use Zora Barrier to kill this fish when you need to. And then have to make this dive and then immediately start moving to not get caught by this pirate. Um, it's very easy to like bonk, fail the dive up here and bonk. So that saves a good bit of time. It's like eight seconds or something to make a faster cycle there, but um, it's a bit scary for a beginner. In any case, uh, slash into this corner and then see up. Hopefully you got here quickly enough that the tattle text is not here yet. Here's, this is definitely the first place where, or wait, you still have, no, you, you still have your ocarina here. What am I thinking? Do you, are you supposed to still have your ocarina here? I guess you are. I guess there was another route. Yeah, there was there was a previous route iteration that uh, doesn't have the ocarina here. But okay, so yeah, you can see up safely here no matter what. So yeah, see up to just to the right of this this fence, uh, kind of between these two black dots here. If you see, let me get the big red arrow. Bust out the big red arrow. Here's a black dot. Here's another black dot. You're just kind of aiming your. When I'm talking about aiming and see up, I'm usually talking about this little thing at the top of the clock. Just kind of putting that in between those two black dots. So any, anywhere in there is going to work just fine. And then shield turn. Back walk to get right to the edge. And uh, do two hovers. And ideally, you kind of want to height about like this after the two hovers. You don't want like full height hovers, and you also don't want full distance hovers to get the maximum possible distance from two hovers and a mega flip you want a little bit of height but not too much height um, because your mega flip kind of falls off, like gravity accelerates you downward and you start falling faster after a certain point so like if you have too much height you're actually getting less distance even though the mega flip is a lot moving a lot faster backwards than a hover it's also after a certain amount of time moving down <laughs> a lot faster than a hover if that makes sense uh, but this is this is a really good this is a really good height so I can flip that very easily makes it and this this movement is a little bit awkward but you can just hold back you can just hold back and um, around the time you get to the fence depends depends ex a little bit on the exact angle you got but you can backflip onto this fence which is which is fast backflip onto the fence side hop a couple times and then turn and roll and do two rolls and then side hop into the loading zone a little bit better than what I just did. That's the absolute fastest thing that you can do there. Um, if you don't want to learn this weird movement, you can just obviously do some other thing where you roll around the fence or whatever. Uh, where are we? Yeah. Oh, I need to change this in the route. This before title text appears part. Hopefully I remember to change that. Oh, wait, I need to reload the state, sorry. I need to make a state during this cutscene. Uh, also, somewhere around here, you're gonna wanna pause and equip the bow. So, I mean, it can be after the it can be after the cutscene for Pirate's Fortress interior, you know, after going through this load zone and watching the cutscene, or it can be right here. I don't think it really matters. But uh, you have to equip swap. Since we already have a bow slot item equipped, we don't have the bow equipped, but we have the ocarina equipped using the bow slot. That means we have to equip the bow over the ocarina like that with another equip swap. Uh, yeah, so I do that and then continue. I you you can save a little bit of pause menu movement by equipping the bow later, but you know for the for for a beginner, I just recommend equipping the bow now because you can just use the bow to shoot the pirate, right? Oh wait, I wanted to I wanted to say something. You can quick draw the bow in in the air by just pull, pressing the bow button and then shield while while targeting in the air. So, as you roll off the sledge, target, press bow, hold shield, and then uh, 
then it just takes a little bit less time to to start aiming the bow. I recommend getting to uh, like behind these boxes. You know, don't don't stay out here and aim because that pirate's gonna catch you um, if you take too long. But somewhere like behind these boxes, aim and shoot, and then climb this ladder, which can be kind of kind of finicky to find the right spot to climb. But I I believe in you. And then shoot shoot this pirate as well. Maybe you might want to start aiming a little bit earlier than this because if you if you are slow to aim, it's pretty easy. You you mostly just have to aim up, right? Like you don't you don't have to adjust left and right at all if you just have your angle from the ladder. But um, if you're worried about taking too long to aim and her like walking behind, you know if. If, if you take too long to aim, she'll eventually walk to like over here and be out of your sight and it'll be annoying. So you might want to start aiming a little earlier than I did, but do whatever you're comfortable with. And then once you're in here, this movement is a little bit awkward, but um, I guess what, what I was thinking would be good is just a roll forward and then walk kind of uprightish and draw the bow as you walk. So one roll just straight forward and then walk. And then I'm looking for, I'm looking at, let me, let me just do it, do it the same way again. That is not. <laughs> uh, I'm looking for this line on the ground right now, the one that I'm standing on right now. It's basically, I'm trying to find a good, good angle where you can really see it with my, with my arrow. Okay, so there, there's a line that goes from like here kind of diagonal, pointed toward the place where you're going to be aiming. I look at this line and try to stand somewhere on that line. Depending on exactly how you do the movement, you know, you might end up standing on a slightly different spot. Wait. Oh, you want to target during this first roll. That makes it easier to do this. I don't know why I wasn't doing that. Okay. But then get stop somewhere on this, on this line by shielding, and then shield turn up left to get the angle that's going to be, like, pretty much directly aimed at the beehive that you're trying to shoot at. Do some precise aiming and uh, there, there you go. Uh, aiming in this game, I don't know how much I really need to explain aiming because it's sort of something you just get used to, but ESS range matters a lot for aiming. If you can do just a very gentle ESS aim like this, that is very helpful. Whereas, like, you know, it starts to move really fast when you, <laughs> when you, like, full hold a direction, or even, like, a medium type of hold. Anyway, after you shoot the, after you shoot the thing, what's, what's the equip here? Uh, oh, there's, an, oh yeah, there isn't, there isn't equip here. Uh, we're equipping the potion, and then Zora again. Again, make sure you do not equip over the ocarina. <laughs> if you want to put the ocarina on a different button, by the way, you can swap it. You can swap it to a different button. For instance, if I wanted... If I want Zora Mask to be on X for whatever reason, I can swap it just like that. But if you directly equip over it, for instance, if I, for whatever reason, equip Deku Mask on X right now, that would be very bad. Okay. Um, yeah. So do that. Turn Zora immediately. And roll a couple of times to the door. I like to drink the potion here. It doesn't really matter where you drink the potion. As long as you do it before you need to catch the egg. When you gain control, side hop twice to the right and then just walk to the door and open it. You will get used to where, where exactly the door is without looking at it. Do some rolls. And get the hook shot. Okay, so after you clear this text, you want to turn around and do a backflip onto the chest, and then walk. You ba basically, while targeted, tap down left for like a few frames. Not like one frame, because that's what that's what one frame looks like, but for a few frames you'll get a little bit of a walk. That's probably enough. And then just roll right. And I kind of adjusted my right to... well, you want to, you actually you actually want to target during that jump. So... You want to target at some point and switch to holding up, as I as I explained <laughs> at the very very beginning of the video. Um, 
But actually, I think you can just hold right the whole time if you target kind of late. Let's 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 see just uh, let's see if you can just well let me let me get my straight angle again. Yeah, you, I think you can just hold right or like uprightish there. I, I, I don't know. You'll, you'll you'll get used to this. If you if you really need to do something super easy here, you can just go over here to this side of the chest, get a straight angle, you know, ba backflip onto it, and then turn and have a completely straight angle. Roll, climb, and then once once you climb, how, however you did the climb, uh, you want to turn right so that you can target without targeting this clam or targeting this egg. And uh, well, now the clam is in the way because I waited so long. But turn right and then side hop into the water and press B to sink as soon as you hit the water and you should sink really fast like that. So all, all together it should look something like this. B as I enter the water and then oh I, I did the I did the inputs with my equips that I normally do in runs and not the equips that I recommend for this beginner route. Okay. Uh, that wasn't exactly a straight side hop, but whatever. So yeah, catch, catch the Zora Egg like that, and I'm going to do a trick called Ocarina Items, which is hopefully explained in tutorials somewhere, but basically it's just holding ESS so that you get into that shuffling animation, and then pressing the button of the button for the bottle that you have in your hand, which this is going to be in, in our hand now that we just caught this egg. As soon as I clear this text, since I'm holding ESS, Zora Link is going to start shuffling to the right, and he's still going to have this bottled item in his hand. So, while he's shuffling, I'm going to press Y, because uh, that's the item that has the bottle. And then, like, one to two frames later, I don't know exactly how lenient it is. It feels like a very lenient trick. But, like, immediately after pressing Y, I'm going to press B. And he will pull the ocarina. Magically. Uh, and then you'll sort of Great Bay. And I'm going to skip that. <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to skip it because I probably don't have a save state for like immediately after that soar. Okay, so Ocarina Items is what that trick is called. Ocarina Items, Sword of Great Bay, here we are. This is uh, kind of boring and or annoying part, depending on how good you are at equip swaps. Just walk down left here to that ladder, and as soon as you like touch the ladder, switch to left to climb it. And then, oh, when you when you get to the top of the ladder, you can just mash A to roll and enter the door. And then, um, the way I recommend doing this movement is just the easiest thing. There there are slightly faster, weird ways to do it, but just just walk upright and get a good angle, and then just do one roll. And try to climb the ladder kind of toward the left side of it. In fact. I, if you end up like right here and start climbing here, I might even just drop off and readjust and climb in, in the right spot, which is kind of just anywhere between like the farthest left it lets you climb and like, you know, here. Maybe this is still fine. Let's actually find out if this is still fine and that will show you what I'm talking about or why I'm recommending being careful about this. Okay, that's still fine. But if you're, if you're too far to the right, then after you do two side hops left, you will not be in range to drop the egg into the tank. Um, by the way, you don't, you're not actually supposed to drop that egg into the tank. <laughs> you're supposed to duplicate the egg six times and drop the duplicated eggs into the tank and only then drop the real egg. But yeah, if you're, if you're too far to the right, you'll get something like this where he shows the egg and that actually creates problems. I think it causes the gim to crash later in the run. Gim is a trick that we're going to do in Great Bay Temple later. And if you have showed the, if you have shown this egg like this, um, it causes it causes problems later. I don't exactly know why, but um, so yeah, really try to avoid doing that. Uh, there is there are backups. I forget exactly what the backups are though. Uh, yeah, ask ask in the Discord. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I guess I think one of them is like going into the fisherman's hut on the beach you know just outside of this this map and uh showing him the deku mask when he asks for a picture of the pirate or whatever not 100 percent sure if that's 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 the, the best backup there's probably something slightly better than that but yeah ask in the discord um but yeah he so so yeah two side hops 
make them make them hold side hops if you if you can to instead of tap side hops uh, to get to get a little bit more distance and then uh, we're just doing equip swaps doing doing a lot of equip swaps here's a little here's a little thing to know about the pause menu it's faster instead of doing this and then um, you know, after doing an equip swap like I just did, after doing instead of doing this and then unpausing and then doing the egg drop and then pausing again and then doing this again, it's actually faster to move the cursor down once and immediately, like one frame later, unpause, and then move it twice more later. Whenever you can do a cursor movement right before unpausing, that's going to be very slightly faster than if you did normal cursor movements. Um, so you'll you'll see me doing that certain places, but this is this is a big one where you can do it every single time. After every egg, you can flick down once and then unpause, and then after repausing, you can do this. Um, but yeah, do that do that six times, and then drop the real egg. And when you drop the real egg, you're also going to uh, well, when you equip the real egg, you're also going to press R and then start holding right to move the cursor really fast all the way to the clock town point. And then you're gonna unpause, drop the real egg, and then you will, after that cutscene, you will end up here, where you have to do a bit of awkward movement. You wanna, you basically wanna grab the ledge and drop off by holding A, but it's kind of weird, and it's very easy to accidentally like jump off. Which, if that happens, you just walk back into the cutscene trigger. It's not a huge deal, but the weird thing is, is what I was explaining earlier about how. If I try to press A right now, there's a quite there's quite a long delay before the game actually lets me roll after that text clears. So you kind of have to walk up a little bit, maybe even a little bit upright, or you have to pretty precisely time the A press if you walk straight forward like that. And right after you press A, you have to release the control stick so that he doesn't jump off the edge. Instead, he grabs the ledge. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm walking, I'm pressing A while still holding the control stick, but then immediately releasing the control stick and continuing holding A so that he drops immediately after grabbing the ledge. And then, after this cutscene, I have another <laughs> state for this, I think. Oh, I'm not, not there yet. So yeah, af at the end of this cutscene, as soon as you gain control here, you can press Ocarina, and it's going to start this special trigger thing, where um, if you just let it play out, it's going to start He's gonna pull Ocarina in this very specific way, but then if you just if you just let it play out, it's gonna start the scene right now. So right before that cutscene starts, you can interrupt it by pressing Ocarina again or by pausing. Now it's only one frame if you want to press Ocarina again. That was a frame perfect Ocarina input to pull to pull Ocarina again, and then. But if you get that, you can just soar out immediately. But it's much much easier, and in fact, you can even mash it if you're good at mashing to just mash pause. See, there, that was not frame perfect. This was the second of two frames. I saw the game move. I saw Zora Link move slightly in a way that indicated to me that I got it on the second frame. And then out of the pause, you can just press Ocarina in the unpause lag and do the same thing, just soar. Um, so yeah, what, what, what I would recommend doing as a beginner is just mash both. Whoops, sorry, press Ocarina first. Press Ocarina to do the initial pull, and then just mash both Ocarina and pause, and try to not mash them at the same time, right? Try to like alternate. But if you mash both, then maybe you'll get lucky and get the Ocarina pull and skip the pause. But worst case scenario, you should get the pause, which is more lenient, and uh, and do that. Um, if you don't want to mash, if you don't want to be, if, you're, if you don't think you can consistently mash 10 times per second, even with two buttons to mash on, then, well, I guess you kind of have to, I guess the ocarina, the ocarina button isn't as powerful for the mashing, so you really kind of have to be able to mash the pause button 10 times per second, regardless of what you're doing with the ocarina. But yeah, you can definitely just learn the rhythm if you, if you aren't comfortable mashing or don't want to mash. So the, what I look at is him pulling out the guitar, once he has completely finished pulling out the, the guitar, I kind of delay it a little bit more. So like, I'm not, I'm not exactly reacting to him stopping moving after pulling out the guitar. I'm more like, it's more like a rhythm of like when I press, I'm going to press Ocarina, and then a certain amount of time after that, I know that he is going to stop moving with the guitar out. 
and then a certain amount of time after that i'm going to press ocarina again or, or ocarina and pause so um i kind of just i kind of just get used to that rhythm of da 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 i it's i can't do it when i'm saying the rhythm out loud <laughs> but um yeah, I kind of just get used to that full rhythm of pressing the button, seeing him stop moving with the guitar out, and then uh, the right frame where I'm supposed to press it, which is something that just requires practice. But yeah, if, if you're doing it like this, if you're trying to time it, what you can do is intentionally press the ocarina button slightly earlier than the pause button. So there I pressed ocarina early, too early to, to make the, too early to get the skip without the pause. But because I pressed pause a frame later, or just immediately after I pressed ocarina, uh, I got the, I still got the skip with the pause, because um, you know there there are two frames that you can pause on, and only one frame you can press ocarina on, and the pause frame is slightly earlier. So if you if you just tend a little bit early on on the timing, then you're 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 likely to still get the pause timing even if you miss the ocarina timing. But if you get the right frame, since you pressed ocarina first before pressing pause, uh, you will you will get the fast skip. So there, I pre even though I pressed pause, since I pressed it after pressing ocarina, it worked. I don't know if I should be explaining this. This is more of an intermediate level thing. But I think some people don't really want to mash. So that's why I explain that, I guess. But then you're going to soar and you're going to end up in Milk Road. Right here. You're going to immediately take off Zora Mask and then equip over it. You're going to equip... You, you, may think, you may think that this bottle is fine for what we're about to do, but you need this bottle to be empty. Uh, so Because milk cannot go in a duplicated bottle. Milk... We're about to buy milk and it needs to go in this bottle. So we can't... So we need to equip a Deku Nut which we're about to dupe over, and we're about to, and we have to equip specifically the bottle from the ocarina slot. And be careful here, by the way, if you're like trying to do this fast and you accidentally equip the bow, you have lost the ocarina forever. <laughs> so again, be very careful with your equips. Um, equip the nut and then equip this bottle and throw the nut and then slash this bush. You can do that movement however you want to make it as consistent as possible for you. And um, again, this is this is the same thing as as the ocarina items soaring thing that we did before. You want to find ESS during this short cutscene and during the short text, and then as soon as you clear the last bit of text here, you're going to press the bottled items button, and then you're going to press the nut button. So in this case, I'm going to press Z and then Y immediately after, while he's ES while Link is ESS shuffling to the right, and that puts an empty bottle over the nut slot. So now we have this this empty bottle which we will use later. Um, and that's all we need to do here. Now we're just rolling, which is a little bit awkward by the way because there's so much stuff to inspect here. But you can do one roll and then like another roll like that into the load zone with just, with just a little bit of extra walking to get past the uh, signs and the sign and owl. Here how I do it is roll upright. I can kind of mash for it, and then I kind of time two consecutive target presses. So the first target is going to target the left guy who you don't want to talk to. So I, right after the roll starts, I I mash. I, I don't mash it, but I press tar target twice in quick succession, and then immediately press A to talk to the the second guy that I targeted. And then uh, here's where you buy the milk. And then what is the pause here? Hookshot. Oh yeah, so we're going ahead and, and getting our stuff for the hook, for the remote hookshot set up. So now that we have milk, we can do remote hookshot. So yeah, equip hookshot and then equip swap the milk like that. And then uh, page turn and set the map point to the ranch and uh, sword to snowhead. And I'm just going to skip that soar once again. Now this, bear with me because I'm not super familiar with this trick myself. I learned it for the sake of making this tutorial, like a few other things that I also learned. But you want to get that bomb drop, and then you want to kind of move in this direction against the wind. 
And then as the wind is blowing, hookshot this pillar. And get target to get a straight angle. And then get up on the pillar with that angle. You, you can kind of do this differently. So you can, you can, for instance, you can, for instance, just roll. It might help if you're if you're targeted to keep a straight angle because the wind blowing you kind of has a way of changing your camera angle, which is annoying. But like you could just do it like this. You could go past the thing and let the wind blow you back, and then you're like still close enough to get up on this thing and target it. But I feel like it's easier to get kind of close to it and then. I guess you can only hookshot the right side of this thing, huh? <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, yeah, get kind of close to it and then. As the wind blows, hookshot to it. Like that. Something like that. <laughs> and then uh, when you're when you're up against it, you want to target and aim the hookshot like that. It's kind of it's kind of awkward to explain with the with the wind constantly blowing. Let me let me let me let me try to get a good a good timing here to get up on it. So that should be fine. So I'll save this state. You want to kind of target aiming at this pillar, and then while you're holding target and hookshot, drink the milk. And ideally you set it up in such a way that you get the camera like this. I don't exactly know what causes the camera to, to be facing this direction, but if the camera's facing this direction, it, uh, it helps a lot with seeing the visual cue for this frame perfect pause that's coming up. So. Um, so yeah, I was holding target, holding hookshot, and then I just drink the milk. I don't release hookshot or anything like that, it just automatically works when I, when I drink the milk. It has to be a full milk, by the way. And then, um, yeah, so, so there's, there's a visual cue that I'm looking for, for a frame perfect pause. Basically, if you don't pause frame perfectly, let's just, let's just mash and see if I get it. Okay, I happen to get it. So this is the frame where this is the very first possible frame to pause on after drinking the milk. And I if you're really struggling to get this down, the, the like timing the frame perfect pause, you might just want to, you know, learn how to ma or you you might, you might just want to go for it mashing and runs at least to start out with. Um because you can easily try again, you know. You're going to have to equip swap the milk again every time and hook shot the the post again every time, which is kind of annoying, but you can try it infinite times um, until you get it. I mean, or until you run out of time and the moon crashes. But hopefully, you're not taking that long to <laughs> to get lucky with the mashing. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, if, if you just mash it, you can you can get it on this frame. And what you need to do on this frame after you've paused is equip the empty bottle over the milk bottle. If you if we had the milk bottle here and we could equip this over over the ocarina then it, we wouldn't need to do this frame perfect pause at all. And in fact, later in the run, we're going to do the same trick, remote hookshot. And, but because we don't have to have Ocarina st saved on our C buttons during that part of the run, we, we'll, just have, we'll just have this there like this. We'll just have the empty bottle there the whole time, and that completely avoids... Um, it, it gets rid of the need to do this frame perfect pause, which is, which is nice. But... Okay, but if you if you if you're mashing and you fail, so let's say you fail like that, something like you get something like that, um, you just have to you just have to go again. But ideally, you will learn how to time it. And the way that it, the thing that I look at to time it, I'm gonna need my big red arrow for this. Well, it's already kind of in the right spot. So look under Link's crotch, and there's going to be something that comes out from right here. It's like the back side of his tunic. Around You can start you can start to see it there, I guess. But there you can really see it. Basically, what I do is I react to seeing the back side of the tunic start to peek out. And that that should let you pause on like around the right frame. If that visual cue doesn't work for you, uh, uh <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> You'll have to make up some, something of your own, and it's it's kind of weird. I mean, you can just use like his head bobbing back and forth, like his head goes to the right and then back to the left. 
Uh, it's kind of hard though. But for me, reacting to the tunic appearing, the backside of the tunic appearing is very consistent. Shoutouts to Adruck for that setup, or for that visual cue. Uh, so yeah, then on this frame, you equip, equip the bottle, and then you don't want to roll here. Be careful not to roll. You can just you can just regular, do some regular old walking. If you roll, it will it will lose the setup as far as I'm aware. And then you want to get up on this slope right here, but you don't want to walk into the load zone, which is like one inch in front of me right now. So you want to kind of, to be safe, like side hop, side hop up up onto the slope like that. Again, do not roll. And then get get somewhere around here. If you you can kind of see that there's there's different slopes. I'm on one slope, and I need to kind of cross over this corner to get onto this other slope that's uh, that I'm looking at right now. If I if I were to just try to walk, I would fall down. So what I have to do is side hop, and when you're on a slope, there's a weird thing that sometimes happens where when you press a direction, sometimes Link will turn like that. And when Link turns, so if you try, so for instance, if you try to just hold a direction and immediately do a side hop, you might get a roll by accident because Link is gonna might, Link might try to turn that direction. So what you want to do is start holding it well in advance before you get up to the, po the point where you need to side hop. So I'm kind of already standing at the point where I need to side hop. So I might want to just hold it well in advance like this, and then when you get to the spot where you need to side hop, um, then do the side hop when you. But the point is to hold the control stick direction long. Well in, well in advance, so that you're not just doing that. If you press the control stick and immediately try to side hop, it's very easy to accidentally get a roll. And then you can do some more side hops if you want, but don't don't side up too far and fall off the edge here. But get up to like near the top of the mountain here. And then what you want to do is press hookshot and then immediately pause. You can do it literally one frame later, but you can also do it like four up to four frames later, I think. Maybe just three, I don't know. But you want to pause and equip over the hookshot, and specifically you want to equip the Zora mask over the hookshot. And also you don't want to be standing too close to this 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 ledge. I think I think you might be able to fall off if you get pulled onto the ledge. So I was kind of already close there, but maybe maybe um, maybe that's not true. But anyway, stand stand somewhere around where I was standing, and then after that happens, I didn't press anything after that unpause. Now just uh, turn Zora, and now you're in this weird Zora hover state where you can slash. And you're not you're not losing any height. Weird stuff happens with the camera if you target here, and that can cause you to lose a lot of time. I'm sure you will accidentally target at some point when messing around with this, so I don't really feel like I have to explain this, but get it into your brain that you should not target here. Uh, climb this slope, and by climb I just mean slash into it so he gains height. And then once you get up to that part where it is less steep, you can turn around and start heading toward toward the temple. <laughs> and you, you can slash with a rhythm quite a bit faster than what I've been doing like this. When you're in this state, by the way, the, the snowballs can't affect you, so you shouldn't be far enough right here to... whoops, that's what happens if you mash too fast. You shouldn't be far enough right here that these first two snowball boulders are hitting you, but um, up here there's this one last boulder right before you enter the temple, which could potentially could potentially hit you, but just don't worry about it. It's fine. You are invincible. And you want to kind of aim for whatever height is just slightly higher than your current height so that you can pop up onto, onto the ledge here. Somewhere around here looks looks good to me. I, I maybe aimed a little bit farther right than I needed to, but there we go. And then just when you walking into the temple. Okay. Uh, so that was bomb drop, lullaby skip, climb the mountain, blah blah blah. Um, I, I think I think I should just load the state to have a slightly earlier save state here. Uh, Snow Eyed Temple. 
so here is where you're doing your first action swap. Um, this is a little bit awkward because there's going to be a bunch of bows trying to kill you. But if you're fast, you can do, do a roll, transform, do this equip, which is hookshot and stick, which is what you need to do the action swap. You basically only have two equip slots that you can change right now. <laughs> just, that's a, maybe a good way to think about it. Um, but also you can just copy the equips in the route. You don't really have to think about what the equips are. Uh, okay, and then draw the hookshot while you're still walking up and then target the wall somewhere around here and then side hop, release target during the side hop, press hookshot sometime when you're in the air, that part is not precise, but then you have to press stick on the exact frame that you land. And I was early. You, you know you're early if you pulled the stick. Or maybe my setup was bad. But yeah, if, if you basically just get that one try before the bows are on you and you have to back up and... Okay, that worked, which you, I know that it worked because he didn't pull the stick, but I did get the sound of... I don't really know how to describe the sound, but there's a particular sound that you get when uh, when you get the action swap. Um, and... Okay, so I feel, like I, I feel like I didn't explain the action swap quite well enough. But I guess that's probably in, in other trick tutorials and stuff. Um, but I feel like this is the easiest, most consistent setup is to set up right against the icicle here. One thing to be aware of is that uh, if you accidentally break this icicle, it's kind of it's going to mess up the setup and it's also going to mess up the clip that I'm about to do. So whether I got action swap here or not, even if I failed it and accidentally got the text, what I'm going to do is clear this text while holding down, or clear, clear this text and then start holding down. And a few frames after I gain control, I'm going to target and get this angle. And then I this should be a good angle to backwalk, especially if I walk forward a little bit to backwalk directly. Or maybe this isn't a good angle. Huh. I, I must have been overthinking it and didn't do it the exact way that I normally do it in, in or the way that I would normally do it in runs back in the day when I did this. Let's see. Oops. These guys are extremely annoying. Maybe that's a better angle. I just more, I, I did more of a tap down instead of a hold down. Um, so yeah, now I'm now I'm inside this block, so I can just roll. And I have I have action swap. I have action swap stored. So I just have to aim at this ice. Press stick once to pull the stick, and again to shoot. And it shoots a lit arrow like that. If you can shoot it faster, by the way, once that cutscene happens, you you lose action swap. But um, you have a bunch of chances to shoot the arrow. Yeah, you, you know you have in, you have infinite chances at shooting the arrow until you run out of arrows. If you shoot it before, uh, like if you, if you miss, for instance, like if you do that, that's fine. You can just shoot again. Oh no, I missed. Uh, I missed again. However. There's a way to speed it up, which I do recommend doing, which is to press target immediately after you start start shooting. So I can do this and tap target. However, if I hold target, I keep what I'm doing here is tapping target, so I can I'm not canceling the action swap. But if I hold target for too long, like say I do this, now I'm holding target after the shot is done. Now I have lost. Wait. <laughs> Wait, I thought that was the case. Maybe I was mistaken. Maybe it's just if you target separately from... That's, that's strange. Maybe I don't understand how action swap works. I'm now very confused. Anyway, there's certain things that cancel action swap. Don't do those things. <laughs> just uh, just aim at the ice and, and uh, melt it. And don't die to this wolfos like I'm about to. Uh, if you fail... Is this is hearts? Yeah. If you fail the, that first attempted at action swap, you really only get one chance with that block text. By the way, this, this day to night transition is probably going to happen somewhere around here. Um, doesn't, doesn't really matter. Just, just be aware that you can't pause while the transition is happening. So if, if you notice that the day transition is about to happen or you're worried that it's about to happen, you might want to wait to do certain tricks because 
if you try to pause buffer them and then the night transition happens at the wrong time, you might be screwed. Okay, but if you come in if you come in here, you can get a very easy uh, action swap, backup action swap off of this title text. This title text, if you're standing in this particular spot, is not the title text that you need to save for the for goat. This is a different title text specific to this room. And if you just press stick and then one frame later, well, zero to two frames later, press C up. So you can basically try to press stick and C up at the exact same time. I try to do stick and then C up just slightly later, but it's very... Wait, I, I, I actually mess, I actually messed it up because I forgot to draw the, the hook shot. You have to have hook shot in hand, or you have to have a, an aimable item in hand. In this case, we're using the hook shot in order to do it. So now this, the, since I failed it once, now this is the title text that I actually need for later. So now I've messed things up and I'm gonna have to die. Um, instead of doing that, if you some, if you somehow fail. If you somehow fail the first try at this, instead of doing what I just did and getting getting action swap from the text that we need, what you should do is go over this way. Get right to the edge of this bridge somewhere somewhere around here and hook shot to this crate. And then roll into here, watch this annoyingly long cutscene. And then you can hook shot over to the place where you would end up if you hadn't or if you had melted the ice the normal way and gone through the door. So, where am I? Right here. And if you do this when the ice is still there, it will it, the ice will still be here on this side of the door as well. And so you will hit the ice and take damage <laughs> while hookshotting over here, but I think it's still worth it over rolling around the whole way. Um, so that's what you do if, if, worst case scenario, you can't get either of the opportunities for action swap. But let's go back. And I guess there's nothing else to explain here, except you can you can lose this text accidentally by doing something like that. I mean, if that happens, just again clip through and go and go and do it in the other room. But I guess the other thing is if you whether you get action swap or not, if you um, somehow lose your angle, like if you if you target a bow or something. Uh, and you, you can't figure out how to get a good angle to clip through. As long as you have this first icicle here, you can clip through it if you just go and get this angle over here on this wall. And then back walk in. That will always work. And another thing that will always work is breaking one of these ice, uh, one of these icicles here, and then shield turning right. So I, I just turned right up against the block, and then I just back walk into this other and this, this icicle right here pushes me in to the block and I can jump across. So that gives you a bunch of different options for what to do here. Hopefully that all makes sense. Here's another place where you might want to try for a bomb drop, by the way. Uh, after you melt this ice, you can slash, slash that icicle right there and there's a 9 in 16 chance that it will drop 5 bombs for you. And if it doesn't and you really desperately need them, you can just reload the room by going through it either door, either of these doors that are unlocked, and I mean, not not this door right here. This door, which is going to be open which because you just melted the ice, or this door, and then the icicle is respawned. I don't know how I didn't die to that wolf, and then you can get the bomb drop. You can, in fact, get as many bomb drops as you need. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have more save states here, actually. Yeah, I don't have another save state until GOAT, because this is all this is all stuff that you need to practice kind of equally. So I feel like it just makes sense to make your own save states as you as you work your way through this area for practice. Sometimes this is weird, but usually if you just if you if you feel like you have a good angle, uh, you should be able to just step forward a little bit and then step and then start back walking again and make it work. Uh, here is one place where you maybe do want to uh, quick draw, like I was starting to describe earlier, but ended up not recommending. With the uh, with the sword up against the door, <laughs> it's much easier with the hook shot. You just press the hook shot button and then press A to open the door. So that basically just gets the hook shot in your hand, so that uh, you spend less time pulling it out when you start aiming right here. And I different people have different ways of doing this. I actually forgot to relearn. There's a, there's a setup here that you can that you can. Uh, 
ask about in the Discord if you really want to know it. It's like something like that and then that. I, I don't exactly remember. To get you in this spot. But really what I recommend is just to get in the spot manually. It doesn't really... shouldn't really take that long and... I mean, worst case scenario, you're kind of walking back and forth over it for a minute and... Eventually you can get into the right position, even if your movement is really terrible. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's, it's not even that precise. Like, basically what I'm looking at is... Let's get the, get the arrow. There's kind of a three-pronged poop stain. Or like, well, you can't see it that well from here. I think of it as like, as like three pronged, but it's really it, there's, this part is is darker than than the third part, which is like over here. But I think of it as like this is a line coming in here to meet this other line that goes along here, and then there's kind of another slightly lighter line here that's hard to see from this angle. Or I guess it's not really a line; it just looks that way on my CRT for some reason. Anyway, at this at this kind of intersection of, of two different lines, or think think of it as like a little arrow or something, you just kind of want to stand right here in the in the in that intersection. Um, so, right about here, and it's not it's really not that precise. Um, and then start aiming. And one very important thing to know that causes people to struggle with this much more than they really need to. Whoops. One, one important thing to know is that this... I uh, didn't think that was going to get it. Whoops, I, I failed to save the state. Sorry. Let me get back there. Maybe it is good to have a have a dedicated save state for the... Uh, for these other tricks. Wait, really? Oh, did I clear the text somehow? Oh no. The one good thing about doing the setup there is that often you can fail it without without getting rid of the text. Anyway, um, so yeah, press hookshot on right before you uh, open the door there. Get into a position somewhat like this. That's maybe a little bit too far, but it would still work. But this is perfect. And then aim. So let me let me get a good example. So like that is gonna probably hit. Yeah. So okay, this this is a good example. If I just tap hookshot, I'm not holding hookshot in advance. It aims and hits, um, hits the ledge. But if I hold hookshot for more than one frame and then release it, it does not hit the ledge and it in fact works. And it is very easy to get an, get a get an angle like that. Um, so you basically you get a slightly higher shot if you hold in advance like this. So, for instance, if this doesn't work, it, it might be worth trying, in this case it's not going to work, I'm aimed a little bit too high, but it's it's sometimes worth trying the un, unheld, you know, just the tap, the, the tap hook shot to see if that works, if, if it's a little, it's going to be a little bit lower. Um, but yeah, you're kind of, you're kind of aiming in, in this general area, just, just above the ledge. If you're hitting the ledge, you're aiming too low, if you're... Uh, hitting air, you're aiming too high. Depending on exactly where you're set up, it might you might need to aim a little bit farther left or right. But I, I don't know. I, I still think it's fine. I think I still think it's good to um, to do it with no setup. If you're really struggling with the aiming, the easiest thing you can do to fix that is to do this setup. So get in this corner. Let's hopefully I remember how to do this well enough. Um, I think you have to have sword drawn. I think that matters. And then stab twice and then hold left, release your shield, and then that is frame perfect, unfortunately, to um, to stop to stop your movement. But stop it on your shield, like that, and then turn, shield turn up, and then you're going, gonna do a slash directly into his shield. Normally if you do just a regular slash, he'll kind of do this animation after, after the slash where he steps backwards a little bit, but if you slash and then immediately hold shield, uh, you'll you'll get a little bit of a little bit more forward uh, distance, and then from here, let's let's save a state and hope hopefully this works. But from here, from here, if you did the setup correctly, which I might not have, you uh, start aiming and then just hold down. And there's a frame that you can you can even buffer this if you want to like this. But I'm just showing that there's a frame where you are aimed directly at the thing, and if you just do a tap shot, it works. 
So there's really no aiming finesse required there. You can you can literally just hold down for the right amount of frames to make that aiming work. So that is a that is a useful setup. I mean, you you might also want to like pause buffer the movement part to get into the position since it's frame perfect when to stop it, but yeah, if you, if you struggle with the aiming, I think that's the best thing to do. There's there is also another setup that like requires more aiming but gets you into like the perfect spot to hit the torch. Um but I don't really think that's worth it personally, but you can ask around for that if you want. Okay. So Where are we in the route? Okay, set up for remote hookshot. Yeah, so hookshot, milk over ocarina, ocarina over bow. Okay, so equip them, equip swap the milk again. We're just using this same milk over and over again by equip swapping it over the ocarina. And uh, here's another place where you can, um, since 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 we're gonna have to do a frame perfect pause again to equip this. Here's another place where you can do this tap to move the cursor and then immediately unpause thing. Uh, set set up on this under this this big black dot right here, and do a do a hold backflip, a full backflip, and you can release target and just start holding shield. You know, if you don't release target and, and you start holding shield, he's just gonna backwalk when he lands. But if you release target and hold shield, whoops. If you release target and hold shield, then you'll get the full distance backflip guaranteed, but also not walk after the backflip guaranteed. Okay, then you can shield turn left, start aiming, don't ask me how this works, <laughs> drink the milk, and again you're going to need a visual cue, and unfortunately you can't use the um, the tunic very well from this, from this position, but use some kind of visual cue in the background, like Link's head is going to move back and forth, so I recommend using something with Link's head's position. Basically when Link's head crosses into this light spot right here, so that here, here's kind of some dark some dark poop stain on the wall, here's some more dark poop stain over here, but like in between there's this little light spot. When Link's, when Link's head or the, his hat <laughs> uh, crosses over that or touches that white spot is about when you should you should pause. I almost just left the arrow on the screen. That would have been hilarious if I left it for like an hour. Um, okay, I did it too early there, but I feel like that's a good visual cue. I'm not exactly sure. I don't. I don't quite do it this way, but yeah, like when the corner of his hat touches there is about when you should pause. That's that is the right frame. What I just did again. You can you can just mash for this pause if you really want to, and just try again if it doesn't work. But then you want to equip this bottle, and then you want to ESS to get a very particular angle. You want to ESS out of this out of this pause after you do that equip. Oh, and here's another place where you can do this. I didn't actually think about that. Oh no, it doesn't doesn't really make sense because you have to hold you have to find ESS here. Never mind. Um okay, so hold right ESS out of this pause and then once he finishes turning, then you can target and keep this angle. And you want to kind of move upright a little j just a tiny bit to to get into a position kind of like this. Not quite like centered on this corner of the torch, a little bit to the right of this corner of the torch. Okay, uh, take two. <laughs> take two at this. I uh, don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> I, I actually think I do know what I did wrong, but it's hard. I'm not going to go back in the video and double check. But anyway, I know how to do it now. Okay. <laughs> buffering this is somehow harder for me than unbuffering it, but okay. Uh, so, you're going to press. Get up here with the with a position kind of like this, just just barely past the like corner, just barely to the right of this kind of corner of the torch. Uh, if you're too far to the left, then when you when you fly up there and try to use a chew to recoil, the chew will get stuck to the wall. Um, position like this is good. Um, so I'm I'm holding target. I'm going to kind of move my hand around to be kind of. Uh, so that I can put two two fingers from my right hand on the on the face buttons at the same time. I'm going to use my middle finger to, to press and hold hook shot, and then I'm going to um, pause buffer with my pointer finger. Uh, and I'm going to press hook shot and try to pause a few frames after that. Okay, I think that might be there. There's there's two frames. I think this frame works. 
Ideally, I would have paused on what I think is the frame before that, but I'm going to go ahead and go for this. So start start holding down and start pause buffering again as the reticle is getting, the aiming reticle, that red dot is getting toward the top of the torch. And one more frame after this is what you want. So it's kind of like the third frame of the reticle being above the torch, but uh, I guess ideally you have a better <laughs> a better visual cue than that, probably based on what's at the top of the screen. And the, you can you can make visual cues based on like where the where the green blue circles are and stuff like that, and where the C buttons are relative to the textures on the wall, stuff like that. Anyway, you get to this frame. I'm still holding hookshot in case that's not clear. Still holding hookshot and target and down. I'm going to release hookshot. Keep holding target and down. And I'm going to pause buffer to a few frames after this frame. I'm going to pause buffer to the frame where the hookshot hits the torch. One more, I think. Okay, so that kind of yellow-ish uh, aura, <laughs> for lack of a better word, around the torch is means that this is the correct frame, that the, that the hookshot hit the torch. So I can release everything. I can do my equip, and um, if you want to, by the way, again, you can, you can, if, you, if you're only comfortable with choose being on, if you're not comfortable with choose being on X, even though, or being on Z, even though it's just for this one trick, feel free to, to swap with the ocarina like that, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep it on Z. I think it's fine for it to be on Z just for this one trick. You're not doing any hovers while, while choose are on Z. Um, so okay, so so now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna unbuffer the rest of the trick. So I'm going to hold up, and then after the unpause lag, so after the game actually starts moving again, I'm gonna un I'm gonna unpause, but I'm gonna wait for the game to actually start moving again, and then I'm gonna target, and then I'm immediately gonna do a chew recoil. So just just pull chew and then press shield. I'm also I am gonna let go of of up after I target, although I don't think it really matters. But if you hold up for too long, you might drift far, too far forward and, and your chew might stick to the wall because you're going to be closer to the wall then. Uh, okay, so but the main thing is hold up and then after the game starts moving, target and do a recoil. And you should have plenty of distance to get way up here. And you should also have an angle that's going to just work immediately. I just turned 180 so you can see where my angle is facing. But you should have an angle that just works immediately for this. You might have to adjust a little bit to the left so that you don't fall down. Um, but the way I did that last part is just... Um, I'll do this all one more time, but the way I did that last part is just... I did a, a bomb recoil straight back, and then when I was about to land, I started holding left. And that's all, that's all there is to it. It's not a very precise bomb recoil or anything like that. Okay, so start holding hookshot, start pausing. That time I paused early. I, I think I want a couple frames. That is the first frame. No reticle on the no aiming reticle on the screen at all. But Link's shield is back in its normal position. So start holding down while continuing to hold hookshot. One, two. Three frames of the reticle being ab completely above the torch. Release hookshot and buffer into the frame where the hookshot hits, which is that. Do the equip, hold up, target and recoil. Okay, and that time I got a bit more speed. I think something about the holding, uh, when I started holding, or sorry, sorry, when I, yeah, when I started holding down, since I did it on a different frame, there, there are little things about this trick that affect the height that you get. But if you do it exactly like that, buffer all buffer for all three of those things. Um, you'll get very consistent, good height, and get all the way up here. And then you just do a recoil, and then hold left. And you'll just jump right in to the load, load zone. Easiest boss key skip in the game. Okay, so here is where what I said earlier... Okay, well, first of all... You can get free arrows here. I don't know how many arrows you actually need, but that's more than enough for the fight. And you can get a free magic refill. Okay, I messed up once again. <laughs> uh, so, uh, 
you do this you do this equip um, which is a stick and bow for action swap and now no matter what your hearts are you want to stop the you want to stop the uh, first ice damage that you take somewhere around there it's not super precise but if you stop it too late, like if you let it take you all the way down to like one and a half hearts, then you won't be able to stop the next one as quickly as you want to. So what I'm going to recommend here is not going all the way down to like half a heart like uh, like you might see some runners do, roast runners do maybe. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm recommending keeping a little bit of health for the goat fight in case something goes wrong. Because um, if you die here, it's really bad. You have to start the whole temple over. So... Get down to somewhere around here. You can you can just spin the stick immediately after start spinning the stick immediately after you get, walk into the ice for the first time, and then um, and then you walk into the ice again. And around the time it goes down to well, when it when you notice that it's at one and three quarters hearts, then delay a little bit from that point and then start spinning the stick. So. That should be good. Um, and now make sure you have the bow drawn. I, I drew the bow in advance before I even took the damage. That's fine. Uh, and then you're going to just crouch here with the bow drawn and wait for the title text to appear because I took forever. It's already there. Um, but as soon as the title text appears, you're going to press, just like for the backup action swap earlier, uh, you're going to press stick and then title like immediately after, like da da. You can even press them on the same frame, and then you're going to, um, and then you're going to just press stick twice, and then target to shoot that arrow. And then we are going to fight goat. So goat takes 15 arrows to kill. So you start rolling like up leftish. You kind of. You're kind of aiming for a spot around right here. That's that's pretty much it right there. I maybe walked a little bit farther than you want to, but use somewhere around there as a visual cue. And then you have to Yeah, I walked a little bit farther than I than I should have. But this this is this is fine. Um, and then you're gonna turn left and start shooting at goat. So as I said, goat takes fifteen arrows, but the way that Okay, he already started charging. <laughs> it takes too long to explain things, so I need to explain in advance a little bit. So, the way that Goat works is, he's going to wait for you there. When the fight starts, he's going to wait for you in a very particular spot. By the way, you can, as you're, as you're walking up, you can kind of draw a bow at the end of the walk there. Um, he's going to wait in that spot, and if you jump out, if you, if you do two side hops to the right like I just did, and then two side hops back into position, you can bait him into shooting his lightning attack, which actually resets the amount of time that he's going to stand in the exact spot where he's standing right now. So you can just keep shooting more arrows at him. And you don't have very much time when you when you first get into this position after after you know chasing him, rolling into this position like you did, you you don't have very much time before you have to side hop and bait that lightning. So usually if you're okay at aiming, you will have enough time at least to like aim and shoot one shot. Um, but then you have to do the side hops and then side hop back. And then usually what people do, and what I'll recommend as an easy strat, is to do four more shots after that, and then do the side hops again. And that will uh, leave you in a position, I don't know if, I did, if I've done, I don't know exactly how many shots I've done, but let's say I've done five. As soon as I'm done with, that, with my fifth shot, I would do the side hops again. You want to delay them a little bit like that. And then do 10 more shots. Kind of at that rhythm. Okay, I did I did count correctly even though I was <laughs> talking. Um, so, yeah, so, so 15 shots total. And 10, 10 is just, it's basically the amount of, the amount of time that you have before he charges is basically the amount of time it takes to shoot 10 shots with a good rhythm. Um, if you're not confident with like hitting that rhythm consistently, you can do like one shot and then side hops and then five shots and then side hops again and then nine, and that'll make it a little more lenient. But basically you want to hit your last arrow right when he starts charging 
and that will guarantee that when he when this cutscene ends, he's in the right spot, which is right next to you. Or the remains are in the right spot, which is right right next to where you are. If you let him if you hit the last shot before he starts charging, or if he charges too far before you hit the last shot, the remains will not be right here, which is not the end of the world, but you're gonna have to go like go this way and do a bunch of back walking or a super slide or something to get to the remains. Um Let's see. There's probably something I didn't explain super well. Uh, let's just let's just do the fight again. Yeah, again, I think you should maybe instead of doing a roll all the way into the position, you should kind of you should kind of draw the bow while walking slowly into the position. So one, you can do three or sorry, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, and see he just barely started walking, even though I tried to slow it down a little bit so that I could do the 1, 5, 9 strat. Um, so just play around with it. You can do 1, 4, 10, or, or 1, 5, 9, but those are, those are kind of the two easier variants. Um, yeah, that's, 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 that's pretty much the two options for the goat fight that I would recommend. If you get, <laughs> I guess if, if you get unlucky, uh, and a stalactite falls in your path, Goat will drop these stalactites, and especially if you're me, it will happen to you when you're on a good run. Let's see if I can get it to happen. There you go. Okay, but it, if that had fallen directly into my path, you know, into into the... so. If you're standing in this position that I've recommended standing in, it's pretty unlikely that a, that a stalactite is going to block your shot. If you're standing more like back here, it is it is kind of likely that a, a stalactite is going to drop your, and block your shot. But um, if it does happen, if a stalactite is blocking your your shot to him, well, one thing you can do, I mean, first of all, I would reset the timer by side hopping twice and then side hopping back again. Um, but then you can backflip down right twice and that will usually put you in a spot where you can shoot around the stalactite just barely and hit him um you can see right here i'm actually shooting through the stalactite right now its hitbox is not exactly what it looks what its uh, texture or what its model looks like uh and if all else fails get up in this corner or something and just shoot goat as he's like running around and he probably will not end up with his remains in the right spot, but uh, you know what, at least you got through the fight. <laughs> so we'll do this one more time, the exact way that I'm recommending, 1, 4, 10. Missed that first shot. Okay, so I, I almost took too long before doing the side hops the first time. He almost started charging because I, I wanted to get that first shot in. Don't be greedy if you get into that scenario. Like if if you if you can't if you can't fix your aim in time to get that first shot in before you need to side hop, just uh, just go ahead and do the side hops to reset the timer, and then you can probably just do five and then ten. You probably don't have to even do an extra set of side hops in that case. Okay, so. I'm recommending this Remains Escape, even though Remains Escape is kind of a difficult trick. Um, so, yeah, it, it just saves so much time, especially in this case. The Gyurg one doesn't save as much time, and it's harder to set up your your damage. Uh, it's a little bit more awkward, and Gyurg is also just a scarier boss. So I'm not going to recommend it for that. But for this, I'm going to recommend doing Remains Escape. And so the way I would recommend doing that is just roll uprightish or maybe a little to the right of upright as soon as you gain control here, and then do this equip, which is going to be bombs. Uh, I think I wrote it as bombs on Z in this case. I, yeah, I mean you 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 can you can have bombs on the button you're comfortable with, but <laughs> I, I I just kind of did this did it wrote it this way automatically I guess because this is the way that I've usually done it. And I guess you are usually going to have hookshot on, on, on Y, so that maybe is is another reason. Anyway, um, take t take the time to line this up, 
and keep in mind so so one thing to know is the remains are now fully interactable so if i walk into them i'm going to pick them up and i'm going to get the cutscene which is what we're trying to avoid the cutscene um what you want to do but but if you're if you're holding a bomb if you pull a bomb and you're holding it like this the remains are, are not actually interactable. You will never pick them up as long as you have this bomb, but as, as soon as you drop the bomb, uh, you will get the remains. Okay, so, but get in the middle here and get kind of close to them and then pull a bomb and start walking forward. And then pause and try to pause like, like right when you're, right when you kind of, try to get this frame where Link has just kind of gone inside the remains. Um, you just want to do, you just want to do this on a consistent frame every time so that um, you want to stop and backflip on a consistent frame every time so that you have a consistent visual cue or like at a consistent position every time so that you have a consistent visual cue for when to uh, press a at the end of this trick okay so I'm recommending this frame but whatever frame you're comfortable with or whatever frame you want to get used to the visual cues for uh, you can press R and a and down out of this out of this pause to backflip and then draw the hook shot. Well, press, I'm, I'm, I'm still holding target right now. After you start the backflip, uh, release target as well so that you don't get extra distance on the backflip. So it's gonna look something like this. So I didn't get extra distance on the backflip. Let me, let me see if I can, um, all right, I guess I don't need to make a state here. But as soon as you land from this backflip, you want to draw the hook shot, and then as soon as the hook shot is drawn, start walking forward, and then you're going to start buffering as you enter the blue warp. So keep in mind the buffering here is kind of fast, but I believe this is the frame. I don't actually do it this way. Let's let's uh, let's save an extra a different state here and see. Uh, so just so to to pick up the boss remains to pick up the blue warp, you just press A, and we'll see if this is early. Okay, that was that was actually the right frame, but I was too slow doing the setup. So let's let's try to do the setup a little bit faster. Yeah. Okay. So that's what it should look like, and I was actually too fast there, but too fast is is completely fine actually, because the way that you're going to do this is you're going to um, you're going to hold shield, which I, I wasn't doing there. You, you want to hold shield at the very end. Uh, this. Seems fine. This might be frame early, but I, th I think it's fine. Hold shield, and holding shield actually makes Link duck under the remains. <laughs> uh, so you you actually you kind of can't collect the remains anymore, as far as far as I know, or you can't like activate pick them up normally to activate the cutscene. But you have you have them in your inventory, I, I think. Yeah. So there's goat's remains. We have goat's remains. Um, ideally you time all of that, you time that entire sequence not quite as fast as I did, because if you, if you have to shield to duck under the remains, then you're also shielding the bomb damage and you actually want to take that bomb damage. But worst case scenario, now you just have to use three bombs to die instead of two. There you go. Um, but let me, let me try to get it with the, with the proper rhythm, I guess. That seems maybe good. No, still a little, still a little too fast. Maybe if I pull bomb a little bit earlier. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be too fast again. Anyway, you, you'll just have to get used to that. I, I do it a different way in, in my runs, so um, not quite, not totally used to this setup. But um, yeah, depending on. Depending on like where exactly you stand before you start walking into the, you know, before you pull the bomb even, that will affect the visual cues a little bit. So if you try to stand in the exact same spot every time, even before you start walking, and then also pause on the exact same frame every time here, then your visual cue will always be exa exactly the same at the end. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. And then, yeah, you just... Pull however many bombs you need, and then you die. Oh, that was, I think, too soon. You have to space the bombs out a little bit because you have invincibility frames. Um, 
yeah, even doing it like that with all these extra bombs used and setting it up really slowly, you're saving probably over well over a minute versus watching the versus watching the cutscene. So that's that. Um, oh, I, I have Song of Double Time to Day Three if necessary written in here. I need to I need to remove that because. Um, I changed my mind. I'm not going to teach Pirate's Cutscene Skip. You can figure out Pirate's Cutscene Skip for yourself. It's it's not crazy difficult or anything, but I just decided it wasn't worth it um, to, to teach as, you know, for just starting out type of route because it's an extra thing that doesn't save it doesn't save that much time, especially if you, well, it's it saves a good bit of time, but um, it's kind of a, a finicky, precise aiming thing, which is hard for beginners. And also, the the in-game time is probably not going to work out usually with, with this route. Uh, and especially with beginner strats, you're going to take more time to get into... Whoops. You're going to take a lot of time to get to get to this point in the run, so it's going to be nighttime. And so you're going to have to play Song of Double Time in here to make it day before you... Anyway, <laughs> it's not going to be... It's not super, it's not super important to learn Pirate's Cutscene Skip, so I'm not going to teach it. Um, so yeah, you, you just exit the temple, and then you, um, you do this equip that I have written here, and then you Sword of Zora Cape, and you're, and then I will teach, uh, so I'm gonna load this cutscene after soaring to Zora Cape, and I'm gonna teach PCS. So, turn Zora as soon as you get here, and then get this bomb drop, and you can get the arrows as well, you're not gonna need the magic, but I guess the arrows are important, we just did goat, right? Yeah, yeah, I think the arrows are important. And then it should be like two rolls to get into position here. And you want to target this wall somewhere around here. Like basically as far left as you can. And then you want to do two tap side hops. It's actually... You should go for two tap side hops, but you really just need one of them to be a tap side hop. The other one can be a hold side hop, and, then, and this will still work. Um, or if you aren't comfortable with tap side hops, like sometimes... If you fail to tap side hop, you'll like tr hit, try to hit the stick too late and accidentally jump slash into the load zone like that. So if you're not comfortable going for tap side hops intentionally, uh, you can just do hold side hops, and that's just going to mean you're, it's going to take an extra buffer. Um, it's going to take an extra buffer at the end, so I'll just do it with hold side hops to show. Um, but yeah, then turn left and pull the ocarina and play New Wave Bossa Nova. And... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain three different visual cues for this. This is a frame-perfect pause to do this cutscene skip. And it loses over a minute, I think, if you uh, if you miss this pause. So, but you have to figure out... I guess I guess that, that the frame-perfect thing does make it sound scarier than it is. I will say that. Because there's so much lag here that it's... <laughs> what This frame lasts basically the amount of time that two frames would normally last. It's pr probably not quite, that's probably not quite true, but it's almost true. It's a very long, <laughs> it's a very large window uh, to get this pause. So this depends on your reaction time, which, which, which version of, or which visual cue you should use depends on your reaction time. And it also depends on if your monitor has any like input lag or whatever. If you're playing on a CRT, um, you know, and you have really good reaction time, you might need to make up your own <laughs> strat. But the the two that work for the vast majority of people are watching the text. So the text that says you played the New Wave Bossa Nova, I would recommend just focusing in hard on like one specific letter. Like I'm looking at the Y in the word played. Whatever, <laughs> whatever letter you want. Uh, and... As soon as the text disappears, react and press the button. Uh, press the start button. When you re when you sorry when you reload the state here, it uh, it plays the song again from the beginning, which is like not synced up with what's happening on the screen. But ignore the song that's playing and just pay attention to what's happening on the screen, so that I can show the different vis the different visual cues. Um, so the way this works is. The notes, did you see how the notes just disappeared on that frame that I just advanced? So that means that if you if you want to react to the notes disappearing instead of the text disappearing, that will give you one extra frame of leniency. Because if I advance one more frame, that's when the text and the whole 
treble clef and all that stuff are going to disappear. So, um... Yeah, you can either, basically the, the two main strats are just reacting to the notes disappearing, like staring at one of the notes and reacting and pausing as soon as you see it disappear, which is what I do, or reacting to the text, uh, pausing as soon as you see the text disappear. Uh, if you have really slow or really fast reaction time, you are, like, neither of those is really going to work for you, and... What you probably have to do is use the guitar strumming as a visual cue. You can hold a different direction here to like make him like turn in a different way that might make it easier. I think holding up is helpful, maybe. Uh, but basically, after the text disappears, he's gonna do four strums. No, not after the text disappears. Sorry, after he turns. If you're hold if you're holding up all the way like as early as possible. Then after he turns, you kind of want to pause on the fourth strum. One, two, three, four. That was slightly late, I think. Two, three, four. Hmm. I don't do it this way, obviously. One, two, three, four. Okay, a little bit before his hand goes all the way down for the fourth strum, I guess. Um, but, of course, this exact timing is going to depend on your monitor and your, uh, you know, your, your exact setup. Anyway, no matter how you do the pause... Then you have to buffer uh, a side hop into the load zone. So first you have to just target before you can side hop. So buffer one frame of just targeting. And again, this is this unpause lag, and therefore the timing for this pause buffering is completely different on KZ versus the regular game. It's also completely different nighttime versus daytime, which is throwing me off extra <laughs> badly right now. Um, but yeah, so buffer, first thing you do is buffer just a side hop, or sorry, sorry, just a target, and then keep holding target, and buffer A and up, okay, and then the rest of the way, you can, you can release everything from this point, I usually just keep holding target, but keep buffering a few more frames, now this would be the last frame if you did the setup with the tap side hops, you could just let it go from here, um, and you would be able to tell that because you wouldn't really be able to see much of this this wall at all. Like, this, this whole wall that you can see a bunch of right here, that I'm kind of outlining, <laughs> you wouldn't really be able to see that wall hardly at all, or maybe not at all, if you did two tap side hops to get into position. But since I did hold side hops, we need to do an extra frame. And now it's now it looks more like that where I can barely see that wall and I can let it go. Okay, uh, pretty pretty easy peasy in terms of explaining, but it's something that you're gonna have to practice a lot if you want to get that pause consistently. But it's not like a run killing thing. You don't have to like reroute if you fail turtle cutscene skip. It's just kind of a um, big time loss. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, exit the uh, exit Zora Hall and uh, hookshot onto the turtle. Those trees kind of have wacky hitboxes, but you'll get used to that. Uh, you're going to watch the pirate cutscene. I am not going to watch the pirate cutscene. I am going to load the next state. Okay, so for Great Bay Temple, go ahead and do an equip here, which is going to be... This is where you can equip over the ocarina because we're about to um, gim the ocarina. We're gonna we're about to use get item manipulation to to get the ocarina back, and we don't need it anymore after playing TCS. So, or after after doing TCS after raising the turtle. Um, so 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 now we can equip over the ocarina, and we use that so that we we do that so that we can have this empty bottle. Um, already equipped and we don't have to do that frame perfect pause every time we do remote hook shot anymore so that's nice so now we can just um have both the milk and the empty bottle equipped you can go ahead and quick draw the um quick draw the hook shot there you have to walk into here to uh i guess it's to clear this text or maybe it's to load the i don't know why you have to walk into here but you have to walk into here before you before you do the setup. Uh, so clear this text and then hold left and press A to open the door. I started holding left too early. Did I just make a save state? Yeah. After the text clears, start holding left and then open the door. And then you can kind of 
do a flick to try to get a better direction here, but really you just have to aim and uh, aim at this torch here. And then target, just like we've done a couple times by now. Target, hold hook shot, and then press the milk. This time we do not have to pause frame perfectly, we're chilling. But we have to, we're gonna do a kind of different type of hook jump, I guess. I don't, I don't really know how this trick works, man. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, the way that this, the way that this setup works is aim at this other torch right here, the one that I'm aiming at, um, and hold hook shot until it's ready to aim, ready to fire, and then let it go. Do not tap hook shot. If you tap hook shot right now, you'll get a totally different thing. Uh, so hold hook shot and then release to go to that torch. And now you've kind of got this other thing <laughs> stored or like you interrupted the first hook shot somehow. I don't know. So you go in here for, for to make this as beginner friendly easy as possible. I would recommend going over here and ideally you would have you would be able to see up right now because Tidal wouldn't have talked to you yet, but, but because I stood around for so long, I'm having to adjust my adjust my angle by just walking around and targeting, uh, which is kind of awkward. But you get an angle somewhat like this. Basically, I'm looking at... Um, let me get out of the way and I can, I can use my big arrow. I'm looking at this line on, on the side of this uh, platform here, underwater. And I'm trying to climb. I want to climb. When I get over there, I want to climb right here. Where that line ends, basically. So that's going to be... You know, just just get an angle that's somewhat like that. You can also fix your position one, while you're in midair. You can adjust the direction you're moving a little bit. Oh, sorry. Um, one thing you should do is not... Um, not be targeted while you're climbing or else it'll mess up your angle but if you if your angle gets messed up you can just back off like that and then climb again in the right spot and then wait and target after he's fully climbed and then side hop right to this kind of this right to this corner and this 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 position should be fine even though i set it up in a really goofy way um basically what you need to do is hold hold target press hook shot but do not hold hook shot and then start holding down you can aim, you can take as long as you want to aim, you can aim all the way up to make it as safe as possible. I don't know why I just paused. Um, so you're just holding target and, and down right now, and then you're going to switch. You can, again, you can kind of uh, move your right hand on, on top of the controller so that you can put have two fingers on two different buttons right now if that helps. Uh, but however you do it, you're going to switch to left and immediately side hop. And you can buffer that part if you want, if you want to do this. You know, that's kind of awkward. <laughs> I did. I, oh, I actually got the buffer. Whoops. I did not mean to do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, buffering this is a little bit awkward. So th the way I recommend doing it is just with one pause. Switch to left, side hop, and then pause almost immediately after, like one to two frames later. And then, uh, I believe the equip is Zora, right? Where am I? Yeah, hookshot Zora and keep the nut slot bottle because we're going to use it again in a second. So... You have to press the Zora mask. <laughs> Somehow pressing the Zora mask out of this, uh, out of the unpause, makes you go flying up into the air here. So you want to you want to kind of you want to press Zora out of the unpause lag. You just have to press it once, but you can mash it if you really want to. Um, and hold up left ish, kind of between up left and up, but you can kind of adjust it in the air based on the angle you get. So I press Zora, and I'm kind of switching to up because my angle is giving me, getting me kind of scary close to this, uh, to this edge. Okay, so you get up here, um, turn Zora, and just start start rolling. We're doing a very easy version of this. We're not doing any of these crazy super swims that you can do here. Roll and grab this this ledge, or just dive, I guess. <laughs> let me let me do this again to show the way I actually was trying to do it. save my state this time. I always forget to update my state. Okay, roll and grab this edge, just like for New Wave Bossa Nova. 
you know, right before the new wave, learning new wave bossa nova. Um, so just roll and release the control stick right when you get to the ledge and hold A to drop down and then swim this way a little bit so that the current doesn't take you too far away before you get low enough. Um, does that, I'm not sure if that made sense, so I'll show it again. Swim forward, keep holding A to swim forward, and then stop swimming once you're low enough and get in there. I wasn't quite low enough there. So that's what we're trying to avoid is missing missing the tunnel. We're, we're, going, we're trying to go into that tunnel, so you want to you wanna swim the opposite direction a little bit before the current takes you past it. Okay, and then into this tunnel. Okay, let's try this part again. I am uh, not that familiar with this part. Uh, okay, so the thing about this is these Biobabas, you have to kill all these Biobabas to spawn a chest up here, which we're going to use for Gim. And these Biobabas have multiple hitboxes. Um, if you hit them more, like, higher up, uh, kind of on the stem part, I guess, you know, not on their head. <laughs> I'm, I'm counting the blue, the bluish part as the head. Uh, you you want to hit just the head and not the part that's the, that's above it. So, but the problem is the Zora barrier just has a massive area of effect. So like it, you can easily hit them from down here. You can hit them from like this probably hits yeah. Um, and so the Zora barrier can actually it's very easy to accidentally hit them on the on the stem part when you're trying to hit the the head part. So what you what you should do is try to be kind of low here and just tap rather than hold for each of those kills because you're trying to conserve magic because this is your same magic that you need for the Gyorg fight. So yeah, just do just do something like that and then um, if you want to do the absolute easiest thing, just, uh, whoops, I was just trying to rise, not uh, actually start to swim. The absolute easiest thing, just uh, climb up on here and then Jump. Don't hold A when you jump off that lily pad, by the way. If you hold A when you're jumping off a ledge as, as Zora, you will dive rather than, like, you know, you'll get you'll get that, which you really don't want. Um, is there something else? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Just, just, um, you can, you can very slowly climb up here if, if that's, uh, if that's all you care about, and then target this guy, knock him down, and then damage him again. You, you kind of want to turn around for that for that last damage on him because otherwise he can hit your shield and push you back and you can like fall off here. Um, but then yeah after you kill all of them the, the chest will spawn. But a faster thing you can do here is after you kill all three turn around here and then hold down to, to jump to dive up onto that lily pad. Um, and then you have to release A after you jump up on the lily pad, or else you'll, like I just, like I just explained, you'll dive, um, dive back into the water. But yeah, release A so that you just kind of automatically roll and jump up here, like I just did. Um, I don't think there's any more to explain about that. It's just, it's just about being at the right height and the right spot up against the wall, and having a straight angle when you turn around and go for that dive. That's mostly what it's about. But I guess it's also important not to, um... Whoops. Not to try to move too early. So, like, if I try to... Hmm, maybe it's maybe it's not as much of a problem as I think. But, it, okay, there you go. Like, I, I tried to hold down too early there, and I just got some super random... <laughs> <laughs> angle turn. You have to kind of wait until the swim has fully started, and now press down, and then you'll get it. So that saves that saves some some time to movement. And then, like I said, do that, do that. Don't pick up the nut that he's gonna drop. Sometimes that can be a problem. But then, uh, yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do gim. So need another need another milk here this is the last time we're gonna have to equip swap the milk after this we will uh, use the the real milk um, and yeah you can you should you should probably pause buffer this um, but first you just you just aim the hook shot at the chest and drink drink the milk just like with all these other remote hook shot tricks that we've been doing and now I'll, I'll save the state here target 
when you're up against the chest like this, and then press hookshot and then start pause buffering. Um, you just have to tap hookshot, but you have to hold target here. So you can tap hookshot and then pause, and I actually paused on the exact frame. On this, after this frame, it's the first frame where Link's shield is back into position. Uh, you just press A out of the unpause lag, and then the chest will open, and then you can jump into the water, and when you resurface, you will have the ocarina. It doesn't show it there, but here it is. We have the ocarina. Um, I'll just show you what the buffering looks like if you pause early. Okay, looks like that. That is the frame that we care about. And by the way, when we do this, when we do this buffering, you might as well use this uh, to equip the milk for for the next. Um, might as well use this pause to equip the milk for the, the next gim, which is happening in the next room. So just go ahead and equip that milk over the half-empty equip swapped milk. And then I don't actually think you have to hold target out of this very last pause. Like once you're on this frame, I don't think you have to hold target anymore. I think you can just press A. I was wrong, <laughs> apparently. Or maybe I failed buffering. I'm actually kind of curious now. Okay, apparently I was wrong and you do have to hold target the whole time. So once you get to this frame, do the equip, but make sure you're still holding target and then press A. And you can do this thing where you surface like inside this lily pad. I don't really know how to do that, but I'm not gonna worry about it for a beginner thing anyway. Um, if you wanna climb there, you can do a little nifty jump slash movement to get, to get there quickly. You can draw the hook shot while entering, or you know, quick draw the hook shot to enter the door, or while quick draw the, the hook shot on the door, I guess is the best way to put it. And then you just have to you just have to move a little bit here. You don't have to you don't have to walk that far to be in range of this of hook shot in this chest. And then let this bomb chew just go ahead and take the damage and get the bomb chew out of the way, um, just to make things simpler. And then we're just gonna do the same thing again. On this chest, this is going to give us the light arrows. Um, I guess one thing I should have mentioned in the previous room, but I'll just I'll just mention it here. Uh, hopefully, no one has crashed to it already while I have failed to explain it. Or soft locked, I guess is the is the term, not crashed. Um, is that once you're in this state where the chest has opened, uh, if you, <laughs> I'll just save state to show. If you try to land somewhere, whoops, I missed. If you try to land somewhere like this, you <laughs> will get soft locked. So, like in that case, it doesn't matter because this this thing is gonna is gonna bail you out. But if you do it there, for instance, if you try to land over here, I kind of think you're just doomed. I'm not I'm not sure if there's a way out. <laughs> Maybe there's some weird way to like. Um, Equip, maybe you can equip it, equip transformation mask and bail yourself out or something. But basically, you just want to be holding target when you land to avoid that. Hold target when you land. And you can do this fast movement that I'm showing right now if you want to, but you can also just, um, whoops. You can also just intentionally avoid the lily pad, you know, get in the water over here, and then climb out. You can also, um, I didn't do a save state here, but when you do this buffer, when you buffer the A press here, um, you can use that buffer once again to do the next equip, which is, you, you really just have to, you can equip over everything other than the hookshot. So you have to keep the hookshot here, but you can equip bow and Zora like that, and it'll work just fine. So then the absolute easy thing to do is, you know, surface here to get, to get the gim, and then maybe roll off without holding a direction. Because if you roll while holding a direction, it's going to be kind of... Let me see. Get those equips right again. If you, if you, sorry, if you, if you keep, if you keep holding A, it's going to be like that. I don't know. I think you should probably try to do like a dry roll, like a roll without, um, without holding anything off into the, into the water there. And then do that movement like that. Um, this is kind of an awkward place to save state. Sorry. Um, 
I shouldn't have saved over my previous state. But basically you're just going to go up here and maybe a little bit to the left, and then cut right at some point. You can just watch how runners do it and copy it, honestly. Um, not, not too worried about explaining that part in detail. Zora swimming is really something you just have to get used to as well. So here what I'm going to recommend... This is definitely one of the harder things that I'm going to recommend, I think. And part of it is just that it's kind of a sequence of several different inputs, and they're all sort of precise. There's no individual input here that's like frame perfect, but there's several inputs in a row that are kind of precise. Um, but the reason I'm going to recommend this this strat is because you can try it for, for one. You can try it as many times as you want. Um, if you fail this, you're probably going to end up voiding out into a place where you can um, like if you if you void out from here after after trying this trick, you will end up back in the previous room that we just came from, from w the last time we, we walked through a door. And you can just swim back out to here and climb this ladder again and try again, which is, it's slow, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's not wasting any explosives or anything like that. And two, it's just kind of a completely different thing that's also not that easy. <laughs> um, it, if, you're, if, I, if I were to teach the other way of doing it, which is from the entrance room, but if you are really struggling with this after I after I explain it and you try it for a while, if you're really struggling with it, you can look up an old tutorial to find the how to do the boss key skip from the entrance room um, and try that as well. And it can be a backup in case you like somehow end up going into an unloaded room and have to soar to get out or something. But uh, I think it's worth learning this. It's not. I'm gonna I'm gonna teach the easiest possible version of it, and you can even you can even like figure out how to buffer it if you really want to, but I'm going to teach how to do it unbuffered. Um, okay, so, so set up somewhere right here after breaking that barrel. Uh, set up somewhere somewhere about here. I'm kind of looking at this um, this Tetris piece right here. There's a, there's a T there's a T-shaped Tetris piece, but it's upside down. It's not, it's not a T right now. Um, I'm looking at that and I'm kind of aligning myself with the left side of it, the left edge of it. That, that, that should be good. I'm not not super comfortable, so not super familiar with the setup. I think that's right. Let me let me just check. Oh, that might have actually been. Oh no, I guess I'm actually too far to the right. So a slightly more left than that. Let's see if that works. It is a little bit precise. Wait, <laughs> hello. <laughs> do I not how, do I not know how the setup works? Maybe it was a little more right than that. Okay, sorry, I was a little too far left. Um, yeah, I guess I guess maybe it's better to look at this this black circle down here and try to be kind of aligned with the, you know, have the right the right edge of Zor of Zorlink's head aligned with the left edge of that black circle, or maybe a little bit overlapping. I don't know. You can figure out your own visual cue, but somewhere around here, uh, you want to just do a tap backflip. So don't hold down, just tap down and backflip and then a side hop. It shouldn't matter whether you do a tap or a hold side hop. And the way that you clip here is just by is just by holding A from the side hop. And you can you can um, whoops. You can keep holding target, but you can also release target. And you want to release target because you want to target as you're dropping. So this this is gonna take this is gonna take some practice because it's just a kind of a long series of a bunch of different inputs. But again, none of them are that precise, so you can get good at it. I promise. <laughs> that is what the entire sequence looks like. Uh, you are basically swimming out of bounds, and then jump jumping or like finishing the swim and jump slashing out of bounds into the load zone. One thing that is very helpful for this. This is probably the most important time to enable this, is when you're learning this trick. Uh, you can see exactly, well, you can't see everything that's relevant, but you can see, you can see this unloaded room that you just that I just passed under, and you can see the the target. That big plane is the is the boss load zone that we're aiming for. Um, but I guess first I should explain the dropping part, what the inputs I'm doing. So I'm, I'm releasing target in the air, 
and just holding A. And the hold A makes that drop happen automatically. During the drop, I am targeting to get this right-facing angle. And then as soon as I hit the water, I'm tapping down to turn around and retargeting and starting a swim by holding A again. Actually, am I still holding A from before? No, I press A again at the same time that I turn around and target. So side hop, keep holding A, target, turn around and target and start swimming. And then the swimming, I use a, a particular... I just have a particular rhythm in my head, and I'm kind of looking at the visual cues, but mostly I just have a rhythm in my head of when to do certain inputs. <laughs> so uh, I will I will just say every single input that I do, and I will try to say it, say them all in real time, um, so that you'll get a sense of of what it should what the timing should feel like. It's gonna be hard to say them all in real time, but I'll try. Up, release, up, upright, release. Release A, upright, jump slash. I said the last few a little bit late because my brain was not <laughs> keeping up. <laughs> my brain was not keeping up with my hands. Uh, let me try again. Up, release, up, upright, release, release A, upright, jump slash. And that was kind of a little bit early because I was rushing those inputs that time, but that still worked. Again, this is all pretty lenient. So the things to be aware of for how to, for how to fail this, how you can fail this, is by being too high here and going into this unloaded room. Sorry, this, yeah, this unloaded room. Um, you, so you have to you have to be lower than that. And then there are a lot of places where you can just void out. Uh, if, you, if you try to swim all the way into the boss load zone, you will void out. Um, if you swim too far right, like over here, you'll void out. Basically, the... It's not really that helpful to know this, but just so you understand how it works, whenever you are swimming as Zoralink, as long as there is floor under you somewhere, as long as, even if you're out of bounds, if there is somewhere a floor somewhere beneath you, or any, any type of ground beneath you, then it considers you in bounds for swimming purposes. So like down there, where we're, where we're swimming, there's like a tunnel. I think it's this tunnel that you can see at the bottom of the screen here, or... Can you see a tunnel here? I'm, I'm, I need to turn the collision, collision viewer off. Um, whoops, I just pressed that button. I just pressed my turbo speed button. I guess there's not a tunnel visible there. I don't really know the geometry of this, or the layout of this temple well enough to, to, to tell you, but some somehow out of bounds, there's some unloaded area down below where, down below where I'm swimming right now. But if you go too too far off in certain directions, there will no longer be anything below you, and so you'll void out. And once again, if if you void out here, it's not the end of the world. Like if you void out, you respawn back here. So you're just gonna swim, do this exact same movement as before, hopefully better than what I just did, and then just just set it up again. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Uh, use the collision viewer to uh, see see exactly where you're going wrong. You can void out from being too far left or too far right, but it should be easy to tell whether you're too far left or too far right. Just um, just try it. Just just practice it a bunch and try to get those inputs down. Um, That might not work. That still worked. It's every time I feel like I do, I did it slightly differently. It's it's not enough to make a difference. It's really not that precise precise of a trick. It's just kind of a long sequence of inputs to get used to. Okay. Good luck. I believe in you, <laughs> uh, but I'm going to continue. Okay. So you can do a weird shot here, which is a good bit faster. But I'm just going to recommend an easier thing. Well. At least arguably easier, easier than than the weird shot. If 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 you know how to weird shot, then you can you can figure that out yourself how to do that. But what I'm going to recommend is going over here, drawing the bow, and then doing a bow extension through this wall to shoot Gyorg. Uh, this is to skip the Gyorg intro cutscene, which is like a minute long, um, almost. Um, so a bow extension is you're holding up. You press target, and then soon after you press target, it's not super precise in any way, 
Soon after you press target, you press bow and then you release target. So target bow, release target. And that is, I've extended my bow through the wall now and I can aim at Gyorg way down there below. And if your arrow does not hit the wall right in front of you, then you're aiming too high. If it does hit the wall like this, you're aiming too low. The in-between thing is where is where you're gonna hit Gyorg. Um, and yeah, I, I like to aim somewhere around here. It's not super precise, but some, somewhere around here seems to work. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start this over to so that I can jump down immediately after I do the shot. Because you want to jump down immediately after you do the shot. This is a little bit can be a little bit awkward to hit it, hit it quickly, but you'll get used to it. And then jump down immediately. And you're going to want to... I'm going to save my state here. You're going to want to just get ready to shoot him with an arrow as soon as he charges at you. Sorry, as, as soon as he gets close to you. And then jump in, press B as you hit the water, as as you've done before, to sink. And then you're just, you're just holding your barrier and rising and sinking repeatedly. And you want to be rising at the end of that first... That first phase is what we call it, before this cutscene happens. So... Just make sure that you're rising before the cutscene happens, no matter what. But this is just kind of a, um... I don't know, there's, not, there's nothing too difficult about this, it's just going to take a little bit of practice. Of rising and sinking to stay with him. Like there, I didn't rise quickly enough, but no big deal. And then... Here, if you, if you, if you were rising or at the surface at the end of that first phase before this cutscene started, then you can just hold A and down here. You can hold it during the cutscene even and automatically climb, and he will start charging at you immediately once again. Shoot him once again, and basically do the same thing, except avoid these little baby fish. Um, and, and again, right before this last hit that's about to happen, you want to be rising again, ideally, which is a little bit trickier to, to do in this case, because as soon as you hit him for the last time, you... Uh, the cutscene will start in this case, whereas there was a little bit of delay before the previous cutscene, so you had time. You had extra time to start to start rising, but it's not as it's not as punishing if you like. If I fail to start rising here, if I if I end the fight sinking, all that happens is I, is I sink to the bottom there. So I have to take some extra time after this cutscene rising to the top. But you wanna you wanna start rising ideally, so that you will just rise to the top and you can immediately. You know, swim to the platform and climb to get out of here. I think all that should be pretty easy with a, with a bit of practice. Um, not recommending anything super crazy for this for this fight. There are much faster things you can do, but don't worry about it. Um, and then just yeah, just walk up here and pick up the remains and watch the cutscene. <laughs> this remains escape is one of the biggest time saves that you could potentially add to this run, but I think when you're first starting out, it's not a big deal at all to watch this cutscene, especially, I mean, for one thing, this is the shortest cutscene of all of the, um, of all of these four giants cutscenes at the end of the dungeons. And for another thing, you don't need anything from the front part of the temple. So, um, watching this cutscene, is going to kick you out to the, where the turtle is outside of Great Bay Temple, which is where you want to be. The, this route doesn't need anything from the first room of Great Bay Temple, which is where dying would put you. So you're also kind of saving a bit of time back to just instantly being outside after after this cutscene. So yeah, it's going to put you there. And I have a save state here for this exact moment, I think. Yeah, I've called it crap, because we're doing a trick called Chew Crap, which is what allows you to keep chews into the next cycle, keep bomb chews into the next cycle. So, uh, let's see, I need to scroll down in the, in the document here. So yeah, um, wait, <laughs> oh yeah, okay, Am ammo drops, that's where we are. 
uh, ammo drops to get up to 16 bombs. For some reason, the save stage is not at the correct correct bomb count, but whatever. Um, so yeah, roll over here, and I would just go ahead to make to give yourself as much time as possible. I would go ahead and get. Whoops! Did not mean to slash that pot. <laughs> Do this in a way that you do not accidentally slash the fairy pot, which is right here, until you're ready. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and stock up on arrows, stock up on... Or I guess you don't actually need to slash the arrow pot for this route, because you're going you're gonna to break the arrow pot uh, in the next place we we're about to go. But break this bomb pot, and then get ready to, to do another of these kind of uh, ESS dupe tricks which is, I forgot to, I, I think I forgot to say what the, what it was called, ESS duping, when, when we did it earlier, uh, over the nut. We put a bottle over the nut. But here we're going to put a bottle over our chew slot. But before we do that, we have to, well, okay, so so the equip here is, um, it's the, nuts, the nut slot bottle there and bombs there. So we need to make it so that chews are not usable. So the way we do that is get the max number of explosives out. So drop three bombs, and then uh, catch that. Actually, you probably want to. Um, sorry, you probably you probably want to do the equip before that. So here's how this would actually look: so that, and then do the first equip. Whoops, <laughs> that's not the equip. Do the first equip, then drop the bombs. Do this, and go ahead and uh, do this pause. So whatever. Whatever button you want to actually use choose with is the button that you're going to equip swap the choose on. The button <laughs> the the button you put the real choose on is the button that you're about to dupe over. Uh so that you aren't going to use choose on that button. I don't know if that makes any sense. But the equip swapped choose are the ones that you're actually going to keep. So I'm putting that on X because that's where I've had choose generally throughout the run. Um and yeah, now we're just going to, oh, sorry, set, set the map point. And the way I set the map point here is by double page turning and then page turning back. And then it's just one cursor movement to the Goron village map point. And we're about to sword to stone tower. Catch the fairy. And again, do this, do this ESS dupe thing. So you're going to press the Z button while holding ESS. After, after going through this last part of this text, you're going to press Z and then press Y one frame later. To dupe over the real chew equip here. And then as soon as this cutscene ends, do the Z and then B, just like we did um, Ocarina items as Zora in to, to soar out of Pirate's Fortress, and then we soar out of here to Stone Tower. And you'll end up right here. And I'm recommending a strat that you can try infinite times. Rather, I'm not going to teach the strat that only works if you get it first try. I'm going to go ahead and just recommend the. Uh, going to go ahead and recommend what I would normally consider the backup, as your main strat, because you can try it as many times as you want. So, break that pot by by rolling into it because you don't want to get your sword out. And then do two full rolls here, and in order to like make it as likely as possible that you get full rolls without getting any extra distance or any um, or like stopping early. The way that I recommend doing this is holding shield. Sorry. Set up in this set up in this spot kind of at the edge of this vertical poop stain. Some somewhere around here. It's not super precise. But then turn around and then do two full rolls forward. And the way I'm going to recommend doing that is being untargeted holding shield and up and then pressing and briefly holding target and then immediately after pressing A and then releasing both of those buttons. So so target A and then release both. Target A and then release both. And you should get two full rolls of you if you time that well enough. That's the easiest way I I know of to accurately get those those full rolls. And then you do the next equip which I believe is lighter there Ocarina there. Uh, since this is by the way since this is 1 2 3 4 Cursor movements, I just hold left to go to Ocarina there, in that case. Uh, and then unpause, aim, and here I targeted aim, and I try to just I, I try to just press down and let the let the bow drift back up 
and once it's in a position kind of like this, I'm, this might, this is like borderline too high maybe, but basically I'm looking at the tip of the bow, and if the tip is kind of right at the the edge of the platform, this is kind of hard to, let me, let me pause the thing here, yeah. Uh, this tip of the bow right here is kind of at, at this edge of this, you know, this, this ledge. It's kind of, uh, not, it's not poking up too far above it, and it's not, it's definitely not below it right now. So I, I have the sense that it's maybe slightly too high, but I, I'm guessing it's maybe fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it and, and find out. So, uh, what you can do here is release everything except target and hold left out of this, out of this pause. And it was, a, it was in fact too high, so I will, I will try again. Um, that looks like, again, too high. That seems like it might work. I'm gonna try it again. That's gonna work. Didn't, <laughs> didn't work. Wait, is my, maybe my position is bad. Let me go, go lower. Maybe, maybe that's good, even though it looks kind of low relative to the other ones. Oh, okay, you can be, a, you can be a good bit lower than, than I thought on that. Okay, so when the tip of the bow is a little bit lower than where you visually see the ledge there. Um, okay, that's fine. We're, we're learning, we're learning on the fly together. <laughs> uh, okay, now you just do rolls. This is very straightforward. Basically, when I cross this line, this big old line in the, in the middle here, when I, every time I cross the big old line is when I is when I time my roll to get the maximum roll distance before um, before each of those jumps. Okay, we're we're getting close to the end here. <laughs> we're in the home stretch. Okay, so roll twice here, or I guess three times, and then kind of stab to the edge a couple times. You can see I'm standing right at the edge now, and now I'm going to side slash so press b and right at the same time and as soon as i see that slash start to come out i i press ocarina this is frame perfect but you can try it a million times if you need to and play song of time doing it from here rather than doing it in, in doing it in the next room gives you slightly more time to play the song but it's still kind of still kind of tight <laughs> But that stores a song for later, so now now I have a song stored, and the next time I read any text, for instance, this text, Light Arrow, it brings that song storage up, which is gonna let which is gonna let us skip the Twin Mold, um, giant the the giant's cutscene after Twin Mold, and reset and instantly be back in in Clock Town to to go to the moon and finish the run. So so there's that. Um, Oh, the, the lighting gets kind of weird and inaccurate here in KZ when you load a save state, but... Oh, whoops, I pressed the wrong button. Okay, so you, you play Song of Time. Unfortunately, you do have to get really good at, at playing songs fast, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, it's, it's not too hard with a bit of practice. Uh, after the song storage, you equip bombs over Ocarina, and I think that's it. And then here's here's this long jump that people will sometimes recommend a really slow setup, but you can actually just very quickly eyeball this. And in this case, I just happened to walk. The camera happened to move in a particular way so that I'm in the right spot already. But if the, if that doesn't happen to work out, so so first of all, you I'm kind of trying to stand on this kind of this kind of line that crosses here on the ground, and there's kind of a bump in the line right here. I'm standing directly on this little bump. If you're standing on that bump and you aim at this corner, which again, often often you're going to be automatically aimed at that corner without even really trying if you do that movement up to this point the way I just the way I just did. Uh, but yeah, once once you're here, pull a bomb and shield drop it and then do a slash to the right. So just hold right and slash and then when this bomb explodes, React to the bomb exploding and boosting you, and just press target and start holding up. Start, sorry, start holding target and up. And my position was bad somehow? I guess it was because I wasn't all the way at the edge. Let's see if this works. Okay, that worked like completely as cleanly as possible. So I'm not really sure why it didn't work the first time. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm kind of baffled now. Um, but yeah, so somewhere around there, you can you can maybe mess mess around with it a little bit to make sure it works completely consistently. But I found that this this setup works consistently for me. Um, I guess one thing is like if you um, if your slash doesn't take you all if your slash like fails to take you all the way to the edge like like sometimes happens like that you can just do another slash immediately you can or I guess you can do an untargeted or un you know a control stick neutral slash like this you can, you can do like a couple of those to get the rest of the way to the ledge if you're if you're setting it up as slowly as this you know you can always do some more of that and then do the rest of the inputs as normal and then roll this way. Um, there's a little bit of a tight gap to clear without uh, grabbing the ledge, but try to try to do it without grabbing the ledge. And then, um, yeah, open the door. And we're going to do one more crazy boss key skip, one more risky boss key skip that will lose you a lot of time if you fail it. Um, you can save a tiny bit of time by by doing a little jump here, <laughs> uh, like I just did. But really, you're just trying to get to about here, and then you, you know, you can kind of you can kind of YOLO this movement like that. But it's it's a little bit precise and awkward, so you might want to like get an angle like this, target, roll, jump slash. Um, again, you can cancel that jump slash to save a little bit of time, but it's a little bit awkward. But then you want to stand kind of, you want to target the wall about here, and. Um, side hop twice to the right, and that will put you in this position that's a little bit farther than what you would get if you like targeted the wall here, right? Like, um, you want to be a, a little bit distant from the wall like this, but but pretty close so that when you roll, when you roll forward for this mega flip that we're about to do, you want to end up like right here against this wall. Okay, so this is just going. I'm just going to recommend buffering a lot for this. This is. A kind of weird, uh, a kind of weird mega flip. But get ISG, and if you can do a mega flip off the same bomb, if you if you can't, then just uh, you know shield the bomb, I guess, and then fix your position so that you're in a similar position and do another another uh, do another roll or another pull another bomb for the mega flip. But regardless, when you do the roll for the mega flip, um, get to this frame. This frame that you know, if, if you're if you're if you're used to buffering megas, this is the frame that you can the first frame you can backflip. I think <laughs> I'm not used to buffering megas, but this is the first frame you can backflip. I think so. Uh, do a backflip as normal. Buffer a backflip as normal, except do not hold target here. So this is kind of like a. A gainer where you're using you're taking advantage of that one frame that you can still backflip after releasing target. So we're doing an untargeted backflip here. If we can get one frame to advance. Okay. Untargeted backflip. And this should work, so I'm gonna save the state. And then I'm going to hold left to curve to hard curve it to the right. I'm going to pull a chew in the air, start pressing shield, start holding shield, and then pause on a particular and buffer to a particular frame. So unpause, hold left, pull chew, hold shield, and then pause. Okay, and I think it's one more frame after this. I think this is the correct frame. Uh, you are going to buffer, sorry, you're going to, or you, yeah, you're gonna, still, still holding left, <laughs> you're going to buffer a target uh, a target press. Oh my gosh. Okay. And then still holding left again, you're going to buffer one more frame. Uh, I, and I think I think you should still be holding target for this, or at least that's how I've done it before. So still holding target and left one more frame. And then on this frame, press target again. So don't keep holding it. Uh, you, it's fine if you held it up to this point. That's what I did. But in this unpause lag, press target a separate time. So start holding target again during this unpause lag while still holding left and still holding shield. 
So that that just targeted the Chu. So now we have so now we're in this great position and we are untargeted off of that off of that Chu. And uh, so with that we can we can do the do our regular turning here to turn straight left. Try to try to confirm that you have a good straight left angle. And then target. And then we're going to do more mega flips. Well, one one more mega flip, and then untarget on that chew if if you can. It's not a huge deal if you don't, because you have again you have the bow to fix your camera. But if you if you untarget there, this kind of works out nicely to do one extra chew hover back, and then hold up, and your your camera has kind of adjusted a little bit there. If you retarget, now you're pointed a little bit more directly to the load zone. But you should be able to easily make it to the load zone anyway, even without that adjustment. And you can curve a little bit to to help make sure that you make it regardless. Um, and then just do one more mega flip, and you're in the load zone. The shaking is, is <laughs> gonna drive me crazy. Okay, so that's that is that. Is there anything else I needed to explain about that? Um. What would be common ways to fail? I mean, I, f I, I guess I should just say, I guess I should just go back to the to the entrance and briefly explain what you would do if you ran out of explosives here and needed to continue the run. Um, so soar back to the entrance if you need to, and then what you can do is do right side. So go this way. Shoot your shoot your light arrow. Shoot your shot. And then I believe this angle works for a good recoil. I don't exactly remember, <laughs> but you can use some bombs to to get through here pretty easily. Um, how did I how did I always do this? Side hop into this updraft and pull a bomb. Wait, I somehow went past the updraft. Anyway, <laughs> get into here. <laughs> I'm I'm just briefly showing this, but. Um, I might not make it. Yeah. Anyway, you you can find you can find the whole right side strat somewhere else. So I won't I won't show the whole thing. But you can do a different boss key skip on the right side that only takes bombs, and therefore uh, is easier to back up, or more more likely to be able to do on on a second try than the main strat. But try to just buffer the main strat carefully enough that um, that you get it first try. Obviously. <laughs> now this twin mold save state that I have, I saved it before entering this load zone. Which means you're gonna have to watch this cutscene every time. <laughs> um, the reason I did that is because it, it ensures that you get different RNG patterns every time that you practice it. Um, but when you first start trying to learn the fight, you should probably just make a save state right here. Because it doesn't really matter that much when you first start learning the fight, and in fact, it'll make it easier to learn the fight when you um, have similar patterns every time, or sometimes even the exact same. Okay, so the fight's about to start. This cutscene's about to end. What I'm gonna do is hold up left and mash the bow button. Then I'm gonna aim up and do one shot right there. Then I'm gonna aim this way and do one more shot right before he goes into the ground. And there's not really that much I can say to, to help with this, other than practice it a lot. Uh, this is just a lot of a lot of precise aiming that is difficult. You can line up your shot well in advance like this, but you you really have to understand, you know how <laughs> how the tail kind of whips around with at different angles. It's it is very unintuitive sometimes, and you just have to you really just have to practice it a lot. But just be very careful with the shots when you're when you're new to the game. Um, it is definitely easy to run out of arrows, and it's kind of bad if that happens. I mean, it's not it's not the end of the world because what you can do is go out here, go out to one of these big pillars or one of these big uh, whatever you call this thing that I'm on right now, and just bait. Bait Twin Mold, hopefully it's just Red Twin Mold left alive at the point where you need to do this. Bait Twin Mold into coming up right there, and he will break that thing and give you magic and or arrows. See, here's here's magic and arrows that I just got there. So that can help a lot. And you can there's a lot of those pillars and uh, those things. 
lying around that you can bait them into. So you're you're unlikely to completely run out. And you have this milk that you can drink if if things get dicey health-wise before before you do the pause, but at some point before red dies, I, I would I would probably for, just to make sure you remember to do it. I would probably recommend doing this as soon as phase two starts. So as soon as blue twin mold is dead, you want to pause, uh, inspect your light arrows to get the text, and then hold left, and then equip your ocarina over the bombs. By the way, you can see. It's crazy having having uh, magic for this part. Um, you can see that. What was I saying? <laughs> uh, I literally have no idea what I was what I was starting to say. What? Am, am I losing my mind? Oh, you can see that we have a lot of extra bombs here, right? And there is a, there is actually a strat. I forget exactly how it works. Roll down left and then throw a bomb left? Yeah. So you can do that to, to do one damage with a bomb if you want to. It's kind of pointless though in this route because you're gonna- you should have enough magic to hit five light arrows, in which case the bomb is not actually helping. The bomb only does uh, half the damage of a light arrow, so it would still take five light arrows after a bomb, so that would only really help if you uh, if you miss all your light arrows and run out of magic, which is kind of unlikely. So anyway, <laughs> practice this a lot. All top runners have practiced this fight a lot over the years, like hundreds of hours. So do not feel bad when you're bad at it. That's just how the game is. But it is very satisfying to get good at it and very... It's fun to practice, in my opinion. <sighs> Until that happens. <laughs> Which is sometimes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, kill so kill blue twin mold and then do the do the equip and then I guess I guess I have to do this fight again to um, from the beginning in order to show the next part. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's really hard to know what what more to say about the twin mold fight. Really, there's a, there are, there are a lot of things you, that you can say, but oh, I didn't quite. Where is he? What is this? That was a strange pattern. <laughs> um, there are a lot of things you could say about the Twin Mold fight, like pro tips that I could give, but they're all kind of like niche, like weird scenario tips that are more relevant once you've kind of gotten the basics down. You really just kind of have to practice it a lot to get the basics down. So after that phase, you're going to do this. And by the way, um, you don't actually have to press A to get out to, to clear that text. To bring you know to clear the light arrow inspection text, you can just start holding left, and it'll it'll close that text automatically. Um, after this, you can't pause again, so be aware of that. And obviously, you don't want to press the A button; that will not be great. You can press B. Oh, that's good to know. When you're aiming, uh, if you have an arrow knocked already, and you don't want to waste it, but Twin Mold went underground, so you want to run somewhere else, you can press B to slash the sword. Um, which will which will save that arrow. You can all you can also like uh, press the shield button to cancel out of uh, out of aiming. You know, you might be used to pressing A to canceling out to cancel out of aiming, which obviously is bad here because it would get rid of this text. Um, which we're trying to save for after we get the remains. Oh, one more thing I should definitely say. Try not to end the fight when you are on one of these sides. Like this is a big square platform, so think of this as a side. If you this is like the middle of a side, and this is like the middle of a side, and this is the middle of a side. The reason is because if you're standing in the middle of a side, if you're standing in the middle of this side in particular when the fight ends, you might get have this thing spawn on top of you, which would get rid of your text, which would be very bad. Um, so try try to stand like toward the corners or just stay in the middle. Okay, and then um, did I just save the state or not? I can't remember. <laughs> just in case I did, just in case I um, I didn't save the state, I'm going to I'm not going to reload it. 
but normally normally the remains would not have fully spawned in meaning this the ring the blue the blue warp around the remains the blue ring would still be kind of expanding as you get to it and you just have to make sure yes is selected as you walk into it and then as you walk into it if it's fully spawned already like this i'm just going to walk into it and he's, and he's going to instantly start to pick up the remains and turn around and hold them up above his head as soon as that animation starts i can press a and reset my console but um in a run if you're fast enough and not goofing around talking about the sides of the platform like i just was uh they won't be interactable immediately so you want to you want to go up and stand on the remains and wait for that animation to start and once you see it start then press a to confirm the save and then reset your console so there i just did it i can press xb start in this case since i'm on kz to emulate a reset and then we'll be back here this is one of the worst things to practice in terms of kz lag but one thing that for some reason makes a big difference with the lag in this area is when you come from the title screen versus not coming from the title screen. So if you just save your state right here and reload this state over and over again to practice, or like if you warp to, if you use the KZ warps feature to, to warp to this area, you know, even though you're coming in the same entrance to the exact same spot, it will, the lag will not be accurate for some reason if you didn't come directly from the title screen. So I think I I think I made the actual save state be on the title screen for this this clock tower save state. I think that's going to actually be on the title screen or on the file select screen, so that you will get the accurate lag if you practice from that save state. Um, but okay, you spawn in here. Just roll left twice, and you have some options here. Basically, we're using these chews that we saved to get into the clock tower. By the way, if you if you somehow mess up and waste a bunch of chews. Just press the reset button. You have a save right here, and you can just try again from right here after you reload the file. Um, yeah, the main thing I'm going to recommend is getting ISG off of this sign, and then turning and getting an angle kind of straight, kind of a straight angle, and then getting up against this wall here and doing a hover, and then mashing, holding shield and mashing for another backflip up onto here. Because if you if you climb, the reason you do a hover there is because if you climb, you will lose your ISG and we wanted to get ISG off the sign. And then you can do four hovers, well, two hovers back with a, an untarget on the second one, and then turn around 180, and then two more hovers, and then backflip in. One thing to know, um, I guess I should reload to get my choose back. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I thought I saved the state. Let's, let's see if this is actually where I thought it was. Okay, I, I, I put the save state on the title screen here. Uh, I, will show, I will show the alternate way, and then I'll say what I was about to say about the hovers. So the alternate way, which will help if you, have, if you don't have that many bomb chews, is to just climb up here, and then get ISG off of this heart piece, which you do by standing here, backing up just a tiny bit like that, and then stabbing once, and then aiming a little bit up, because if you just stab like this, you're not going to hit anything. But aim a little bit up and stab again, and that heart piece pickup will interrupt your, your stab. So now you have ISG, and you can do these hovers. If you do these hovers frame perfectly... Okay, first of all, one thing that can happen is that, which is very annoying. But uh, it's it's actually not, not an issue in this case. Um, that's, that's kind of the same thing I talked about briefly earlier, where if you're on a slope... And you try to target, and then, or if you try to press the control stick and immediately roll, sometimes that just happens because you happen to pass through ESS at the wrong time or whatever. Um, but here it doesn't really matter. You can just set up again after that happens. But if you do frame perfect hovers here, and then turn around, and then this last hover is not frame perfect if it's slightly slow. Okay, I'm, I'm failing to make it happen. But um, you're. It might, it might depend on what, what how the clock is moving or something, I don't know. But sometimes your chew will run along the clock, and you'll fall down. Which, again, you can just reset the console and not lose a terrible amount of time, but... Oh, I guess that's something that can happen. Wait. Hmm, I'm not sure why that happened. I think I just didn't press A. I think I pressed A too soon before I... I don't know. 
but if you just if you just intentionally get a very slight amount of extra distance on that second hover, then get height hovers on both of these, then it's uh, you're never your chew is never gonna stick. Uh, and then once you get in here, after this cutscene, you're just gonna play Oath to Order, and then you will be on the moon, truly in the home stretch now. <laughs> uh, on the moon, we're just gonna backwalk here. We're also gonna equip the Zora mask. Oh, let's uh, let's get to the very bottom of this route here. We are going to equip the Zora mask over Ocarina, which we no longer need, and then. As you see, the grass kind of starts turning greener, <laughs> right, right about here. And then there's this little, there's this little bump right here, and I kind of use that as the, as my last visual cue for when to turn around and roll to the to the kid. So talk to the kid, agree to his shenanigans, and then here. This movement to the to slash these pots is a little bit awkward, but you just hold a, a random direction between right and down right to get to that pot, and then you just kinda walk over to this other one. And then you have full magic and arrows, and you roll into roll into this fight. You can also just do that slower, like you know, if you want to just tar target to make sure you know where, what you're doing. If you want to do that slightly slower, not the end of the world. Um Okay, so I made a save state for the for the beginning of the Majora fight. This is a fight you're gonna have to practice a lot. There aren't really great beginner strats for this, unfortunately. But well, the mask phase there there are. The mask phase is fine. So for the mask phase, just hold forward at the beginning and mash Zora mask, and then slash and let your fins go. And you should fly right into them. And then transform and shoot a light arrow. Uh by the way. You never want to transform at the like at the time when your fins are hitting him, or when anything is hitting him. So if I transformed right now, that would be bad. It would potentially oh, how did that miss? <laughs> okay, that was weird. Um So by the way, this this position that I'm standing in right now is is not super lenient for these fins to hit. And you kind of have to be quick or else he'll start, you know, you, you kind of have to send the fins as early as possible or else he'll start to fly away. But if you stand right about here, it should hit. And then, um, yeah, transform and, and shoot a light arrow. And immediately transform again, get ready to throw the fins again. As he starts to rise is generally a very safe time to, to throw the fins. And then you're just, you're just kind of going to repeat. Except after the second hit, a little cutscene is going to happen. You want to be kind of close to him before this cutscene starts, or else there's a risk of these remains. The remains are going to start flying around the screen, and the remains can hit you. It's, it's random whether they shoot at you or not at any given time, except for the fact that they will only try to shoot at you if you are looking in their general direction. So if you're kind of at the edge of the screen here like this, ready to hit Majora again, you're not looking at any of them. Unless they happen to go way toward you. See, as soon as I turned around, he shot me. Um, well, <laughs> I let Majora's Mask get away while I was demonstrating. But yeah. Um, you know, if, if you're positioned and angled like this, they're not going to hit you. You can even like Z-target to shoot these arrows, by the way, if you want. And then Majora's Mask has a total of 14 health. Light arrows do 4 damage. A Zora Jump Slash does 2 damage. So for this last hit, you can... Um, Stun with the fins as usual, but then just do a Zora jump slash, and that will do the last two damage. So four, 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 and two is enough. And the benefit of doing this is you can burn some magic after you do this jump slash by holding R and mashing B. So you're, you're kind of mashing your Zora barrier to to get down to kind of low magic, so that you won't be able to shoot any more light arrows. You actually don't want to shoot any more light arrows at this point. You would rather it just be regular arrows, so it helps to burn that magic. Um, I feel like there's maybe something else about that phase that I haven't explained. I mean, the ways to back it up if Majora's Mask gets away are kind of just obvious. You kind of just have to strafe around and wait for a good opportunity to try to stun it with the fins again. There aren't really great ways to back it up. Um, he'll start shooting a laser beam at you. You just kind of have to strafe until it's completely over, and then you can try to stun him again. Uh, if he starts spinning around and coming at you, that's when you maybe have a better opportunity to to stun him. 
if he starts doing that, you might even want to like give up on the, give up on the fins, transform into human, and try to quick spin as he's coming at you. That can work. Um, yeah. Other than that, I'm not sure what what more to say about the mask phase. It can be very annoying if he gets away from you, but if you practice it and do it like that, it's fine. <laughs> um, now here is where it starts to get chaotic and terrible if you're a new player. <laughs> um, so, so the one thing to immediately know is you have a fairy. You should never die in this fight, even though you only have three hearts. You have a fairy and you can equip swap it over, you can equip swap to dupe it over your ocarina as many times as you want. So you have infinite fairies as long as you're willing to take the time to pause and equip swap. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't really be at risk of dying, but you should really try to avoid taking, uh, you know, avoid let it, giving the remains opportunities to shoot you and try to stun Majora, try to keep Incarnation stunned um, as much as possible. Here, I stayed Zora for a reason out of at the end of that previous phase, and I left myself with just a little bit of magic for a reason. Because if, if I'm lucky here, Incarnation will run directly into me, so I'm going to hold R and B. And I did get lucky, Majora ran into me and got stunned immediately by that Zora barrier. And now my magic, I think, is low enough that I don't even have enough to shoot a layer, light arrow, which is perfect. Maybe I barely have enough for a light arrow, I'm not sure. But this is basically the ideal scenario. Majora got stunned and is now in a position where I can... I can, uh... start doing damage to Majora while facing directly at a wall that's right in front of me, which means I'm not going to be looking at any of the remains. Um, I guess one thing to be aware of, if you're really struggling with, struggling with this fight, you can always just kill the remains. <laughs> like, just take some time strafing around and Z-targeting and shooting at the remains. Um, I guess I'll save save this uh, state here and, and show what that looks like. Literally just do this. If you're gonna do this, maybe you should uh, save your light arrow magic, I don't know. But you can literally just kill all the remains. That will make the last two phases way easier. Uh, be wary of your arrows, though. You don't want to waste too many arrows. Although I think maybe there's a pot sitting around somewhere that you can get more arrows from. If you stand still too long, Majora can start shooting you as well. And also, you gotta be aware of your health. I'm, I'm curious if there's a pot sitting around somewhere. No, I guess not. Um, but yeah, once the remains are dead, this is a lot easier. I say that as I take damage down to one health. But again, you can just do this. Um, you don't need the Zora Mask anymore after this point, so you can equip over that. Here we, here we are with infinite fairies. Whether the remains are alive or not at this point, the way that you have to stun Incarnation is just with the bow, if, if, if he didn't get stunned by the, uh, by the Zora barrier. And then, um, there's basically two different, two different strategies that you should be aware of to deal a lot of damage quickly and stun lock uh, Incarnation here. The first one is one that you want to use if you're already in a good position. Like I was, like the, the position I was in before was really perfect, and I would definitely just go for this strat straight away, straight away, which is target. When you get right up on Majora like this, you can no longer target her. So I'm, I'm switching between her and him pronouns for Majora <laughs> interchange. I'm using those interchangeably for some reason, but. Uh, you want to kind of get a, a straightish angle facing Majora, like this is good enough, and get this. You, you can see when I'm when I'm right up on Majora, like right up on the feet, getting getting kicked. <laughs> uh, I can target without actually Z targeting Majora. So that's that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to target and get a straight angle rather than Z targeting like this. So I I do that. Well, sorry. First I draw my sword using the crouch method I described before, and then I do that to get this angle, and then I'm ready to do the. The, uh, the easier of the two strats, I think, which is to jump slash, jump slash cancel directly into a spin, and then just stun lock like this. Six cycles of this is enough to um, go to the next phase. So if you can just do that, I mean, I, the fact that I could do it while talking it is probably indicative of, of the fact that it's not actually that precise, but it's definitely like a rhythm that you have to get used to. You can use Majora's screams as an audio cue, and you can also use Majora's dancing as a visual cue. 
if you want to count the number of times that he like dances back and forth after jumping up into the you know after standing up like that um, the other good thing about this strat is if, if you mistime something let's say you like fail this quick spin you can just step forward a little bit and then do another quick spin after a short delay and you'll usually knock him down in place sometimes he'll get away a little bit and you'll have to chase and set it up again in a different spot but basically that's that strat um, I, I spin the stick twice here. I don't know if other people do that, but I spin the stick twice. You can see me spinning the stick a little bit longer than usual if you look at my inputs. I'm not spinning the stick very well. Um, but yeah, I, I do it twice to just really confirm that I'm getting that uh, both the jump slash cancel and the quick spin timing. But this is really a pretty big frame window for when to get this restun and keep him stun locked like that. So if you're in a good position facing away from the remains, or if the remains are dead, that is probably your best option is to try to get good at that strat. And even if, I mean, even, even if he gets away every time and you have to restun him every single time, you know, you're doing a lot of damage with a jump slash and then a, a quick spin. The other thing you can do, and this is this is what you should definitely do if you're trying to keep the remains alive and fight Majora, and you're in not a great position. So, so so say you're in a position kind of where if you were to do this strat, you would be facing kind of towards some remains or toward the center of the room, room where a bunch of the remains probably are. If that's the case, you don't want to go for that strat. You want to go for the other strat, which is to stand in between the legs and do some quick spins. Specifically three quick spins. And if, if you get pushed out like that, sometimes you get pushed out like that, in this case I didn't, so I can just do three and slightly delay the last one. But if you get pushed out, you kind of want to get back into position and then time the, the <laughs> time a quick spin right when she's about to start moving again. It's kind of it's it's a little bit awkward with getting pushed by the legs. If you're in a really good spot, uh, like right between the legs, before you start spinning, it should should be fine but yeah that that the reason that strat is good sometimes is because it usually Majora will get away from you a little bit she'll get hit by your last quick spin after she starts running unlike the other strat where she doesn't move at all so like you know if you were in the center of the room and did that strat did like one cycle of that strat like three quick spins she would often get away a little bit and get more toward one of the one of the edges of the room. Oh okay, yeah, sometimes your shield just doesn't work <laughs> to block those projectiles, so generally it's better to be strafing around them and dodging them rather than trying to shield them. Um, and in fact, sometimes if you hold your shield when she shoots at you, the shield will block one and then like stop you from moving and, and prevent you from dodging the rest of them. So sometimes it's better to just not even hold your shield up at all I, in fact, I would say generally it's better to not hold your shield up at all during this fight. Um, yeah, I, I, I really don't know don't know what more to say. The qu the quick spinning is hard, but it's really the best way to do this on on English on the English version. Um, is is really to just get her in a good position and just do the stun lock strat. If you if you kind of know. After after practicing it long enough, you'll just know by feel kind of the amount of time that you have after she stands up before before you need to restun her. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what more to say about that. I feel like maybe a better tutorial could be could be made on that part, but I'm gonna move on for now. Um, yeah, pe people should comment saying what I could have explained better there and everywhere else throughout the video. Okay, so for wrath. If if the uh, if the remains are already dead, you can just stun immediately with the light arrows, and then quick draw sword. Whoa, why do I have that text? Oh, because I duped over Ocarina. That's funny. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, you want to see up to aim down, just like uh, for that one Adalwa strat that I that I explained earlier, so that you can uh, let me let me just do it all again. Aim, stun. Draw the sword, C up, get rid of that title text if it comes up, aim down, target, and then you're just going to do jump slashes. And you have to time them, and you actually do have to do the jump slash cancel. 
or else you're too slow. If, if you miss one like that, then you're going to be too slow to hit the next one. One thing you can do is react to missing it. So if you miss one, then you can slash. And I actually did it too early there. <laughs> um, so if you do this... You can you can keep the rhythm. It is possible to keep the rhythm. <laughs> I'm apparently not very good at it, but uh, it's possible to keep her stun locked. And maybe you just want to transition to like full on, you know, crouch stabs at that point. If the Beyblades come out like like what just happened to me, you're you're kind of in trouble. <laughs> but again, you have you have infinite fairies, so just uh, use them. But it does get very annoying once the Beyblades come out. Usually, she just keeps sending the Beyblades out forever and ever, and I don't really know what to do about it, honestly, other than keep stunning her. Uh, one thing... Oh, this, might, this might actually work out for me, never mind, the Beyblade came behind me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, what, what you have to do in this case is just like... Wait, I wonder if quick spinning there is, is good. I've never really thought about that, but it looked like I was able to get more quick spins in than I thought. Let me just try this really quick. <laughs> can I, can you not, did I, did I not actually stun lock her last time? Okay, you can get, you can get like four hits in. You can get like the first hit of the next quick spin in, I guess. Anyway, um, if the remains are still here, then you kind of have to make Majora go somewhere else because you're you're kind of too close to the middle of the screen right now. You so if you're standing at a medium distance like this, not close enough that she's gonna kick you, but just slightly outside of the kick range, then she'll do a spin like that. So you see, I baited it again as soon as I stepped into that range. The kick range is too close. This is this right here would be would be kick range, too close. But somewhere like here, she's gonna do a spin. Um, pretty lenient range there. And you can use that to intentionally reposition, uh, intentionally get her to reposition. Another thing you can do is use your last chew, if you still have a chew here. You can just instantly pull it and walk into her. Huh, wait. <laughs> instantly pull it and walk into her, but not quite into the kick range? Oh, I thought this worked. Okay, well you can, you can send the chew, you can shield the chew to send it toward her, but sometimes that's gonna... I don't know, mess around with that and see if you like it. Sometimes, the problem with that is sometimes the, the Chew will keep running and Majora will jump straight back and then will end up in a good spot after jumping straight back, but then the Chew keeps going and gets to her again and makes her jump again somewhere else and then ends up in a bad spot. <laughs> that can happen, but it, it can be worth it to use the Chew here if you still have one. But when you first start running, you're probably not going to have an extra Chew. You're probably going to waste Chew somewhere. So, uh, yeah, so use the spins to, to get her to reposition, like, all the way at the, uh, all the way at the edge of the arena. She should spin here, and then you can stun her, draw your sword, <laughs> this title text is hilarious, uh, target while aiming down in the C up, and then do 20, ju 20 jump slashes, or 40 of these crouch stabs, or 40 regular slashes, whatever you want. <laughs> Um, you know, if, if you have to do that when you first start, start out, you know, don't, don't feel bad about that. The jump slash cancels are very awkward. Um, so if you have to make this fight easy by killing the remains and taking forever, um, I think the main, the main thing that you should work on is just getting that timing for that, you know, those 40 or 20, uh, consecutive hits, getting that rhythm down, and then also for Incarnation, um, getting that rhythm down for the Jump Slash and the Quick Spin if you can, um, although it is kind of hard. Quick Spinning quick spinning itself can be, can be hard without even adding anything else into the mix. But uh, that's the game. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I, I'm curious what people are going to have to say, you know, in terms of in terms of feedback. Hopefully people will tell me what they struggled with, even with my, even after hearing my explanations, and then I will maybe be able to make better tutorials in the future. But for now, this should help a lot with people 
we're trying to get into the game. I think this is a great beginning category, and uh, I, this is the type of thing I should have said at the beginning of the video if I was going to say it at all. Here I should just say, um, good luck, have fun, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, thank, thanks for watching. Obviously ask more, ask questions in the Discord whenever you need to, blah blah blah. Okay, bye bye.